We are in the second weekend of the Autumn Championship, the final opportunity for many of these players to get that PR boost going into the World Championship. Today, we are going to be watching South America and the two. Sparky, how excited are you to see South American action? Oh, it's been a minute. I was talking about this with TK last night. It's been a minute since we've seen Australia, since we've seen SEA, and since we've seen South America. We didn't have invitational events for them. So the last time we saw them, was summer championships, which was like a month and a half ago. Things have certainly changed. Some of those things we'll actually get into today on the pre-show. Some of those things you'll just have to see in the actual bracket as it plays out later today. Yeah, and it's worth mentioning for those of you who've watched a lot of our pre-shows that this one's gonna be a little bit different because we're coming close to the tail end. I think most people are familiar with the established. They know the top three, they know these top teams, so we're going to start digging a little bit deeper, talking about these fourth, fifth, sixth seed teams and talking about what are some things that we can look out for them just as a, as a kind of a thing for people to look forward to, I guess. With Yeah, we could sit here and talk about how uh, good Power Ranger and Lopez are for the 100th time. That's not delivering any new information to you, the viewers at home. So we are gonna be getting into some different teams this week. Duke, lead us off with the first team that we're talking about. Yeah, and so I believe I told the people in the back that the next team we're gonna be talking about is gonna be Hyper and uh, Kinda Ackerman. Is that correct? Yeah, Hyper and Kinda Ackerman. And the only reason why I have to clarify that one is because looking into the history books, they have not been that uh, consistent of a team. I mean, even just like recently, right? Uh, Kaino was with Nusak and then Hyper was with uh, Manexo and so on and so forth. We might go into a little bit more. But Sparky, this is a team you wanted to talk about, so I'll let you have the floor. Yeah, this is PR10 and PR9 coming into this. Kaina is the one at 10. Hyper is the one at 9. They are currently number 7 in the South American ranked leaderboard for 2v2. Now, keep in mind that like the season basically just started. So the ELOs are not going to be climbing super high for these teams. And they haven't really had that much of a chance to play like a ton of games together. Some people have been absolutely grinding. But Kaina and Hyper have really only played like 31 games together on the ranked leaderboard so not a lot from them so far but if you look at their character picks you can see that the characters that they choose to play and the characters or the players that they've chosen to play with 
in the past are still probably going to line up pretty well. Kind of coming in with a Bodvar, sometimes swapping over to the Zul, and then after that onto the Taros. Hyper coming in with a Hattori, also a Bodvar pick, also actually a Zul as well. So if you look at the Bodvar, when Kaina was previously playing with New Sack, they were a double Bodvar team. So that's not going to be too much of a far cry for Kaina to be able to play with another Bodvar player. Even if it's Hyper's Hattori, that's relatively easy character to play with. Everything's pretty much straightforward right off the bat. So that's not like having to play with a Lance or having to play with a Scythe or anything like that. So pretty much straightforward for that. But we have actually seen Kaina and Hyper play before in the past. It was all the way back at Spring Championships and they ended up coming in fourth place. So they do have a little bit of history together that is very successful. There you are seeing PR10. The earnings compared to the uh, regular teams that we talk about on this pre-show, a little bit more humble, but that's because this uh, career is really just getting started. Kaina and Hyper are the only players in the top 10 who don't have a single medal yet. You just saw the 0, zero, zero for the gold, silver, and bronze. Yeah, they are uh, all relatively new. I mean, even so, it's like this region itself is kind of, it's still fledgling. It still isn't as ingrained the way that North America and Europe are. And it's still really cool to see because there's a lot of community initiative to push it into that uh, that more consistent state where people are really familiar with these players and, and know them as household names more so than just that single or top two kind of people in that region. Uh, talking about Kaina and Hyper as uh, separate people, because again, they haven't always been a team. In fact, like you said, they've only really in PR tournaments played together once prior, but uh, separately, Talking about them, Kaina and Sack got summit in Summer Championship. Hyper and Minexo got fourth in Summer Championship. Go a little bit further back, skip over Spring, because you talked about it, Winter Championship. Kaina and LX got ninth. Hyper and Stardeath got seventh. And then you go further back, it's Kuiper and Myoto got uh, placed in the top 32. Didn't get past that. And Kaina and Kaiobolina got summit in Autumn Championship. And you keep going further back, and they have a different teammate in tournament after tournament. And it's really interesting because I think it's, it's always hard when that happens because you're never sure, is this going to be a consistent team? Is this going to be a team that like is going to have some growing pains because they haven't played together a lot? Or is it going to be a team that's just like they're good at playing with a whole lot of other people and just this region in itself is similar to how like France can really like swap around players. And as long as they're in that kind of pool of French players, they're all good to go. That's what we're going to be looking for here today with and then Hyper Up. Now, you did mention earlier on that this is the last major PR tournament of the season before we get into the World Championship. This team is sitting at PR 9 and PR 10. So they're at a reasonably safe spot to get into the finals unless a lot of horrible things happen today. <laughs> I expect them to make it into that. So again, like you said, this is still, even though it's like right before the World Championship, this can still be a feeling out period for the World Championship. We saw some of those things going on in Australia. We saw some of those things going on in EU as well just a week ago. So it's certainly possible that this team sticks together for Worlds and it might not stick together for Worlds based on the results of today. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be good. Uh, to get that nice momentum boost if it does well. And it's going to be good to say, okay, you know what? We tried twice, didn't work out. We're going to find some new people going in the World Champion. But that's the team of Kaina and Hyper. Is there anything else you want to say about them before we move on? That's all I got for them. All right. Coming up next, we've got the fifth seed team for today's tournament, News and Nagi, one of the slightly more established teams. Region. Uh, you talked about how uh, Kaina and Hyper haven't played a lot in ranked this season. News and Nagi have played a little bit more than them. They're currently sitting at 59-23 win loss, 72% win rate. That's not too bad. Definitely a nice spot considering they've had four days of ranked time to play. Um, talking about their PR placements, they've got a fifth at Summers, third Spring Championship, fifth at Winter Championship. They've been doing pretty well in this year. If you go further back, not so well, we'll be honest about that one. They placed outside top 32 in the World Championship, but just prior in the Autumn Championship, News and Rec got fifth place in Autumn Championship 20. So it's a team that I think has a lot of good, cons lots of potential to get in that top eight, top fifth. And then of course they've shown they can get that top three, get that medal placement um, with their characters. And specifically with uh, recent tournaments, talking on the community side of things, it was Brawltala, I believe, 24, uh, which is the most recent 2v2 tournament in South America. That was, I believe, September 26th. 
Uh, they did get third with Wes and DB in second and Power Ranger and Lopez in first. So the big boys were out to play that day, and they ended up coming in third right before that. Brautala number 23, they ended up getting second in that tournament. That was all the way back at the beginning of September. So there also is good recency, even though it's been a minute since we've seen them play on stream in like an official tournament, they've been cranking out really good placements here in the last two community tournaments that have been taking place on a different stream on Estes South. Now it's to Estesal, of course. Uh, lots of good community stuff out there, especially for the South Americans. Um, and the fact of the matter is, I personally feel more comfortable uh, with a team that sticks together, right? A team that like Definitely. is willing to kind of go through those troubles. And of course, it's not that troubling when they're getting top five every single tournament. But at the end of the day, the fact that they're willing to keep working together and say, okay, let's grow together. Let's see how we can develop this team gives a lot more comfort. And I'm really excited to see how well they'll do today. Yeah, you mentioned their uh, EU ranking, or not their EU ranking. I wrote EU ranking all over my uh, <laughs> paper, dude. I just have EU on the brain this week for some reason. Maybe it's because 720 Polyshot has just been on the timeline lately, tweeting <laughs> up a storm. But they are the number one team in the world ELO. They have the highest ELO in all of the world wow. currently. They are a whopping 70 points above TM and Swata, who actually are on the EU ranked leaderboard. So that's uh, for it being... This recently uh, new season started. That's a really solid place to be. The number one ELO ranked team in the entire world. They have been doing some grinding and specifically they've been winning a lot of that grinding as well. Yeah, like I said, they've been doing pretty well for themselves. Of course, they have taken a couple of L's um, in PR tournaments as well as in ranked, but still really strong team. T uh, talking about their character picks a little bit here. Nagi's top four legends, Taros, Mirage, Bodvar, Orion. Deuce has Bodvar, Nash, Hattori, Bryn. There's a, a couple of characters in there that are pretty known to be strong in the place. Thinking about those Bodvars, think about those Terraces, Hattori's, Bryn's, Nash's. Um, News, of course, being a really strong addition to the team alongside Nagi, uh, could do really well. Uh, lots of kind of consistent setup tools. Yeah, I expect to see mostly the Axe coming out in terms of specifically 2v2. Uh, the Olgrim and Taros from News, and then specifically that Brent from Nagi. I expect to see a lot of Axes from this team. Okay. Any other things you want to say about them before we move on to the next team? That's all I got on them. All right, let's talk about Usak and Manexo. Kind of names that we've mentioned already because they have previously teamed with some of the people we were just talking about, but now they're together. Uh, currently sitting at a 59.8% win rank uh, in ranked right now, 55 wins, 37 losses. Yeah, this is Minexo coming in at PR 13, Sack coming in at PR 15, so it's still two relatively close players in terms of PR. They're going to be a little bit lower than kind of Ackerman and Hyper that we talked about earlier, but I expect these teams, at least in the beginning, to kind of be mirror images of one another because when Minexo was playing with Hyper, they were a double Hattori team. When Kaina was playing with Sack, they were a double Bodvar team. So now they just kind of did a little bit of a wife swap there. And one team has a Hattori player, one team has a Bodvar player. The other team has a Hattori and a Bodvar player. So at least from the beginning, until they decide to change characters or anything like that, I expect these teams to look a lot like one another. But in terms of raw PR, that is going to favor Kaina, Ackerman, and Hyper compared to Manexo and Sack. But Manexo specifically, man plays Brawlhalla. Like, he has 4K hours, and that's not like the Steam 4K hours where you can just, like, log on overnight and sit in, like, a custom game lobby and just leave it on so you can boost your hour stats. These are in-game core Hala numbers. These are the actual real numbers that describe how much for Hala you've actually played. That's, that's in-game time. Uh, talking about some of their PR placements, again, they're another team that's been uh, swapping around a lot. A lot. So you, New Sack and Kaina placed fifth in summer. Manexo and Hyper, fourth in summer. Stack and Lazuli place ninth in spring. Manexo and Vecina place ninth in Manexo and Vecina place ninth in winter. Uh, Sack and Lazuli place ninth in winter. And it's kind of interesting as I was going further and further down that they kind of were tied with each other whenever they were in these kind of comps of Manexo, Vecina, and New Sack and Lazuli, where they both kind of place in that ninth place uh, slot. But this year, doing a whole lot better. They've been getting into that top eight, which you love to see. Love to see that growth as a team. Talking a little bit about some of their legend picks. Let's talk about Nusak, who's got the Bodvar, the Asuri, 
Ragnir and the Hattori. And then on the other side, Manexo has got the Koji, Bodvar, Hattori, Asuri, kind of like Sparky was saying. There's a lot of potential for this Bodvar, Hattori mix and match, but also a lot of really good cons uh, legends. And I do want to point out, since you brought up those specific characters from Manexo, Four of his like top four characters are extremely highly rated. His uh, Hattori is a level 78. His Koji is a level 100. His Bodvar is a level 84. And his Asuri is a level 71. That's where you see those 4K hours coming into play. Those are four very highly ranked characters. A lot of hours on those characters. You look at the like lowest common denominator between all of them. Definitely a sword player. Manex is going to be coming out swinging that sword today. It's just kind of his choice on what secondary weapon he wants. Or just a great 2v2 weapon overall. Anything else you want to say about this team, though, before we move on? That's all I got. All right. Now, let's talk about one more team before we get into the predictions. Let's talk about Kayo Bolina and Lux. Currently sitting at a 60-46 win-loss in ranked with a 0.6% win rate and the eighth seed of the tournament. They had uh, placed together a couple of times, which is pretty nice to see. They got ninth in the summer championship, a seventh in the spring championship, and just inside of top 32 in the championship. But before that, Kayo had been playing with a couple of other teammates, and I couldn't actually find a lot of that box. Yeah, I couldn't really find too much either. Uh, it was tough to find uh, stats on that player, and that's kind of uh, what you begin to see once you get lower in the PR. Not super low. Kyle Bolina coming in at PR 16, Lux coming in at PR 20, but if you look at their ranked leaderboard, they are number 10, which isn't the highest compared to some of the other teams that we've talked about today. But if you look at their peak ELO, which is 2103, only seven teams in South America have actually broken that 2100 threshold. So they're still one of the top teams based on the ranked leaderboard, even though their current position is a little bit lower than where their peak would have placed them. You even see those numbers kind of reflected in the stats on your screen right now. No golds, no silvers, no bronzes, but you do see Kayo with some serious top eight placements here. Four top eight placements, not too bad. Luck's going to be a little bit more on the humble side. You're going to notice that PR 20 is going to be the lowest out of basically anyone we're talking about on pre-show. Only one top eight and only five top 32s with $150 in earnings, but we'll see what they bring to the table today because this actually is a very important tournament for them to set their seed for what is going to happen in the World Championships. For some teams today specifically, the seed for Worlds is actually really important where if you're coming in like Power Ranger and Lopez, if you're seed 1 or seed 2 or even God forbid seed 3, it's not really going to be that much of a different bracket for you. Yeah, it definitely uh, will help because uh, some routes are going to be a little bit easier, at the very least in terms of like player matchups. There's obviously there's always going to be that one person who just has your number. And the more that you can uh, make sure that you have a route around them, the better you're going to. Of course, coming in, talking about their character picks real quick before we go into predictions. Kayo's got the Wusheng, Brin, Kaya, Mirage. A very serious spear potential here. On the other side, Lux has had a Baraza, a Nyx, a Bodvar, and Thor. Some heavy hitters, some very real potential. His most played weapon is Blasters, which is a bit on the interesting side considering Blasters is in an awkward spot in two. Can be really, really good for setups, can be really strong for that reason, but also locks you down, makes it so that you're very punishable. And we don't see too many people have a lot of success with the Blasters in Face, but would be yeah it'll be interesting what Lux actually chooses today I wasn't able to find any footage from like summer championship or spring championship or anything like that to see what uh, Lux has been specifically specifically playing in official PR tournaments so that that is a big mystery I think on everybody's mind what Lux is going to be going in with today that's all I have on this team so I'm ready to move in predictions all right, let's are. get into the prediction so like we said earlier uh, we talked about some teams that might not necessarily make it into our predictions but they're teams that we don't really get to shine a light on as frequently and you're likely aware of who we're going to talk about in our prediction so uh, Sparky would you like to go first or do you want me to Sure, I'll okay. go first. I got third place. It's going to be Kaina, Ackerman, and Hyper. You out there might think Nuzanagi would be the best 
pick for the bronze medal. Um, I, I wouldn't disagree with you too much, but I am still going to put Kaina, Ackerman, and Hyper in that third place. I think they had the chance to do it. We've seen Kaina place in fourth regularly with two different teammates. So that shows strong 2v2 potential with multiple teammates. And coming in second, I believe it's going to be D, B, and Wes. We've seen them get that second place medal so many times in official PR tournaments. I think this is going to be the same thing yet again. In first place, Power Ranger and Lopez. They're the top team to beat right now. Lopez is so scary with his character picks. Power Ranger is also incredibly dominant in 2v2. These two players fit well together, and I think they are 100% the team to beat. Absolutely. Uh, my prediction, very similar, except that we got a little bit of a up, of course. Fiend and Baltazar going to be my pick for the uh, top three third place finish. Um, very consistent team. I absolutely love watching Fiend. Love that he's playing with his brother. There's that kind of brother synergy. Uh, they've been teamed together longer than a lot of the other teams in the South American region, which is always uh, great to see. And of course, uh, they've been doing very well for themselves. But I got to agree with Sparky on the number one and number two. Wes and DB, a really strong team. Always rooting for them as well. But I just think they they're gonna get edged out by Power Ranger and Lopez. Just strong team. When they got together, it was an absolutely dominant force and they have continued to be a dominant force. They're gonna be the team to beat here at the Autumn Championship in South America. Yeah, it's definitely going to be an interesting one for sure. I can't wait to see how the bracket fills out. We are coming into the top 32 of things. We are going to be going into a short break, but before that, it is my grandmother's birthday on Tuesday, so everybody in chat should say happy birthday, Grams, right now. You can also throw in a feliz cumpleaños if you are an Espanol speaker or if you are Portuguese. I don't, I don't know if it's any different. So sorry, Brazilian <laughs> homies out there. I don't actually know how to say happy birthday in Portuguese, but happy birthday, Grams. Uh, fantastic. I can't wait to get in this bracket. Duke, take us home. Yeah, uh, one final reminder before we let y'all go to break. We've got hashtag BHE Sports on Twitter. If you want to maybe tweet at Sparky's grandma, I'll let her know that the Brahala community is she's, she's, she's not. not uh, yeah, but Twitter. you can show her like the, hey, look, grandma, I'll be, I'm trying to help you out, man. Or you can tweet out <laughs> esports predictions, hashtag BHE Sports. Give us uh, what you think. What are some teams that you think we didn't get to mention that you think we should have next time? Because the next time, it'll be the World Championship. Also, go over to uh, twitter.com slash pro brawlhalla during this break, and you can watch some good brawlhalla action. There's going to be some matches that don't make it onto twitch.tv slash brawlhalla. So you want to go and watch at twitch slash pro brawlhalla for those other matches. On that note, though, it's time we take a short little break. And when we come back, we will be bringing you the top 32 for the South American 2v2 Autumn Championship round.
The Order of the Exalted Lion was a group of great pride and honor, but it was also a group of great power. This great power is what caused the fall of the OEL at the hands, well, claws of Octavius Mordex, thus throwing the world into chaos. Cast into the fires of Helheim, Diana lost herself in the encroaching chaos and was reborn with a fiery vengeance. Monsters are not born, they are created. Octavius Mordex is a self-made man. The silver and red, the last thing many monsters see. What evil has been summoned behind this new form? Azot. It's Azot. On a razor's edge, the Order called upon this infamous hunter. What side of the coin will he end on? And there was a queen who preyed upon the damned. All manner of arcane artifacts came bursting out of the gates of chaos. They weren't very subtle about their headquarters location. Maybe that's why it fell so easily. The pride of the lion roars across the land, even in defeat. The Exalted Lions return in Brawlhalla's Battle Pass Season 4. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the South American Brawlhalla Autumn Championship. It's about to go down, starting today with the doubles bracket. It's all doubles, all day long. I'm Foda. Joined with me right now is none other than Zipmaster Flex. And Zipmaster Flex, man, it's good to have you on with me. This is the first time we've casted together, everybody. First time, man. I'm here with the hype man, Foda himself. And real quick, Foda, can I say, shout out to the production team, Duke and Sparky, because that that pre-show looks like Sports Center. <laughs> I love it every time. Let's go, Duke and Sparky. Let's go, production team. Good pre-show. <laughs> All right, well, Zip, uh, you, a lot of you guys might probably already know who Zip is, casting the Southeast Asian Australia tournaments for the past year. But first time you've been on here in South America. And let me go ahead and give you real quick an introduction here to everybody here. Zip Master Flex is an amazing caster from the Killer Instinct community, but now he's long since been a Brahala community member. So Zip, it's going to be good to cast this one with you. We've got South American doubles coming up, and I'm so excited about this because it is one of my favorite events in all of Brawlhalla Esports. South America doubles is so hype. Zip, we went a good three years doing Brawlhalla Esports before South America ever got the opportunity to do doubles in an official capacity. They did it in community stuff, but for a long time, South America was a very small community, and we only did 1v1 tournaments there. Uh, as it grew, doubles came around, and my goodness, good thing it did, because doubles is so exciting in South America. We've got 
big teams coming up here. Power Ranger and Lopez. You just heard Duke and Sparky talk about all of them. I'm oh, yeah. real excited about Fiend and Baltazar. Uh, the... I have no bias, no, total bias. Full bias, that, that's my team. Wait, they lost? Oh no, oh no. They're already oh. in the losers bracket. What oh happened? my goodness. Oh man, oh no. They're already, look at that, Fiend and Baltazar lost to Maxi, S92K, and Hanabi, who are now my enemies. Um, no, I'm kidding. I'm sure they're great. I mean, to defeat Fiend and Baltazar, they gotta be. So what's the, what's the mystery there? Who are Maxi and Hanabi? Um, we're going to find out here today because we will be casting that match before the day's end, Zip. Nice, uh, we'll, nice. We'll have to see. Oh, my goodness. Fiend and Baltazar were taken down. Well, this is already the most dramatic 2v2 tournament there's ever been. we got <laughs> Wes and DB also likely to win this tournament, likely to go far in this tournament. We'll be watching their match later. Hyper and Kaina Ackerman. Emperor and Broly, the brothers, actual blood brothers competing in the tournament together. Woo, it's going to be a big one here. But Zip, we got yes. our first match coming up, and these guys are ready to go. Let's get into it. It's Power Ranger and Lopez versus Selene and Lazuli. Now, we're all looking at Power Ranger and Lopez as the number one seed in this tournament. Pretty likely that they're going to take it. But we've been deceived by the statistics before. Just because Power Ranger is coming in here, Power Rank 1 with over $17,000 in earnings, seven gold medals. That's a lot of gold medals. And those are pretty recent gold medals too. Those are like, they're still shiny and sparkly, those gold medals. <laughs> and Lopez, power rank number two, <laughs> only behind only his teammate. Um, they are the favorite to win this tournament. I mean, just statistically, right? That's not even an opinion. Power Ranger and Lopez are favored to win this tournament, but I've been surprised before, man. Selene and Lazuli, they've got a good shot to take this. Anything can happen in these tournaments, Zip. Just so now, when's the last out. time they dropped one? That's the question. It's oh, it's uh, like so long ago, you know. It's <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, they've they've lost tournaments. When's the last time they haven't made it to the podium? Is a hard question to answer. Uh, sometimes yeah, sure. you know, they don't always make it to the end, but it's a big one here for Selene and Lazuli to win this right now would be an incredible upset. But I believe it's possible. I mean, w from what I've learned in Brahalla is that there is always someone better than you. And, uh, and you might not even know their name. So here we go. Starting off the Autumn Championship doubles bracket here on stream. Lopez and Power Ranger going up against Selene and Lazuli. And we're seeing already Selene going for gusto plays. I like that ground pound off edge. Tried to get Power Ranger out of there, but it didn't work out. We're here in the mid. Lazuli with the power of Jala swinging for the fences. <laughs> the power of Jala. Hey, that's Maggie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lopez well, playing Queen Nai, dude. I'm excited about this. Uh oh, Power Ranger already in trouble. Selen <laughs> gets the KO off the side. A hammer ground pound. I bet you didn't think. Oh, what the hell are you? Wait a second. I told you the upset zip. It's already happening. No way. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. It just took two stocks off of these guys. But what a great start for Lazuli and Selen here. Amazing start. They're playing two heavy hitters. Big time power coming out of these two. You already know I love Terrells and he's going to lose his stock right there. Selene going off to the top right. And Power Ranger and, and uh, Lopez trying to get a combo going but just sent out. Oh, oh. my goodness. Lazuli cracked with the side air. They basically have already equalized it here. Uh, Power Ranger and Lopez, despite losing those first stocks so soon, have, they, they've brought it back. I mean, now they've got Selene near their damage. Power Ranger off the side. Selene's going hard. Lopez comes in to relieve the pressure off of Power Ranger and successfully does so. Now bringing it back to neutral. Power Ranger and Lopez are still trailing by just a little bit. Lopez defending both of these guys. Blasted off the side and Lopez scores a KO, but he gets punished for it. Lazuli with a double kill. Oh my gosh. Yes, that was pure accuracy. I love it. Lazuli is letting these six fly, and that's what I want to see from a hard-hitting character like this. Miss Maggie channeling the power of Jala, hitting real tough. Almost got taken out on the scoop off the top of the stage, but still alive out here fighting for their life on the edge, trying to get back in. Here we are. Okay, getting some big hits on Power Ranger. That double kill was crazy, man. It was like, it was a punish. A punish that KO to punish that KO to punish. It was it was a three a three trail. It was a, a, a three way combo there. 
Well, look at this. We've got a 2v1 here. And even though Lazuli's got a health advantage, if it were against other players, I might say <gasps> Lazuli's got a shot here. Oh, mind wow. here. Psy Psyched himself out on that one, I think. He had a. He might have had a good shot there, despite the uh, the credentials of who they were going up to fight against. They. He had a good shot. Looking at the health alone, he had a pretty good shot. But then he just. He just fell. Yep. Yep. Let's so. So I feel what happened. I play this game a lot, man, and I know what <laughs> happened when he swung that side air. Sometimes you just get that long time where you're not able to jump on a whiff, and he, he fast uh, fell. Yep. Pretty, pretty hard there, right yep. at the startup of it, and spent all that time in the active frames of the cider falling and falling, That's and it. just didn't even just hit the bottom before it was before he had the chance. It was all, all too right, late. All right, Power Ranger on Bryn here, and Lopez still with Queen Nine. All right, and just throwing pure hands. Lopez didn't even need a weapon to start, but finally got the guitars. Oh, you're throwing the sink instantly, trying to get Lazuli out of there. No good, but now in the, the guitar loop is Lazuli. Oh, Lopez. Up the sink. Okay, Lopez. that was a great punish by Lazuli. Lopez getting a little silly out there. Yeah. You just tested him, you know, you got to check him. <laughs> Will you punish me for this? Maybe I just score a kill because he messes up the punish. But uh, no, Lazuli was on it. And Lopez! Ooh. Oh, you might die for this. Wait. Oh, Lo he not only did he make it back, but Power Ranger was ready to save him if he could. Yeah, that was that a nice was play really by Lopez. Nice. He, was, he was already out there. He saw the combo coming from his teammate. He turned around with Katars for a side air. You know, it's scary turning around with Katars for a side air like that. You have to commit to all the movement of the direction you're using the side air in. And even though he was already way off in the reticle, he went for it. He got it. He still survived. And on the on a, the slowest legend of the game, GG Lopez. Oh yeah, that side there was so nice out there. And another side there for your troubles Ooh. from Celine taking Good about punish. team combination. Yeah, that was a yeah, that was a punish. that was a Not punish. A yeah, Power Ranger had him in the down light, and before he could even finish it, Lazuli went and got the punish on it, saved his teammate, and scored a KO. Lazuli goes down, and oh man, I mean, Selene and Lazuli had a pretty nice lead in the first game and still couldn't come away with the victory. This time, it's just looking worse for him. Selene, theory, red health here, and Power Ranger looking hungry. Oh, Lopez Ooh. with the neutral sink. He gets the kill. Who's only an orange? Queen Nye, baby. Yeah, Queen Nye slaps. <laughs> I think we all know that. <laughs> Oh my goodness, the Saloon's doing pretty well out here, but they got to get these stocks out of here if they want to stay in this game. So like you said, they had the lead last time, it slipped through their fingers, and now they're trying to do a play a comeback. That's going to be real tough. Lopez, Ooh, master I love it. Woo. Okay, well, it might not be enough here with Saloon <laughs> down to the final stock. Lopez and Power Rangers still have three. This is looking, it's looking bad. Ooh, he's trying to, stop. he's playing for the highlight reel now. If he would have landed that, my They're goodness, going so I wild. Crazy. Whoa, Lopez! Oh my gosh, these guys are crazy. <laughs> okay, Power Ranger and Lopez now up 2-0 in the set. It's a best of five, so they only need one more victory to come away with this. So Len and Lazuli, I got to say, are performing better than expected. So close, but not enough. Oh, I love that side air from Lopez. That was a nice play. Man, I'm looking at Selene's gameplay, and she is doing very, very well out there. But, you know, it's it's coming down to those last situations where they you got to have both your teammates. If you want to play these comebacks, you got to have both your teammates. And one of them has, is slipping through the cracks each time. And this time, I'm looking for them. It's going to be tough to run this whole setback, but I'm looking for them to stay together, stay in the pocket, and keep both players alive, and I think they can do that. All right, let's see. It's their last chance. Selene and Lazuli fighting to stay in the winner's bracket. They're up against the top seeds of this tournament. Honestly, everything to gain and nothing to lose here, right? No one expects mm -hmm. them to win, but if they did, they'll make headlines. We'll talk about them forever. And right into it, right into the thick of it. Here it is, Selene once again. She's right on the tail of Lopez, putting some good damage on, but wasn't able to keep the combination alive. Guess didn't want to hit Lazuli, right? Didn't want to get Lazuli put in too much danger out yeah. on the edge. Yeah, sometimes it's worth it, though. You'll, as you'll see, Lopez <laughs> just smacking around. Power Ranger, oh, oh, Lopez, he didn't follow the plan. Power Ranger was expecting a side air there so he could alley-oop. Lopez went for the neutral signature. It's more damage than the side air, but not more damage than the team combo follow-up. Still, they came away with a lot of damage, totally unanswered. 
And now Power Ranger yes. and Lopez are in a position to take the first stocks here. But Selene, wait! Oh, oh, oh. Selene in trouble! No problem, no Selene problem. Was, makes it around. Was... Lazuli scores the KO. Selene makes it around. Still alive. Lazuli is very hurt right now. Courageously going up against Power Ranger. While oh, oh, no! no. Team KO! Friendly fire! No. Oh, no. Selene. Oh, unfortunate. Well, at least Selene still has... Still has her first stock here. Yeah, Selene's doing very well to stay alive, but no. the recovery is going to send him off into the heavens. All team right. combo, nice. Lopez and Power Rangers. Casual team combos at, at any moment. I'm liking this. Power Rangers still holding on to that stock. They got to get that out of there if they want to stay competitive in this match, but they're still doing well. Pretty good. Yeah. Lazuli's hurt pretty bad, but, uh, you know, you've got Selene holding on to this the stock. Not only on yellow on the second, so just really get Power Ranger out of there and y'all are going to be pretty even. Oh, well, no! The, the farther ahead they get, the crazier Lopez starts getting with these Queen Nice signatures. He's, he's getting more and more wild, He's and he's winning. He's, he's, he's winning a lot of these interactions. Oh, man. Just that <laughs> right there. All of double it. damage. Oh, good weapon toss. Not able to come up there with the Woo! neutral. Oh, air. he pivoted oh, it around! That's so good! That's so good. That's so good. Anybody would have thought, oh, neutral sig, whatever. Something to send him back to his teammate. No way. Lopez knew it was going to go too far. He pivoted his side signature in the opposite direction to keep the alley oop going. And it scored a KO because Queen Nye is so strong. Queen Nye, the slapper, man. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. Selene is in trouble. The weapon toss. The oh! sig. Oh, they're styling and profiling. And that is going to be a 3-0 from Power Ranger and Lopez. It was a stylish victory for Power Ranger and Lopez there. <laughs> Holy cow. All right. Well, I guess this time the stats don't lie. Power Ranger and Lopez have proven that they deserve the number one. Power, uh, not, there's not just number one power rank, but number one seed position in this tournament. They win this, and they'll be going up against Page and Yuuz up next. But before we get to that, that's winner's quarterfinals. We're still here in winner's round one of top 32. Mm -hmm. And our next match coming up is going to be... Wait, oh, we're still looking at stats of the previous one. Okay, let's talk about these stats here. That's a pretty good looking stat zip, wouldn't you say? These yeah. Yeah. So good. 67% accuracy on, nine six. on Queen Nye with nine signatures. That's, uh, that's hefty. That's, that's certainly contributing a lot to their victories here. Definitely. Right, that's how you drop 628 <laughs> damage, you know what I mean? That's, that's good. <laughs> I love to see a, a Queen Nye perform well. Uh, all right. Up next, we've got Hyper and Kaina Ackerman versus Emperor and Broly. This is an exciting match here. For, on one side, we've got Kaina Ackerman, who I could talk about forever because Kaina came kind of out of nowhere. <laughs> See what I did there? That was actually nice. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was good. That was good. <laughs> kind of came out of nowhere um, and performed so well in the last singles tournament. I mean, went from never seen in top eight before to nearly on the podium, right? And then on the mm -hmm. other side, we've got esports royalty, Emperor, and Broly who are actual blood brothers uh, competing together. I mean, how much more synergy can you get when you're in the same room with your blood brother and you could yell out like, yo, team combo, neutral light, neutral light. I mean, there's no delay. You, you're talking in Discord, there's at, least, there's at least 50 milliseconds of delay, you know? These guys, they're all, they're, they got every advantage. <laughs> <laughs> they're in the room Let's, together like a COD 2v2 uh, two I mean, team. <laughs> I mean, I think they're twins. They were in the womb together, dude. These guys oh, are, wow. These guys so are as, as synergetic synergy. as you can be. Right? <laughs> So really let's see what they got anything. here against Kaina Ackerman and Hyper, who really have a good shot at beating them. I mean, this is this match uh, really could go either way here. Broly loses the first stock. Hyper Ooh. scored another KO on the brothers. Broly and Emperor down to their second stocks. Kaina Ackerman that was such a good Hyper. team combo. Yeah, Hyper picked that up. I love they're the Reno still pretty pick healthy too, right? here. Despite they took both of the first stocks, they're still pretty healthy. And look at Hyper just dishing out even more punishment. They are gaining more and more ground here. Also, shout outs to the Reno fans out there. They're, we got Reno here in the tournament. Definitely exciting to see this character. Oh. He's so awesome. Oh, wow. What happened there? Oh, no. Oh, Hyper oh, saving. Kind of. Woo, man. 
Okay, well, he goes down after that, but that doesn't change how awesome it was. <laughs> oh, Broly's, oh, Broly's, in, Broly's trouble. in trouble! Broly's in trouble! The he gets the chase dodge. dodge! Woo, man! He got the chase dodge. Hyper goes down, but that was only his first stock. Boy, they have a significant lead here. I mean, Broly and Emperor, even if they had a great couple of stocks here, they'll still only be tied up afterward. They've got a lot of room to make up for here. Definitely do, and I just keep seeing Broly off stage having such a tough time out there, but finally landing some good hits. Okay, I like it. Take it to Reno. Tried to get the recovery to hit on the back oh, end Broly. instead of downwards. Did not land, and Broly's Broly's in trouble. Alone. He's in trouble. He's in trouble. Yes. He's got no weapon. He's floating oh. around. He just wants to get back to the stage, and Hyper won't let him have it. Broly is out. It's up to Emperor. One stock against four. One stock against four. I'm not feeling good about Emperor's odds here, but... You know, I've seen him do crazy things. He's capable. As Kevin Garnett said, anything's possible. <laughs> but I don't know about this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Fighting man. Back. He scores he a killing blow, stock. but he dies for it. Or he gets punished for it. And that's, you know, that's the problem here. When you're, when you're a one against two really good players, it's hard just to get any sort of damage out without you getting punished for it. Exactly. Anytime you swing or you do a neutral light with the axe, right? You're stationary. Oh, yeah, it's a yeah. free you punish. Way too long, the neutral light. You know, you ba you basically relegated to like single hit moves that, that are done very quickly. A side air, even a side air can leave you vulnerable long enough. Mm hmm. Ooh. Oh, man. All right. <sighs> Next game. And we've got Broly switching his legend now to his, his most classic character. This is great. Hold on, wait for the surprise reveal. Here Three, it comes. Two, Ooh, one, he's playing a Suri. Okay, this is the Broly I know. This is the this is the Broly that stole my heart five years ago in the early days of Brahala Esports. Broly was out here on this exact skin of a Suri, and he he was he was the king. He was rank one all the time. He was when power rankings first came out, it was Broly on top. Oh, nice. Yeah. But now, so much talent has developed since then. Broly has long been out of the spotlight here. Unless, unless he beats these guys right now. Oh, no, it's not looking good. Oh, oh no. Kind of Ackerman has barely even. down with the Nair. That was beautiful. They've barely taken any damage here. Look at Kaina's health. This is, uh, this is bad news for Emperor and Broly. Maybe they can score the early KO on Hyper. Broly's got the opportunity here. No! Whoa, he dropped. Not only drops the opportunity, he's taking out a wealth of punishment here from Broly. Oh, no. I can't believe. Hyper, Hyper on his way back to the stage, has taken Broly from white to orange. That is insane. That, that was is wild. Insane. Just he's, kept he was, looping him with the, the nair from the guns. Pop, 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 pop. The goal Constant. was really get back to the stage without dying, and instead he did get back to the stage and kill my opponent on the way. <laughs> That's insane. Oh, the signature punch right afterwards. My goodness. Emperor on the side fighting for their life with both players on him. And oh, my goodness. And the side six is going to take out the teammate. And now blue team is going to be happy about that one. But you're still down no. big, losing your stock. <laughs> both happened. of you on final stock. Oh, what a punish. What a combo. That was a pretty cool combo. I like that. I like that. Oh no, the Sair Hyper on the edge living dangerously almost was taken out, but he really is. Uh, he could there. afford to be. You know, when you're at when you're at red and a stock ahead, off the side's a great place to be because if anybody's foolish enough to come challenge you, you've got the opportunity for a super early kill. Whereas you'd get taken out regardless being at red, right? Regardless of near the stage or not. Oh <laughs> no! <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Oh my goodness, Hyper scoring the neutral sig KO. Emperor oh. falls shortly after. Kaina, Ackerman, and Hyper are so far ahead of these guys. And these guys are legendary. Emperor and Broly are major players here. It's, it's surprising just how well Kaina and Hyper are doing here. Man, Hyper is making some real opportune plays. Like, look at that. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, that, that was, was the nice. perfect use of that SIG on that gravity cancel. So, so nice. And just that, that weapon whole toss time, to fall he down. He was like one you know? hit from death. He wasn't even. That's, that is crazy. 
Yeah. All leading from that recovery on the side where he's putting all that damage on the Broly. That was still the same stock. <laughs> kind of Ackerman had about 200 damage more than anybody else on the field there. He's... Ooh, what a combo from Hyper! That was so aware, man. Knowing that Kaina was sending him down with a hammer recovery. Had the blasters ready to follow up. And in the blink of an eye, Emperor and Broly are in red. There goes Emperor. How fast was that? That was less that than was 20 so seconds. Fast. Jeez. Oh, and they're so K. good. Oh, yeah, right? They're what, so What we need to so learn from this is that Kaina Ackerman and Hyper are insane. I mean, this is crazy. <laughs> All right, yeah, because it's not like Emperor and Broly are, are playing bad. You, and like you said, they're legends in this in this region. But my goodness, kind of Ackerman and Hyper came here to play right now. Look at that. Now he's got both of them in that one and decided to chase the one that's on Ooh. white. I mean, yeah, you want to get an Emperor out of there on the second stock and leave yourself in a 2v1 situation. But the scope oh. is good from Broly. I like it. Okay, the stocks are tied up. Don't pay attention to the damage. The stocks are tied Never mind, never mind, never mind. <laughs> All right, we're still pretty even here. Oh, they could get yeah. some damage. I'm oh. looking at Emperor here, and and uh, we, we need to be aware. It's Emperor. Oh, jeez. Emperor is so much more damage than everybody else on the field here on their second stocks, and it's going to be up to Emperor to have a presence in this match that's helpful without leaving himself open to punishes. I think they're doing pretty well right now. Kind of just yeah. dancing around, tapping here and there. Oh, oh, no, but the recovery stolen from the Sair. Oh, no, Emperor has gone down. And now your teammates out here getting terrorized. Oh, can yeah, you Broly's make it back, trouble. Broly? No, no you way. cannot. Hyper it was, sniping. It was questionable even without the side air. But the Definitely. Side air. <laughs> <sighs> tried to make a read on the jump there. Uh, Broly tried to hit the side zig. Gravity castle, no good. And these guys are pretty They're hurt. running Emperor. away with it. You can, yeah, you can say Emperor's it. It's fair damage. to say. Kaina, Ackerman, and Hyper are running away with this. And oh, okay, though. <laughs> Woo, and the guitar solo. Okay, that's a highlight. We still, that, that's a highlight. You know, even though Broly, he might not come away with the victory here, but that guitar solo after a brutal double KO, that can still make the highlight real. But let's see. Yeah, Broly's got a chance. We've, we've seen crazier comebacks than this. Just I mean, based it's off tarot, of, right? You gotta get yeah. the damage. That's all you need. <laughs> but based uh, off of how Kaina and Acker, uh, how Kaina and Hyper have been playing here, it's, it's hard to make <sighs> this prediction. Definitely, it's, it's hard to side with Broly here, but I want to believe. Ooh, okay, avoids it. Bro, oh, Ooh. what the tiniest! I can't. What a crazy combo for them to do. That was that was wild. I mean, for Hyper to even think of that hitbox at that moment in time with such a brief window of opportunity that's extremely impressive what the heck <laughs> hyper kind of that was insane a swift 3-0 clean sweep from kind of ackerman and hyper over the likes of royalty such as broly and emperor wow that was impressive yeah, look. i mean there it is yeah, Bro that gravity yeah. castle was so nice, so nice. Well placed, went straight through the platform. Again, ah. kind of Ackerman far exceeding the damage dealt of anybody else. I mean, the, he did more damage than their than their his opponent opponents. I mean, more damage than the whole team combined, right? I don't, yeah, like, doing the math real quick. No, you yeah, got it. That's You're more. Right. The, the math checks out. Kind of did more damage than the opposing team alone. And then there's Hyper helping, who did a whole bunch of damage as well. That is impressive. Kind of Ackerman. Wow. Okay. Well, they're going to go up against Brujo and Zidokejo up next. And that is a powerhouse team. We'll see if they can continue such domination against even more powerful opponents. But the way I see it, Emperor and Broly are some of the hardest people you can even fight in this tournament. And they just blasted them. Man, they absolutely uh, blasted him. So blast them with the they're, blasters. They, <laughs> they're looking good to take this whole tournament, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, now, if everything goes this way, if Hyper keeps win Hyper and Kaina keeps winning, Power Ranger and Lopez keep winning, they'll face off in top eight before the winner's final. So only one of them are going to make it to winner's final. If everything goes according to the statistics, I think Brujo and Zedo Cajo have a good shot at taking them out anyway. But uh, speaking of Power Ranger and Lopez, it looks like that's going to be the next match we've got coming up to watch. So nice. it's Power Ranger and Lopez versus 
Page and Yuz. Now, we just watched Power Ranger and Lopez win in their previous match against Selen and Lazuni. Uh, now going up against Page and Yuz. I don't know a lot about Yuz. I don't know if, that, if that's a recent rename or a new player. It's It's been a bit, but Page is legendary. I mean, Page is another one of those, like, he was topping the podiums all day in early, early esports. And he's still staying relevant today here. Already in top 12, right? Not a bad, not bad uh, out of the thousands of people who are participating in this tournament already in, uh, in oh top 12. God. But uh, I'd be surprised here, Page. If Page and Yuz can uh, overcome this. Man, Power Ranger and Lopez. All right, here we go, guys. Maps are getting banned out. Check out Page's stats. Look, I'm telling you guys, Page, he's got the skills to pay the bills. Now, Yuz, I'm still learning about. But for Page to have chosen Yuz, must be an insane player. Or maybe a recent rename. Maybe production can help me out with that. But on to the next here. We got Page and Yuz going up against Power Ranger and Lopez. Now, obviously, we're looking at Power Ranger and Lopez here as the favored to win. I mean, these guys, well, you just saw it. They did so well against their previous opponents. Every tournament you see these guys in, they kill it, and they seem to keep getting better and better. So how are Page and Yu's gonna do this? I don't know, but if they did, it'd be a story, that's for sure. Page knocked way off the side. Yu's also extremely damaged. I cannot believe, no way! How fast was that? That was, that was, Another Both 20 second KO. Super fast. Holy cow. Power Ranger and Lopez are absolutely just. They're, they're barely damaged. They've already taken a stock off of Page and use. Unbelievable. Yeah, that was a super early KOs coming out on the side of Blue Team. They got them out of there fast with lightning speed. And here we go, trying to scrap back. They're doing pretty well. They haven't eaten too much damage, but they're trying to get those those the Blue Team's uh, stocks to high damage quickly. And wow, look at the sick coming out from the Taros. I love it. That down sick coverage is so nice. Got them out of there. Scrapping Power Ranger, putting some damage on use. A perfect punish from Lopez. Didn't get the kill, but man, that's the kind of stuff. A, a, a beautiful Queen Knight punish there. The Qatar neutral stick is so powerful. It's hard to land. You gotta be extremely close range to even have a shot. But, uh, oh wait, oh Lopez might not be able to make it back now. Oh, definitely can't make it back now. Power Ranger's gonna have to save him, but there's no way he can save him from this. Now he's looking at, please don't die for getting the save on this. Okay, Power Ranger staying alive. That was incredible. Page and Yuz with that gimp onto Lopez, just keeping him off the side and not letting him come back on, are, have now put Page and Yuz in a potential winning position. Well, not anymore, it's perfectly tied. But these guys are keeping it close despite losing their first two stocks in less than 30 seconds. They are keeping this game close. Yeah, they're keeping it very close. They did a good job when they came back from those two stocks. I like that. Hit your teammate. Weapon toss from Yuz. Power Ranger out of there. Oh, the retaliation from Lopez. And so now we have a perfectly even game on our hands. That was such two good stocks to get taken out back to back. Uh, both teams making great plays. Okay, we're coming down into the into the wire here. Everybody's down to their final stocks, but Page has taken much more damage than anybody else. Keep your eye on Page here. It's going to be him to make or break this. If he loses his stock too soon, it's going to be trouble. Disarmed off the side. Page in trouble. Got the weapon now, but now uses in trouble without a weapon. And Power Ranger hot on his tail. A beautiful combo from Page. What an alley-oop. Yuz is still alive. They scored the KO onto Lopez, but Power Ranger's in a great position to win this 1v2. There's one. Here comes There's two. One. Oh, that was almost it. Yuz got him off the side. Power Ranger is disarmed. This could be trouble. Nice Yuz. weapon throw. Keep them yep. starved. Got the He's weapon. Oh. 
I'm so scared. He's maintaining weapon control here. Yuzu is doing it all correctly, but Power Ranger can still take him out. Now Power Ranger without a dodge. This is Yuzu's best chance. Wait, oh no, he, look, he lost weapon control. No, he punches him out of the way and grabs the weapon. What's it gonna be? The next big hit wins. It's anybody's game. Oh. There's the punish. He's done it. Yuzu and Page against all odds have taken the first game in the set off of Power Ranger and Lopez, the number one seeds in this tournament. Oh my what goodness, you make of that, that was zip? pure strength and will to fight back after losing your first stock so early. You know, like, are you guys in the chat remembering how that started? That's crazy that <laughs> That's they were right. able to take that game. They basically did that with four stocks. It's impressive. Yeah. <laughs> amazing gameplay, amazing gameplay. Coach Terrell ain't playing with him. I like yous out here. That's some good, some good stuff. And we cannot act like Page wasn't holding it together for the team. That combination, whenever uh, they did the alley oop, he dashed over to the right to make sure he got both players. Yeah, in that, that, was that was nasty. So nice, so nice. That was really, really sick. That, uh, and that that really was the turnaround. That made this, that made the win possible there. All right, we're going right into the next one here. Paji and Yuz, Power Ranger Lopez, sticking with all the same legends. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I don't see why not, right? I think both teams played well enough for that. We don't need a swap. But as always, I love to see some Taros, and Brynn is a mainstay in twos. <laughs> so why why not? Why switch anybody here? really is. Like, ever since her inception has been a mainstay in twos. All right. And this is a much more competitive start uh, to the game. Look, right? Everybody's scrapping. Ooh. Red team's trying to take an advantage. Ooh, but uh, we're going to eat some damage there, Apache. All right, Power Ranger trying to get the edge guard. No good. And okay, so that's who's got the oh. most damage on. Power Ranger's in trouble. Two heavy hitting characters out here on the board. If you get clipped. Oh, Apache's, yep. Still Pache alive, but that. just barely oh. the weapon from way downtown. Lopez scores the KO with the smallest hitbox of a weapon throw in the game. Right there with Orb. That's impressive. Throwing those tiny little guitars way across the <laughs> stage. Scored a KO. <laughs> Sniped. All right, we're pretty even here. But uh, Taros, Mr. Hughes is in trouble. If you get hit with a heavy hit, it's going to be out of there. But same back at you with Lopez. Oh, nice. Yeah. Neutral Sig going to take him out from that spear coming out of Queen Nai. And a Ooh, good team combo. Look Big at time that. damage on Page. His teammate was gone for like four seconds, and that's all the time they needed to get him down, get his teammate down to red. That, that was a great too nice. quick little combo. They seized their opportunity. Definitely did, and here it is. Page trying to make a play on Lopez, but Lopez with the down dodge into the neutral sig gonna punish for oh, look at to go that. Aerial. Lopez just left. He knew he, he knew he's either not gonna make it back or it's not worth the time it's gonna take to get back, and he just jumped himself off the side there. Mm-hmm. Well, that punish that came out from uh from Page, it was it, it it hit and he had already used so many jumps, Lopez just knew he wasn't gonna make it back. Scrapping down here. Wow, you tried to throw just pure Ooh. hands with the neutral light. And Power Ranger said, I got something for that. Took out the stock. And now we got a big lead from uh, from the blue yeah, team. That's rough here because Lopez is basically like full two stocks. They're getting damage on him. But what a huge lead here for Lopez. And Lopez with a power lead, uh, is it, it does a lot. I mean, he... Uh, Lopez gets crazy when he's got a lead. And a lot of times, those crazy plays really pay off in big ways. Things that he wouldn't normally do if uh, it risked losing the match. But when he's ahead like this, it's exactly the kind of stuff that wins the match. Definitely, definitely. Uh, Queen Nye that's able to freely throw Sigs around because you have a lead is really dangerous. It's so much damage, so much coverage. And that's uh, talking about Sigs, right? That okay. bouncing coming up from Hughes was so nice. And they can do this. They're definitely seeking the KO on Power Ranger right now, and he knows it. Power Ranger, got to be careful here, because if he goes down, that's the ticket for Page and Yuz to win this, although it'll still be a tough match, the 1v2 against Lopez. Never mind, it's a 1v2 for Yuz against Power Ranger and Lopez. I don't know if he can do this. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. He's got a full stock sitting there nice on Lopez. And he has pretty much one hit. He could get Power Ranger out of there, but one hit is going to do it for Lopez hit. and get him out of there. That was a good game. That was a, that was a, that was a good one. 
that ties up the set. Red versus man, that was a sick combo here. These replays. All right, let's take a look at this damage. Woo! Seven, 760 coming out from Lopez. 55% on 11 six. I Dude, like it. 11, yeah, that is. Take note, Queen Nine players. This is how it's done. You you got you you got to land those signatures. That's what it comes down to. Definitely. It's crazy. Queen Nine, you know, has really been out of the meta for a long time. Considered a joke pick in some cases. You know, it was like a. It was like a funny thing to play Queen Nye. You believe I'm playing Queen Nye with such low speed in 2v2, you know, <laughs> LOL. But like, Lopez is killing it. He's killing it and we're seeing it more and more now. It's not so crazy anymore. In fact, it's, a, it's in the meta, I would say at this point. I mean, when you got players like Lopez coming through, Definitely. I mean, you know, it's about the game's balance, man. I think the game's pretty balanced where you can pick a Queen Nye, especially in twos, and do well. Yeah, I mean, really, you could pick anything. It comes down to the players. Oh, what? It's Lopez ground pounded. Oh, that was wild. Into his own teammate's attack. And now everybody is super damaged on their first stocks. We're about to see stocks fly. Yeah, it's getting close. It's about time. What we got? Oh, look at that. They were just too scared to press anything, both of them over there on the side. And well, we got Power Ranger cleaning up both stocks of Yuz and Pajay. And uh, yeah, lead from the blue team, but they're still all pretty hurt. If they get clipped, yep, that's one. Little, no, nobody's going to be, be able to make that back. Okay. Yeah, he had room too. He, could, he still had his dodge after that. Definitely. Ooh. We Smack die. him for trying Never to die. Him. Okay, Power Rangers down. Lopez still fighting his heart out, unarmed against these two. Okay, he gets punished. He gets punished for the attack. That all checks out. <laughs> <laughs> Lopez coming back on a fresh stock. Uh, Power Ranger Lopez still have a pretty good lead here, but it's not too far for Page and Yuz to bring it back. Keep your eye on Page here, though, as he is entering kill range. Avoids the killing blow from Lopez. What a combo from Yuz using the weapon throw. He was he was too far to land anything else. So here's the weapon throw. Oh. Man, Lopez extending the farthest reaching SIG he's got out for the KO. That's tough. Like, Page was playing really well there for a moment, was staying in a nice little pocket and getting some good punishes, and finally tried to dance around Power Ranger, got hit by that SIG. Unfortunate, but you're still in the game. You guys are still looking good. If they can get these stocks out of here, almost had Power Ranger on the recovery. No good. And Page is eating some damage now. There we go. Finally got one out of there. And now we're both down to the final stock on the red team trying to get Lopez. Lopez has been hanging on to stocks this whole set, right? Yeah, well, you know, you know the old saying, how the old saying goes, uh, Queen Nye never die. And, <laughs> you know, Queen Nye sometimes die, but... Oh, oh, oh my goodness, Page! That, that was maybe even unnecessary. Yuz <gasps> tries to get the save. Oh man, just barely misses the save. Luckily, at least survives without it. But this is gonna be a tough one for Yuz here. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, man, that was good. they they don't even they just they they're like talking in each other's heads. They're like, oh, team combo Alpha Delta, engage, <laughs> and they and they got it. They got it all figured out immediately. That was uh, so they, fast. They morphed together like Voltron for that one. <laughs> just got it done. <laughs> oh, what a good. That's, this is a good set, man. This is these games are so close, right down to the end. Even, but what's wild is they had that big comeback game in the first one, and then the next yeah. two games, when you're when you're staying close knit, they're not able to pull them out at the end. Yeah, it's tough. But it maybe shows they should just maybe this they only yeah they need the pressure of only having four stocks to win. Yeah, maybe that's it. <laughs> Back against the wall, make you fight tougher. <laughs> exactly. But, you know, <laughs> we know that Yuz and Page have what it takes to defeat the number one seed team here. They, they've already done it once. But it's going to take two more in a row for them to come away with the victory here and earn their way into winner's side top eight, which is exactly where you want to be. That is a prestigious place to be in any fighting game. Top That's side, like top eight. That's exactly what you want, man. It's like MasterCard everywhere you want to be. But, uh... <laughs>
<laughs> All right, so we got some good stocks uh, taken out right there. Pretty even game. Oh, oh I was just I can't about believe to talk it. about it. Lopez is just going for it. Oh, here we go. Team combo. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, man, that's big damage. Look at that. Already, Page in orange. He just got back. He, he's barely done anything. He's in red. Oh, my, he's still getting knocked around. Page has yet to even touch a weapon on his second stock. This is brutal. So Will tough, he deliver so one tough. blow before he loses this stock here? Oh, oh my no. gosh, oh, dodge no. too early and lands in the active frames of the side sig coming up from Lopez! Lopez Holy is landing cow. so many sigs, so many they KOs! Have... Page has not gotten to play yet. He, this is insane. Okay, nice. He sneaks in a, a neutral, unarmed neutral sig for a KO on Lopez, but Man, they are far behind now. Well, look, this is what they wanted, right? Backs against the wall. <laughs> now they've got to perform, or they're going down to the lower bracket here because Power Ranger and Lopez only need one more victory to come away with it. Oh, so tough. So tough. They got two stocks, and these guys, you, know, you guys talk about healthy stocks. This is not healthy. We got some blood red stocks coming on the side of the red team. Ooh, but a nice side stick right back at them. Oh, no. Pahe uses out of there. Pahe is going to be able to make it back, able to dodge through the weapon throw. Ooh, hey, that actually took the stock. Still really hurt. This is doable. But it's it's Pahe's really, really time tough. to shine. This is it. This is this is this will make him a legend. Oh, <gasps> caught on the bottom side of the recovery. That's brutal. Lopez and Power Ranger win it out and are moving on to top eight winner's side as expected from the number one seeded team in this tournament. Still a very impressive performance there from Page and Yuz who managed to take a game off of them but just couldn't get any more, man. I mean, they, they must have awakened something in Power Ranger and Lopez because they popped off after that. Dude, Lopez was not playing. I want to see this. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. 15 sigs, 53% accuracy. Yep, yep. And man, those were some damage. KOs. He's, that's bonkers. Yeah, <laughs> they're so well placed. Like, dub doubling the damage out, of orange, use, throwing nearly. them out. Yeah, oh, for God. sure. Yeah, it kept Page and uh, Page and uh, use down to three hundred damage. Neither one were able to cross four. My goodness. <sighs> it's still a good. Well, set. GG. Exciting. That was a good set. That was a, uh, that was a that was a good and exciting set. But as expected here, Power Ranger and Lopez are in top eight. They're looking good to go on and take this whole tournament, but they may have some extreme opponents coming up against them, right? As we get into our next match here of Hyper and Kaina Ackerman, who we just saw. I mean, they're playing amazing. I oh, yeah. would not be surprised if they just kept on going through this entire tournament. But going up against Brujo, and Zido Keijo, these two are amazing players that I think could also take this turn. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised to see them in the podium, right? I think they can make okay. it to top three in this tournament as well. So right now, we've got a clash of some titans here. Clash of some titans here. <laughs> and uh, it's going to be a good one. Um, Let's see. Let's see what these guys have coming up for us next. They're already locking in here. Looks like Hyper and Kaina sticking with their old team comp of Reno and Bodvar. Brujo, who we know uh, really popped off in last year's BCX, uh, playing Jayun now for 2v2 on the Brin. And uh, what is Zido Keijo going to be going with here? Check out the power rankings. And you can see oh. Brujo. I mean, Brujo. Those two top eight placements were toward the end of last year. Uh, still staying relevant here, but his success has been very recent. And same with Kaina Ackerman. In fact, all these guys here, except for Zito Cage, Zito Cage has been around for a very long time. But uh, okay. Kaina Ackerman, Hyper, Brujo, all very recent. Uh, all their their great performances have all been very recent here. Well, uh, but if, man, you're if, playing, you ask if you're playing me, well as of late. Uh, you know, that's a good thing to, to that's, be yeah. going a recency into, is big. finishing this out. Yeah, you yeah. know. Recency you're, you're is very big now, at Brahma. And then you're coming into the, the world championships after this. So that's this is exactly where you want to be uh, playing your best. All right. I'm Look, remembering. Another brand. Yes, another brand. There's, there's lots of brands out here. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, She's so I'm good. remembering Hyper and Kaina Ackerman as uh, just. They absolutely thrashed Emperor and Broly. That blew my mind because I was looking at that like <laughs> Emperor and Broly could actually win this. And not a chance, man. Hyper and, and Kaina just performed so well. Will Brujo and Zito Keijo make the same. Meet the same fate? That was a brutal, brutal set. But I mean, we, we got to get into it before we find out. I've tried to see some more of this uh, this Reno play. Those guns were looking so clean in the blast set they played. And it's going to start off pretty nice here uh, once again. But clip by the axe out on the side, taking some damage. Hyper trying to get into the feel of things right now, popping some shots. All right. Brujo dancing around in the middle of all the chaos, not really getting clipped too much. Dodged the Sig, but didn't get a punish onto Hyper. Here we go. Kind of Ackerman dancing uh -oh. around, no weapon. Finally gets one, dodges, and gets a clean punish with the neutral light with the sword. KO on Hyper, okay. The first so here we stock. go, great start. Yeah, first stock going in favor of Brujo and Zido Keijo, who I'm going to start calling ZDQ for speed. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> yeah. Nice acronym. acronyms. It's the old ZDQ here. Okay, Kaina. Wait. It's Brujo stock to lose here. Kaina going for the edge guard. Perfectly done. ZDQ tried to come in for the punish. Couldn't make it there in time. Kaina gets away. And still has all three of his sides. The only one left with all three of his stocks here. Kind of Ackerman's playing really clean with his hammer right now. Just scooping the mess out of people with some hogging dogs. There it is. Stomp there. Not really letting Zito Casual get anything off right now, but uh, he's in danger on that stock. Yep, there it is. Finally got the thing taken out. And now you left Hyper alone on deep red. And they opted to not chase him down. Got the spear. Almost had him, but he's able to dodge out of the D-Light. And here we go. Holding on to this second stock is Hyper in the yeah, skies. Just barely. Zito Kejo almost had a KO. What? Oh, man, that was super dead on that one. I mean, Hyper was, that first hit was probably enough. And then right into a second signature for the kill, that's brutal. Hyper down to his last stock. He's the first one down to his last stock here. His teammate, Kaina, who is just killing it on the scoreboards, is now also down to his final stock. ZDQ and Brujo have a significant lead here that they could push into a big, big lead. But well, now they're in trouble, uh, both off yeah. the side. Oh no, there goes one, drop it like flies. Brujo trying to make it around, but Hyper's got the corner guard on him. Still alive though, makes it back to the stage and gets some damage out onto Hyper. Even more, Brujo, small, a small punish to pay for the damage that he did. Still yeah, holding man. onto his second stock. This is great for the red team here. ZDQ and Brujo might score a win. On a team such as this, it would be quite a victory, I think. Yeah, that's something you want. You want that big first game. You want to take that first game and then set yourself up, set the tone so you can get the dub. Right now, they're leaving it open to where Blue Team might be able to run this back. Look at that. ZDQ eating some big damage. Okay, I like it. Got the KO, and now it's all up to Kaina Ackerman. Woo! Nice. Oh, but Kaina can get it done. He can get it done. He's still going. Has not found a KO, but so much damage. Now he's got to be careful on how he lands these attacks because we got both of these guys ready to punish anything he does. And oh, no, he can't make it. A beautiful weapon throw from ZDQ, Zedokejo, taking him down. And the first win, perhaps unexpectedly, goes to the red team here. Yeah, yeah, that last little piece right there, he dodged upwards instead of to the side at an angle and went right into the weapon toss. Uh, unfortunate, because I actually wanted to see that clutch. He was doing very, very good with that hammer. Look at this right here, dodged upwards, bow, popped in the noggin, there it goes. But game one, going to the red team, and we are going to the Crystal Temple. One of my favorite stages on the game, by the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the same. Team did Big amazing. same, dude. Big same. <laughs> All right. Double bow bar pretty, this time. Pretty even across the board. Wait, what? Who's doing both double bow bar? Oh, okay, okay. No more Reno. No more All the Reno. Reno fans revolting in the chat. How upsetting. <laughs> <laughs> we'll hey, I, heard, I was I was really liking the Reno, but I understand. <laughs> Double bow bar is tri tried and true. Right, right. 
All right, getting some good damage onto Bruno Brujo. Brujo's finally swinging back with the axe. Got us some clips onto Hyper, but Hyper Garden on the edge tried to get the ground pound. No good. All right. Pretty even start of this game. Oh my goodness, Kind of Ackerman tried to come through with the Sarah. That would have been perfect if he was able to land that punish on Zeta Kejo, but was not able to land it. The scoop is good, the weapon toss is not, and ZDQ able to make it back on stage. Well, in the meanwhile, Brujo lost his first stock and taking some significant punishment on his second one. We're looking for a KO from the red team here because they have already fallen behind. They've got some ground to make up for. There's the first one, maybe Hyper coming next. Good punish from Brujo on there. He's looking for the KO. This could be. Yes, that was it was the hit stun that came from his teammate that ultimately led to his KO there. Yeah, a weapon toss of the gauntlet. That was actually perfect timing. Hit him and allowed him to combo with the Sair. Got him. All right, I like it. This is some this good is synergy. A de this, the, the, the lead here is deceptive because Brujo is on his second stock and in the red. And even though ZDQ's got all three of his stocks, uh, you know, Brujo could end up on his final stock at any moment here. And considering that Hyper and Kynar are still pretty healthy with two stocks left, they got room to mess around right now. There goes ZDQ, and there goes mm. Brujo down to his final stock now. And just like that, in the blink of an eye, the tables have turned. Hyper and Kynar have got a pretty significant lead to work with here. Yeah, you called it perfect timing. Oh, stolen uh -oh. recovery! That's oh. a oh, no! Get wow, Kaino, he was done! Kaino was done for! He got the down air that he needed to get the chase dodge to survive. Had he not landed that hit, he'd have just fallen to his death. Unbelievable. That's wild, because he definitely had him out of there. But still getting some good damage. Got the spear in hand. Got the ladder. What am I talking about? Trying that's to a land spear. Some that's a, what, you haven't seen a spear like that? Come on, that's a spear. <laughs> uh, you look at that, and I think definitely big time spear. Right Imagine, there. right? Back in the olden days, they just come out with a ladder. <laughs> they, didn't have, they didn't have John Cena there back then. <laughs> All right. Ew, good punish on the D-Light from Ooh. Hyper. Just put him up into the heavens. Well, that was not able to get the stock. Bruno. Brujo. <laughs> 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 got him out of there. And now we got a – they took the lead back. This is uh, this is good. This one isn't as deceptive as the last because Brujo yeah. is not as hurt as he was previously. got to be careful. Brujo's got to be careful here. Oh, man, it's not even worth landing anything now. Just stay safe. Oh, he's staying safe. Well done, that was good. Brujo. Now, okay, keep your eye on Brujo here, man. He's either – he's going to make or break this. Off the side in a dangerous position here. Fights his way back up, but he hits his teammate on the way. Brujo, is he going to score the KO on Hyper or is he going to get knocked out himself? He's got, got Hyper the off hit. the side. Kind of Ackerman's trying to relieve the pressure here. He ends up hitting his teammate. Kind of Ackerman is doing really good playing that back row of defense for the blue team. Keep trying to just Whoa, get punishes when they chase the Hyper. Got the KO. This could be it's the win for him. Too. Yep, that might be the game. Got a combo. No, does not combo. Woo. Dodge out. And the retaliation from Kaina is going to be the end of that stock. Beautiful job from the blue team. I love that down air, chase dodge down, weapon throw. The chase dodge lets you throw that weapon at its maximum velocity. And, uh, you, I mean, you rarely see such an aggressive engagement like that. You, you, you following up in that way off the side already. You already don't have all your jumps. He lands a down air. He's going to chase dodge down now, way off stage. Yeah, that was Let's that see was it right wild. here. There Boom, chase Boom. dodge down and the weapon throw. You didn't see the weapon throw, but it, it landed. It was good. You, you know. It was good. It was good. It was good. It was good. <laughs> Spot on. And I like that uh, breakdown of knowledge of the game right there, right? That chase dodge down, giving you the velocity to throw the weapon down. I'm going to have to add that yeah, to my yeah. gameplay. We weapon throws are they're velocity based. The amount of force they do, damage is always the same, extremely low, mm -hmm. one or two. Velo the force is based off the velocity and an airtime multiplier. So plays like. Like, when you throw them from really far away, even if the weapon's moving slowly, it's going to blast them because the longer it stays in the air, the harder it's going to hit. And that's, that's why right. those super big teardrop weapon throws are always so insane because it's like, well, it's obvious. It's on the way here. You know, it's very telegraphed. But if it lands, it's probably a KO. Right, right. That's why those plays where you throw your lance up on the side of the map when someone's recovering, it falls yeah. on their head. Those are big time yeah, plays. Yeah, exactly. 
All right. We're talking about Piper's big time players. already in red. He, Jeez. Yeah. 30 seconds Piper. in, he's in red. Oh, that's not going to KO. He's still just trying to find a weapon. All right, now with the sword, he's ready to fight back despite all the damage that's been done to him. A beautiful punish. Wow, Frujo and ZDQ working hard on that punish there. He turned a bad situation into a great one for them. Frujo going for the finisher on Hyper. Hyper is done. Excellent play from Frujo there. And then ZDQ getting the, a similar KO with the spear down air. Yeah, very, very good first stocks coming out from the red team. They were able to clean those up fairly fast. They didn't have, they weren't in deep red or anything like that. So it was good stock. Oh, wowzers. Okay, uh, so ignore everything I just said. You know what I mean? It was a good stock. <laughs> man. <laughs> it's a tie game now. Tie game, tied set. It's close. Oh, very, very good. That's, that's what you want to see, right? You want to see people close in skill fighting their heart out. This is what we're here yeah, for. We don't want to see That's watches. really what's happening here, man, is these, both of these teams are capable of winning this set, and we're just going to have to watch and see. Oh, no. Missed the sideline. ZDQ punished, but didn't get too much off of it. Hyper hit him with a side light with the sword. Didn't get too much. Oh, wow, and after those first stocks, they're uh, falling That's, behind pretty yeah. big here. It was it was totally even. Uh, just less than a minute ago, it was totally even. And now Hyper and kind of have taken a pretty significant lead here. Hyper started to get damaged. Oh, no way. Oh, my goodness. That was an awesome play by Hyper. Holy cow. So much damage on Brujo. The, the, the sense to go for the ground pound there, knowing, you know, with the, the, ed, the, the wall right there off the side. And they just did it again with a down air. These guys are so good. Kaina Ackerman and Hyper have got synergy beyond belief. You ain't lying. Look at that. Punish on the dodge. Caught him in the skies. And I think that's going to be done, though. Yes, sir. D-Light recovery. Going to take him out of there. <sighs> Good set. Good set so far. Good but uh, blue team's starting to run away. Yeah. So kind of Ackerman and Hyper just need one more victory in the set to move on to top eight winner's side where Power Ranger and Lopez are waiting for him. Or Brujo and ZDQ could still bring this back. They just have to win two in a row. So I was just looking at that replay. That was some beautiful coverage with that double uh, double Bovar. He did the neutral sig and rose up off the ground. And then I don't remember if it was kind of Ackerman or Hyper, but the other d came under with the side sig and went under him. So the top and bottom was covered with those sigs. Yeah. That was kind of sick. The way these guys finesse around each other's hitboxes in such a way uh, you know, knowing that friendly fire is there, it's so easy to hit your teammate, but they'll still just dance right alongside their teammates' hitboxes and score these epic coverage. Like you, like you said, there wasn't even a team combo, right? It was just great coverage. Exactly. And that's the kind of stuff you need. Look at this. Chase it down with the hammer. Ooh, the weapon uh, toss. Hyper. Oh, it's score. still not done. He got it. That's a, that's insane. That's 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 not a zero to death, but it may as well be. That was in that was brutal. Yeah, might as well have been. That was beautiful, beautiful hammer play. Oh, and the six gonna hit the teammate. Oh, oh it's starting off real the tough. Team in this combos last game. already. Oh man, kind of aggravated. Game. Hyper are ready to run away with this. They're trying. Oh, no way. The Sig lands, and now we got deep red. Br Bruce is about to lose another stock here. Hyper's going hard for it. Oh, I'm scared. Oh, oh that's going to be it. Wow. They still have, and they're still going. No way. Oh, my. I can't what? believe it. Just a couple frames away from another zero to death KO. That would have been, been too much. <laughs> that Holy was cow. intense. I thought he had it. Oh, yeah, what a start. Not lying, though. That was probably like one to two frames of shy of being a KO. What an right. insane start here for Hyper and Kaina. Looking like they're going to make it on to top eight here. Another stock gone. These guys sent five stocks to two, and Brujo's already in kill range. Oh, my goodness. Brujo, fight back. No. Oh, back no. Step snatchies. As soon as he fought back, he got whipped off the stage. And it's just ZDQ now. Oh, look at this. <laughs> no. <laughs> They're both beckoning him over. Oh, here comes the combo. What do they got for it? Ooh, Hyper dropped the stop right there. Holy cow. This has been 
a brutal game, man. I, very yeah. one-sided. Hyper and kind of Ackerman right from the start. Oh, he almost... That would have been great. A recovery he into Scoop. That's what they wanted to, to get. He tried to toss him back down. I wonder what they were going to do after that. Woo! What a set! Kind of oh. Ackerman and Hyper have rightfully earned their spot in top eight. Spectacularly so. Holy cow. They're moving on to top eight winner's side. They're going to be going up against Power Ranger and Lopez as predicted. And that's going to be an amazing set. When we get to the start of top eight, remember that this is the match that you're going to be seeing. Hyper and Kaina versus Power Ranger and Lopez. That one truly could go either way. Those are two unstoppable forces meeting each other. One of them is going to have to be stopped. You can't have two unstoppable forces. Someone gets stopped. We're going to see who. Uh, what an epic set. Top eight is shaping up to be incredible here. Oh, yeah, man. I'm going to be sitting and watching, enjoying myself. You said two unstoppable forces. So we got Juggernaut versus the Hulk coming up, man. I'm ready to watch that. <laughs> I'm going to be sitting here with a nice cool glass of water laid back on a, on a Saturday afternoon watching some beautiful Brawlhalla. But, uh, yeah, that damage in that last game, 208 coming out from Brujo, 318 from ZDQ. 11-6 <sighs> for 36%. Man, it, yeah, it just fell apart there at the end, man. <laughs> It, it did it did kind of I want to say it's less that it fell apart for ZDQ and Brujo and more that it all came together for Kaida Ackerman and Hyper, you know? I like that. I like it that. It really did all come together because they were playing very well. Everyone was playing very well. And then all of a sudden in the last game, absolutely brutal. The, the stock taken in less than 30 seconds. And then another stock taken before a minute. And before you know it, it was five stocks to two. And they're losing <laughs> their final stocks. It was, holy cow, man. It all happened so fast. Kind of Ackerman and Hyper are so impressive. And, and even more so that this is really, this is kind of... It's all so recent for Kaina Ackerman. I mean, he went from zero to hero in the span of a few months. And now Kaina Ackerman is looking like a favorite here to win this tournament. But again, he's going to have to, they're going to have to win against the number one seed in order to make it to the winner's final. I'm so excited to see that happen. But like you were saying, Zip, we're going to have to watch that one from the sidelines because it's our time to go now. We're going to get some new casters in here for you all to finish up the rest of top 12 on the winner's side, and then we'll be getting into the top eight. So thank you all for watching. Stick around, there's more to come. Pressing the Dodge Dash button on the ground while holding forwards or backwards will result in your legend dashing in that direction. You can dash whenever you want to. There's no stamina or cooldown. Dashing backwards is a little bit slower than dashing forwards. Combining a dash with any kind of attack will increase its reach and make it more difficult for your opponent to react in time. Dashing once and continuing to hold the directional button will result in your legend sprinting. Sprinting is usually around the same speed as pressing dash consequentially. Well, unless you have a three movement speed or lower.
And welcome back from the break. We are getting further into our top 32. We're going to have a nice little block of four sets here. I'm Sparky. I'm joined by TK Breezy. I know he's ready to get into these because we have some top eight qualifier matches. Those are super important, TK. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm ready to get into it because of that, but also because who's on the screen right now? Two of my favorite South American players, Wes and DB, about to step up and do it up again. However, they will, they will be going against two names I'm not super familiar with right now, but could be familiar with after this set. It's going to be Guga and uh, No Henry. No Henry? Yeah, it's, it looks like No Henry. Uh, let's give some background on them. They came into this after a 3 1 victory against Seven and Tavares in winner's round one. Ooh. So, not used to seeing a team like this get this deep in the bracket. Uh, if I'm looking at Guga's stats coming into this one, uh, Guga is regularly kind of hard stuck ninth in the two most recent uh, community tournaments Brawl number 24 and Olympus number seven. Hard stuck ninth there. Then going back to the 3rd of September, Olympus 2v2 number six, fifth place there. That was fantastic. But a lot of like sevenths and ninths kind of in and out of top eight. So, this is a really important set beyond just the overall overall context of the bracket, but specifically for this team to kind of break through that ninth position, come into top eight and doing it on the winner's side, that'd be huge. Yeah, man. So, I mean, the thing is, being hard stuck ninth, you know, in, in, in uh, the grand scheme of things, definitely sucks. You're not making no money there. But, uh, you know, the fact that you're one out of top eight has got to feel good. That means you're just, you're one step away. You're one adjustment away from getting into these top eights. And honestly, this could be the one. Uh, could be the one, especially on winner sides of things, that would be super nice. But if not on the winner side, you could still make, try to make it here on the loser side of things as we get into it very soon. This is everybody we got playing uh, right now. We got DB and um, West going up, and then we're going to have Maxis, 9-2K, and Hanabi versus Alzo and Yuki. That should be a, a super nice match as well. Looking at their their first two matches, uh, Maxi and Hanabi going over Fiend and Balthazar is actually a pretty big upset. Uh, but also, like, in the Game 5 uh, situation for both of these teams on this bottom half, man, that means they were definitely fighting to get to this spot. Yeah, I would say the uh, Yuki Elzo set as well over Nusak and uh, Manexo. Let me just look at these power rankings real quick for this region because I don't know exactly where Yuki and Elzo are. Uh, Elzo coming in at 22. I don't see Yuki on that. You might hear the uh, character choices or stage banning coming in in the background. These players are ready to get into this one. You're seeing the stats for them on the screen. We talked about how important it would be for Noenri and Guga to break through into that top eight position, especially on the winner's side. But, man, uh, man, it's Wes and DB. Duke and I both have them in second place in our predictions that happened in the pre-show. I know a lot of people expect Wes and DB to be guaranteed top three, if not top two, and maybe even top one. Yeah, I think that, yeah, I mean, it's definitely a hard team to come over, man. Uh, DB and Wes, even for those who are not familiar with this uh, scene, uh, the South America scene, you definitely know these two names for definitely. sure. So uh, it is going to be a hard-fought battle to get over them, but, hey, man, don't want to count anybody out until it's actually over. We got a, a swap, swap of characters here on the screen, though. I know we were playing some other stuff on the uh, on the blue side, on the red side, but we have Bodvar now out and, uh, I'll say Cross. That is not Cross. Oh, Caspian. That's Caspian. There we go. Yeah, the Caspian. I don't fault you for not necessarily uh, remembering Caspian in the game for a second because there, there are not many times when we see a Caspian player coming out. It is very rare. Uh, people talk about the signatures all the time, but it's like the two weapons together form – sort of a combination that people aren't really super familiar with having to do kind of both of the same thing with each weapon rather than having like a damage builder and a ko weapon yeah there's definitely a lot of uh short range uh scrapping going on in the caspian set i have to say though i mean with the with the way that the weapons uh, meta is right now caspian should technically be in a decent oh. spot oh god Oh, well, that was not not a great spot there for that Bodvar for sure, man. Going to be sent out of there super quickly. Lost that stock before anyone even hit red. So he is way, way, way down uh, as far as, uh, you know, just just advantage going on for the red team. So, But as I was saying, yeah, I think the Gauntlets and the Katars are in a pretty decent spot. So Caspian, on paper, should be all right. It's just, you know, the fact that you are lacking range can be a, a, an issue when you're playing up against something like Taros with the hammer out. Oh, Wes, he's going to get stomped. He gets back. DB comes over, rotates. He's going to bump his head just a little bit. Had plenty of movement options. There's the side stick. That almost KO'd in orange. Right. Wait a minute now. You can see him definitely. Wes kind of moving around right there. Gets past Guga. 
Now in the middle. Oh, okay. Easy pickup right there. I'll say Guga's coming back, so he was kind of sandwiched. Not, not, the, not the best sandwich there, but it was definitely uh, two opponents around him, so he ends up taking that easy uh, side stick right there from No uh, No Enry. And, well, that's out. Unfortunate. It looks like No Enry is kind of uh, doing the bulk of the work here in game one. Maybe uh, Guga needs to wake up just a little bit because he's kind of getting bullied out of this game. Everybody else is on two stocks, either in the yellow or white. Meanwhile, Guga is on final stock in white. Now everybody's in the yellow. So West DB and No Enry are keeping similar pace. We've seen No Enry doing a lot of work so far, especially with the guitars in his hands. Signature's coming out. He's hitting quite a lot of them. Guga pushing DB over to the right side. DB is unarmed, grabs the weapon. Oh, you're, you're hearing those guitar noises. And in this game with these characters, you know it's only coming from one source, and that's No Enry. Yeah, so no injury right now, man. Definitely, uh, well, he was definitely keeping, as you said, he was definitely keeping the pace for the red team, but with the pace oh. not being kept at all by Goog, I mean, he was getting absolutely bullied this game, as you said earlier, man. Like, lost that first stock in record time, was behind uh, on a stock pretty much the entirety of this game after that, and and just wasn't really making up uh, a lot of damage either there. So I'm, I'm going to be interested to see what those damage numbers are at the end of, this, end of the set, but I assume his is re uh, relatively low. Now, I really liked that edge guard that DB did on the right side that took Guga out of this game. Is you saw him falling down with Guga. You know Guga had a hammer in his hand. He was looking for the classic hammer edge guard where you dip under your opponent, reach up with the recovery, and pull him down. No wonder he is just going to fall off the stage. They're not exactly sure what happened, but that game was basically over anyway. You know West yeah. and DB are so good in the 2v1 situation. They're not going to drop that. But, yeah, look at that damage. By Damn. far the most damage in the game. Done by No Enry at 6.07. We're going to get a replay of that edge guard, and you'll see where Guga really wanted that recovery. He's dipping down. He wanted it. DB kind of matched his height, was just a little bit above him, but no way was in danger of getting hit by a hammer recovery or anything. And then he just hit a side air. Guga didn't have like the presence of mind in that situation to go for the side air because he was sort of tunnel visioned on getting that classic hammer recovery option. Yeah, he definitely got ran over, though. If you saw those stats, man, took the most damage, dealt the least damage. Not a great time there for Google, who's going to go ahead and swap over to the Koji instead. He's like, I'm dropping this Bodvar. I'm going to keep the sword. I'm bringing a bow into the mix here. And obviously some different things. But see how this one plays out. Man, I think, honestly, I like the idea of the Bodvar because they're, that was their... That was their long range player. But, I mean, I, I assume... I mean, the bow still has some pretty good range, too. So you're still uh, working with it. But I just... I don't know. Like, that, that first game is kind of telling... As we get into the second game here on Shipwreck, I'm a little surprised that they decided to go, or they left this one open, seeing that Guga was getting uh, edgeguarded quite frequently. So now you're just setting yourself up to get edgeguarded even harder. We did see No Enry with some good options on the corner. Uh, we haven't seen him so far this game yet. Guga gets recovery. He bounces off the main stage. That's exactly what he could have really hoped for there. The best case scenario if you're a red team fan. Both members of the blue sent to the left side. The gravity cancel side signature from Guga was a little bit telegraphed there. DB wasn't kind of anywhere near it for that to hit. Guga's yeah. going to get stuck uh -oh. in the middle, see how much damage they put out. White to yellow. That's all they were able to do. So it was about 50 damage there. But still, 50 damage is certainly better than zero damage. Anybody with uh, like a kindergarten math understanding can probably get that one. Very true. So, I mean, also, I was looking at that. The way that combo went, I think they were uh, that the Ter uh, Teros or uh, DB was... Or I guess West was expecting probably a side air instead of that down uh, or that ground pound because he was going up for a recovery, but it was a little off the mark. So it could have just been miscommunication or it could have just been misspaced. Regardless, though, as you said, damage is damage. And, uh, well, they are a little ahead right now, but nothing too crazy, which is actually a great showing for Guga in the second game because, yeah, as I said, he was getting absolutely demolished in that first one. Still looking like he might be able to lose the stock before everybody else on the screen. That is a way, that was a super good angle. Yeah, he's gone. No, Henry's doing a great job of getting through a lot of what the blue team was throwing at him until just now. When he was recovering on the right stage back, it was fantastic. Another 2v2 team combo. Unfortunately, blue team, I don't really know if that was like a flub. They were really close to one another, so that can be really tough to actually find the right combo to hit your opponent. Yeah, I mean, I think that, that down uh, charge down stick was actually a pretty good idea, but yeah, I, I think... Uh, with how close they were, West probably wasn't expecting that option. Probably not an option that they go for too often in the middle of their combos. So, either way, the uh, only person left on their last stock happens to be DB, who was saved right there. The recovery coming through, but I think he got hit by that weapon. Oh, good lord. No. He oh, just no. juggled him all the way to the top of the screen. He just kept going in, throwing short Yukins out, ready to take him off the top. 
Yeah, that's that's the unfortunate part. Now, looking back, I had to look back at that play, and the reason why uh, Noel did not was not. Oh my God, how are y'all? Y'all just so gross, go. bro. They had it's that so one. So gross. They were ready for that one. Had it perfectly ready to go. Had that hammer and unarmed option. Again, no injury, putting out a lot of damage. They still only did 423, but based on the way that they lost that game, 423 is still pretty good. Guga over at 245. And I want to compare that to some of the stats from last game because no injury stats were so good. He dealt 600 damage. He threw out 59 light attacks, hit 53% of them, by far the highest in the game. He also threw out eight signatures, hit 63% of them. All of those numbers went down, except for the damage taken, which went way up. Man, that that is just unfortunate showing right here for the red team. They might may get a chance to kind of like breathe life into this team as we go into our third game. I just now realized uh, what team we're playing here on the blue side, by the way. This is the max force team that you can make of two different characters. Oh, yeah, with, <laughs> yeah that, just, that didn't really come oh, in my brain <laughs> either. Like, they're, they're swinging, and uh, it's going to be uh, Knockout City all over the place for the yeah, blue team. Yeah, it definitely hurts when they – it doesn't matter. Like, those team combos don't even have to go that long because of how much force they have. So that's why they were able to clean up that last stock so quickly. But, yeah, man. Uh, getting right back into it. Oh, this looks like it. Oh, wait a minute. He's going to make it back to stage. Okay, I thought he was going to get reversed. I like the idea of Google going out there trying to make something happen for himself. You know, has to start taking some of these chances, seeing that, like, these first few games didn't go so well for him, but it seems as though he's kind of picking up pace here in these uh, in this last game right now. Yeah, complete red team improvement here. No injuries back to sort of the fighting style that we saw in game one, and Guga stepping it up a lot. They might get fully wiped here, but if you look at Wes and you look at DB's damage, they're right alongside where Guga and No Henry were just a second ago. Nice interruption from Wes with the Nair. Oh, they're putting so much damage on a No Henry. He's almost orange, and it seems like he just spawned back in. All right, man. Jesus. That's okay. There oh. we go. Get one. Good start. Okay, I thought Google's about to try to go a little crazy there, but decides to just get back to the stage. No, Henry just kind of hanging out right there. I think he could have actually, you know, hit the, the diversionary tactics and got himself a free ground pound uh, with DB looking most likely at No, Henry. But kind of plays or, uh, at Guga. Plays a little safe there, and that may end up being the downfall of this team a little bit, and that's going to be another stock most likely. He's bringing himself back. Oh, he touches. touched the bottom wall. Very Here's that close. beautiful down air. Oh, Guga getting juggled again. This time it's DB using the down signature on the cannon. Recovery's going to take him off the top. Now it's starting to fall apart for this red team. Wes and DB are really controlling all of this flow. They haven't hardly taken any damage on these second stocks where they completely wiped the red team. Yeah, man. All right. So this is definitely not going well again for the red team. It was, go it was looking pretty good in the middle side of this game, but now... The blue team is starting to pick it right back up. And again, every hit means so much when you're playing these two large force. Uh, oh. <laughs> oh, that was cute. <laughs> oh, no. The blue team is just coming out. They love that heavy button, and they're going to keep hitting it. That is a four stock for Wes and DB. They're going to take that set easily 3-0. Even though, man, I expected Guga's numbers to be better than 297 damage. He was doing some great stuff. Like, we saw him hit back-to-back D-Light -back combos there. We saw him pick up that D-Light recovery when the red team couldn't uh, confirm the edge guard on the right side. He picked up the KO right after that really yeah. easily. So he did play well. But, man, other than that, like, that second stock, that halted everything that red team was doing right. And yeah. DB and West just completely stomped them. I have to say, I mean, like, I feel like I don't think Google even broke. He didn't break the 300 plane right there on the on the, uh, on the damage done on any of those games. So, yeah, definitely kind of a big stomp there for uh, DB and West. But as I was saying, and like, you know, took me a while. Like, I guess I just forgot about uh, the crossover. But, yeah, that's just Zol and Taros, man. That is two yep. very, very large force characters in the, this game. Uh, Zol, actually one of the uh, I think he might be the only character that can hit 10 fours. Um, so yeah, I believe that's correct. So and that uh, is, yeah, it's coming something. into this one, like every hit, you're going to feel it. We talk about it with Taros all the time. It's because we see a lot of Taros players. We don't see too many Zolt players. It certainly occurs. And in fact, today, I think we have uh, several players who might go on to that Zolt pick that we've seen in like recent tournaments, like spring championship, summer championship, things like that. Um, so yeah, that is a uh, very scary team because you have two extremely dominant players in the region playing two characters that can absolutely absolutely delete stocks not only with just like 
major like game changing signatures like Taros Axe neutral signature things like that but also just the regular neutral play you are getting chunked the entire time the entire time man what a what a what a I guess what a game right there uh for DB and West as we get cr uh, ready for our next game uh, it's coming up soon. I actually uh, did not do the store thing fast enough, so couldn't. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'll zone Yuki, right? And then Hobby and Maxi right here should be a pretty good game. Hobby and Maxi. Oh, both of these people coming off of game five wins. So they're going to be trying to get uh, done a little faster as they go over uh, their opponent and try to get into the top eight for sure. Liking the teams that we're seeing, though, man. Rayman, Val, and then Val and... Uh, and Caspian, Caspian coming back onto the screen again, maybe, if this is what we're playing. And that's going to be uh, interesting to see, because as you say, you know, we don't get to see too much Caspian. Or we haven't seen too much Caspian until, I guess, recently. Looking up power ranks for all these players, and uh, they're they're low. They're lower than you might expect from a team this deep into the bracket. Uh, let me just find Maxis real quick, and I'll be able to report that. I don't, I don't even see Maxis at all in like the top 192. So Yugi Man. coming in uh, PR 42, Aoso coming in at 22, that's by far the best one here. Then Hanabi coming in at 46. So this is like reminiscent of EU like a year ago when there were 40 PR players coming into this. It was like maybe Ninja at the time, I can't remember, but we talked about him as the 40 boys. We're having more 40 boys this deep in the bracket. So definitely an interesting spot for both of these teams to be in today. Yeah, I mean, this is the type of stuff that definitely raises your power ranking. You getting this far into the bracket, uh, probably making a couple, well, definitely made a couple uh, uh, upsets already, but just trying to make a couple more upsets if you can get to this top eight. Uh, or, you know, even the top four if you keep playing well. So this is uh, pretty much I was like down the middle right now, but the red team does have a slightly more damage, and that's going to be the first stock dropped as well off that Caspian. Uh, I was going to say, man, Caspian really hasn't been showing up, but then I forgot that No Henry was doing the big work there in those first few games. But now it's up to Yuki to try to match that level of finesse that we saw in that last set. Hey. Yuki's struggling here. Look at everybody else on their first sock, except for Hanabi, who just got taken out a minute 15 uh -oh. into the game. Maxi also now taken out. That's going to be a full wipe of the blue team. Elzo, the only one remaining on first stock. Yeah, man, that was actually a pretty, uh, pretty big pickup for sure. The uh, immediate weapon toss after to go ahead and thwart any, uh, well, thwart that recovery. You saw the stars come out, but, you know, thwart any uh, upward momentum regardless. And now, it looks like the red team. You know, even the oh, say, even though uh, that first stock was low, oh, this should be another one. Oh, no, Hanabi going a little too high to try to complete that combo. Could have been another stock right there. I was expecting to see a, a, gravity, a GC probably side stick there. Go ahead and finish that one off. But still, still going to be living in a deep red from Yuki. Going to have to try to live here as long as possible. And that was cut um, short immediately. Couldn't even get the sentence out before that man was gone. Yeah, you were seeing Yuki throw out those side signatures on the Katars, hoping that one of the blue team members would run into it, but they just weren't. So Yuki was just kind of out of place. Then the second Yuki kind of got in the mix, immediately taken out. Though we might see a major momentum change. That's one player on the blue team taken out. If they can get this KO onto Maxi, that could put the red team in actually a really good spot because Ailzo still on that second stock, certainly living. Oh, okay. Don't step back on that one. Either way, though, Han oh, I'll say Hanabi, don't don't pineapple yourself. I saw him; he was looking a little scary for a second. But so now the blue team uh, or the red team actually in the lead, mostly because Alzo just will not take damage. Like he is took a long time for him to uh, lose that first stock, and now he's sitting pretty on the second stock, around the same percentages as most people on their last. If he can keep this type of momentum up and keep Yuki alive, this does look like this could be a win for the red team. However, though, Yuki definitely has to stay alive to not allow Alzo to be put into a 2v1 situation. Regardless if you have two stocks or not, a 2v1 situation is just not favorable. Ooh, this axe from Hanabi. Started putting pressure onto Yuki. Now turned over to Elzo. Hanabi just looking for the KO option. Nice spot dodge from Elzo. Does get the D-Light recovery. Ooh, ooh, that KO'd in orange. That's nice. fantastic. That's one reason to play Caspian right there. Ooh, okay, oh, that, that was, was nice. very close. Yeah, I like the idea. And Caspian's going to go ahead and finish it off anyway. Even off the wall bounce, does not care. That's going to be a... Well, look at the damage right here from uh, Alzo. 617 while only taking 411. That man was living and also dishing out the damage for sure, man. Good stuff.
yeah, you see everybody else in the mid 400s, which are good numbers. Like you were seeing the work Yuki was doing, pulled out four KOs in that one as well. But really, Aelzo coming out 617 damage, only dying one time. So still had two stocks up and picked two KOs out of that game. Incredible work from that team. It was looking a little bit hairy there towards the middle of it, but once both members of the blue team were red on their second stock, that's where they started to run away with it. The red team really took that one last minute. Yeah, that was that was something there. Because like at the beginning, yeah, the red team was the first person to lose their stock. And it was kind of like, it, at the time that the stock was lost, uh, both the blue team didn't really seem too hurt. But unfortunately, that was the only stock that uh, they seemed to go in their favor. Because after that, yeah, Alzo and Yuki just kind of picked it up and took off. Now, looking at didn't even realize, uh, as you said, yeah, Caspian has a lot of force as well with the eight force and the force stance right now. That's got to be nice. Yeah, that's going to be something that's going to definitely take some stocks super early. He's taking stocks up in the orange, possibly even like a deep yellow if you do it off stage. And that's, uh, you know, I guess that kind of makes up for the short range. Like you may be getting out range, but when you get a hit, like you're popping off. And you have that side signature on Katars. There is uh, no shortness or range in that move whatsoever. You'll see True. Caspian players use that from so far away. And in fact, Yuki used 21 signatures last game, almost looking like Surus on the Friday dev stream, but still only hitting 24%, but you saw they were really important ones that he did hit. Yuki, the neutral signature there didn't quite make contact to get the follow-up off of Ilzo, but still, this game, we're seeing Yuki take more damage than everybody else, but that was the story last game as well, and then Yuki taking Maxi off the top! Is that the, is that the, that's the um, Gauntlet down stake too? That, that seems like that has a lot of range as well, the, the little bomb throws. Uh, well, I guess the, the shard throws for this uh, skin, but... <laughs> But regardless, yeah, it seems like, you know, regardless of having uh, short range on your lights, some of these uh, these six definitely do have some good range, man. As uh, Sparky said, is making up for the short range of the weapon as a whole. And this is now looking a little better for the blue team. However, this here, Bodvar, has to live and cannot live for much longer. Trying to keep that uh, that lead on their side as far as the stock's going uh, goes. But they're going to get picked up immediately off that downlight recovery. This game is definitely a little bit more even. It's still, well, before I started saying that, before uh, Yuki hit that neutral signature, it was still kind of favoring the blue team just a little bit. And now it's definitely going to favor the blue team quite a bit as they get the full double knockout on that one. Blue team fighting this one. It was looking like Maxi might be in a little bit of trouble, but they were really able to just completely wipe that team. They're looking for the KO onto Maxi now. Yuki and Elzo need to find damage onto Hanabi right now. Hey. Oh, he was oh. so close. Hey, big stabs right there. Oh, caught the jump as well. Oh, man. That was They're, so scary. Yeah, every time you can definitely see the, the inner workings of the combo, but just a little misspaced. And speaking of inner workings of a combo, getting carried off the top right there with that Vow neutral stick. Usually, I mean, like, that's one of those moves that I feel as though, like, the angle is just not favorable for this game. But because she has decent force as well, like, it doesn't really matter too much. But, like, yeah, that 45-degree angle on a platform fighter is almost, like, always the worst angle you can get. Oh. Right? Yuki Wait a minute. Stuck in the 1v2. Certainly possible. Yuki's gone, so it's popping off like crazy. This game especially. Yeah, I was going to say, there's, and, you know, everybody's down to their last stock, so, I mean, the damage is up. Okay, unfortunate. Oh, oh. This, this is the, the stomp, and that would have been big, too, because you know that was going to lead into a down air. And uh, probably off the top. Or possibly even a reverse uh, uh, Sayer if he was able to land that off the weapon, unfortunately. Okay. Oh, hold on. He's fighting without it, though. Oh, man. Oh, oh Ooh, that would have been a so great close. turnaround. I love some of the things that Yuki's going for. Hey, Yuki, definitely doing it up right now, man. Making this, making them work for it. Not going to give up the, uh, the stock for free. However, there is a couple of times I feel like... Uh, yeah, going to be gone. Good stuff right there. It's going to be a couple of times I feel like he ran out of options. And Hanabi was in position to do something about that. But just, like, played a little safe. Doesn't really matter, though. Hanabi and Maxi going to go ahead and take that one. Uh, the damage still even higher on Yuki's side, even though they did not get the W there. So Yuki is still putting out big damage here. A little more comparable, seeing that Maxi got the 533. But, yeah, man, if you can keep this level of, uh, of damage and uh, gameplay up, I could see them taking this next game for sure. Yeah, those gauntlets were looking so good from Yuki. Just the, the regular neutral game potential from Yuki's gauntlets were fantastic. Then you swap over onto the Katars, and you have your side sig option. You saw him throwing out that neutral signature as well, covering really high. Huge range on that one, like a massive cone 
for the hitbox on it from those three individual Katars that kind of come out the top, or Kunai that come out the top. And then also the uh, the side signature using that one as well. So much force on that one. You're taking people out in orange. We've already seen Yuki do it. So I'm looking forward to this next game. I think there is uh, still no definitive direction for this set to go one way or the other. Yeah. So, I mean, I look at the stats real quick as well, man. Uh, the amount of SIGs Yuki's throwing out for the accuracy, man. 20 SIGs, 10% accuracy. That means Yikes. he hit two SIGs, yep. bro. <laughs> Elzo <laughs> did two, but only threw out three. Oh, man. Yeah, it's 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 rough over there for sure. Now, it's understandable, though. Again, like you are playing this short-range character, and you have a lot of SIGs that you can just kind of throw out safely. So it makes sense. But, you know, still just looking at it on paper, is, it's rough. <laughs> and we're going to Shipwreck on this one. We've seen a couple of the Gauntlet Neutral Signatures come out from Ailzo's Vow. Maybe can find better purchase with them on this stage with the tiny side walls. So we're not looking at Miami Dome that has the long walls or a Mammoth Fortress that has long walls. So maybe Ailzo can pick them up this time where he's kind of been a little bit unsuccessful before. Okay. So let's go ahead and get into our next yo. Oh, oh Jesus. Alright. Starting off pretty early right there on the right side with some good damage. I uh, got a couple of uh got a couple of dares in there as well, but this is like I feel like the, the red team is pl saying playing so close to each other for the the entirety of this that I feel like it's easy for them to get uh picked up by you know the same move uh twice. It's, oh, there came. Nice little side sig. Not enough to take it yet. Pushing him oh up, man, Hanabi is so close with both of yeah. those down signatures. Using the range of the side, using that one again as well. Trying to leap as far as he can. Now has the hammer. I would be worried right now if I'm the red team. It's not going to take much, but there Jesus. is a side signature from Aelzo. Yeah, Look at the KO no time here. right there. Said, I'm just going to go ahead and push you out of this stage. He just got the hammer and he was like, I want no parts of that. So gets him out of there super quickly. Aelzo. Looked like he was going for a weapon star. Ended up losing his own weapon, unfortunately. Though that weapon toss ends up getting uh, punished by the Brim, aka Maxi, and now he's going to be off that stock as well. There is a weapon spawn on the field. There's no way they're going to give that one to Yuki. Elzo runs in behind. If Yuki doesn't get edge guarded here, okay, able to get back onto the platform safely. Actually, a little bit of team damage comes up, up as Maxi gets the cider hit on Hanabi, following up off of Elzo. Right, Hanabi. Kind of dancing around right here. You notice that Maxi still got that uh, that first stock. Almost almost lost it right there. No air dodge uh, up, though. Just air dodge back through. And it's going to lose it there, man. I feel like that one usually doesn't kill too often. Uh, but with the amount of damage that he had, yeah, that down sick was going to be it. It's a very safe sick, though, for sure. Throwing that out. And if it doesn't hit, she doesn't move forward. So... Oh, gets caught with the D-Sig. At least Yuki hit Hanabi there, sending Hanabi off screen. Both members of the blue team on the left side. Maxi gets back, and Abby kind of waiting a little bit, maybe looking for a follow-up off of Maxi. Sent all the way to the left side, off screen yet again. Double weapon toss is hitting Yuki. Oh, that was such a close neutral signature. That would have been the KO for Ailzo. All right. Out of there real quick off the top, but still not enough uh, to complete them a, a super solid lead yet as both of them are super hurt and it looks like we're actually about to get this lead traded over to the blue team there it is only person on their second stock still is maxi who isn't incredibly hurt yet but still has to be a little wary of his stock yeah i think maxi's still kind of in a decent spot i if you pick up a delight recovery from sword in the middle of the stage i don't know if that's going to ko maxi at this point might need to rely yeah. on one of those signatures or some more damage yeah maxi just turned red so maxi's still in a decent spot here especially on shipwreck Ooh. yeah shipwreck that's a pretty a pretty tall blast at the top right so yeah it definitely takes a little while for you to get up and out of there you know the thing about shipwreck is it's more about the stage and how easy it is to edge guard because of those small walls and yuki Barely, barely making it oh safely. Oh my Ends gosh. Getting scooped directly up and out of there. And that's another win for the blue team. Maxi Hanabi definitely picking it up in the uh, later half. Oh my god. Oh, TK. Pick it up for sure, bro. Tell me. 781? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I swear half of that was after Maxi turned red on that second stock. Maxi oh, was yeah. just swinging on both members of the red team. Back and forth, finding SIGs, finding hits. Incredible work from Maxi. Yeah, man. That's that's how you do it, though, man. Like That's the, the type of message that you want to send. Like, I'm going absolutely insane and never even lost that second stock. So, 
Looking good for uh, Maxi Hanabi here. Alzo and Yuki had a great first game, but it's just not been picking up since. Uh, looking at the stats here, though, uh, still pretty good usage of uh, the six all around. I have to say, I mean, like the the percentage is pretty low for Hanabi, but 18, uh, 18 and 11, and then 12 and 33 percent. I mean, like that's that's decent. That's like four four six definitely getting hit for Maxi right there, and I feel like those four six were all super important. While here on the other side of the thing, man, nine six thrown out by Alzo, 56% accuracy. That's great. Unfortunately, that just did not lead into a lot of stocks for him. Yeah, I think several of them were like the neutral signature, picking up someone who's in yellow or orange. So they didn't immediately lead to the kill. Didn't even really necessarily lead to like a superpower position after that. But Maxi by far threw out the most attacks in the game and also had the highest percentage of accuracy. So Maxi was also hitting the most number of light attacks in the game. That's why you saw that high damage number from Maxi. Truly the carry of that game. Yeah, that was... That was something else, man. As I said, that was definitely something else right there uh, to see that level of damage. I mean, like, the first game, I think there were, like, 600 on the screen, but he absolutely, you know, he almost got 800 on his. Like, well, like another hit. <laughs> if there was another hit left in that game, that was 800. Oh, is this going to be the full wipe? It oh. is. Maxi goes down there to finish that one up off of the work that Hanabi started. Some team damage coming out. Just kind of hitting Hanabi to the left side of the stage so he could uh, put some damage out onto the red team from over there while Maxi stayed on the right side. Everybody's able to grab a weapon now quickly after the respawn. Hanabi juggling into the air. Maxi and Hanabi are in such a good spot right now. Uh, this yeah. is going to be tough based on the way they've been playing so far for them to throw this lead yeah i'm saying like look alzo swapped over to the jester uh, outfit and i feel like maxi said yeah you are indeed a joke to me right now that he's playing. <laughs> this dude is going absolutely insane right now so still uh very very barely hurt on his stock oh unfortunately though i don't know what happened there it was like a mix of things i think he ended up getting hit by his teammate into that neutral stick from alzo so yeah just a, unfortunately right as i mentioned it, he ends up losing that stock in a very uh you know haphazard way We'll have to see that one slow down in uh, the replays after this one to see exactly what happened there. That's going to take Hanabi off the top. Red team not in a terrible spot, but with the way Maxi was surviving last game, they are certainly behind the blue team. Aelzo doing his best to find the Qatar moves. There's the side signature. Didn't quite send Maxi off screen just yet, even though Maxi is in the orange. Did nice juicy that side scent, though? Yeah, like, that was pretty cool. <laughs> just an orange too, man. Like, that's insane. I'm from the middle of the stage, he actually hit like the middle of the... Uh, of the off stage right there so you know could have been could have set up for a nice uh little edge guard situation but still have to watch out for hanabi max and Nabi actually seeming seemingly being ran back and not uh able to get a lot of space here onto the stage luckily that soft platform was on their side giving them a little extra area to go that's gonna be a nice stock a two stocks actually taken right there from the red team in a, a quick succession alzo and yuki now down to their last Blue team juggling weapons really well. Neither member of the red team has one. There is a spawn on the stage. The recovery from Yuki, it was the unarmed kit, so it's not going to be the KO option yet. Recovery comes out from Maxi. A little bit of team damage. Not terrible at this point. GC neutral signature from Aelzo, not going to be the KO. You saw neutral signature from Maxi. There was a dodge from Yuki to get through that one. Some more team damage. Not something the blue team can really deal with mm. right now, mm. even though uh, it's not the KO move, so it's not like hitting a side air, sending your teammate flying. But some of that damage that led to Hanabi dying there, like a reasonable chunk of it came from Maxi. That's going to be the wipe. Aelzo and Yuki on final stocks. Hanabi and Maxi joining them there, but Aelzo has to be so careful. Yeah, he is definitely super hurting right now, man. Sitting in that red. It's, it's, it's a light red, so still might have a, stop, uh, a couple of hits to, to live here. But, I mean, you're still very far behind. Look at the damage that they've been able to do to Maxi, though. Maxi are about to rival uh, Elzo in damage. In fact, they actually might have more damage on, on him now. That should be the stock. That is going to be a stock off of Elzo. And now Yuki struggling to get back. Not going to be able to make it. What a perfect play right there from Hanabi to go ahead and take that. W and move them into the top eight. Man, good. I mean, four KOs from there. You got the, you saw those last two KOs uh, in quick succession there at the end of that game. Yep, that was crazy. Maxi and Hanabi really coming together there towards the end. It was looking a little bit shaky in the mid. It was a great opening for the blue team. But, yeah, really in the mid, it was a little bit worrisome if you were looking for a Maxi Hanabi victory on that one. What flag is that? Do you know, TK? Uh... Oh, wanna, for Maxi Hanabi? No. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I want to know where they're from because, like, obviously we get a lot of uh, Brazil players in South America. Like, Brazil is the Sweden 
of South America. Like, a, so many of the EU players are Swedish. So I do want to know exactly uh, what that country is Maxi. Peru. 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 Yeah. Shouts, shouts Peru. Shout out to Google. That was What's quick. Up? I just typed in South America flags. and it <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so shouts shout to Peru. Uh, doing it up right there, man. Definitely a big, a big W uh, on their side of things. So, man. That's top eight. That is a big, big milestone that they just reached on that. But even Yuki and Elzo finishing where they did on the winner's side of the bracket. They still go down into the loser's bracket, so they still have more sets to play. Could be pushing that placement even further. But, like, major milestone set here for both of these players. Getting this far in the bracket. Maxi and Hanabi actually moving on into the top eight on the winner's side. Yuki and Elzo going down, hoping to extend their reach through the loser's bracket as long as they can. Yeah, man. So we're going to be getting to our third of four sets here. I see Power Ranger here and Lopez, and two team, uh, two players that I also love watching. But here on the other side of things, we got kind of Ackerman too. I know uh, during the uh, the photo uh, zip block, that they, I don't think they had too great of a game there, but they could definitely make it happen here on on this side of things if they are able to uh, take it over Power Ranger and Lopez. But I feel like that's a hard fought battle, definitely for sure. Definitely a hard fought battle for them. Yeah, you're going up against uh, kind of the undisputed best team in South America, at least as of summer championships and spring championships. So for, for the better part of this year, definitely one of the best teams, kind of undisputed right now, but it has been a month and a half. We'll see what Power Ranger and Lopez have coming out of the gate here. I believe they went through all the way up until uh, their top eight qualifier match without losing a game. Then Page and Yuse actually took one game off of them there. It was kind of the similar story for Hyper and kind of Ackerman as well. Went all the way through without losing a game. Went up against Bruxo and ZDQ. And again, Bruxo and ZDQ took one game off of them. And now they're in the top eight. Kaina and Hyper really turned up in the end, though. I was stoked to see the Hyper Reno, just because I love to see Reno, especially in twos. But now that they swapped over to this double Bodvar team, it's so scary. All right, man. So, yeah, that double Bodvar team, obviously, uh, everybody knows Bodvar. So they know what he can do, and uh, they know what to do with him. So a lot of uh, you know familiarity here on, on the screen. For everybody, but it really just depends on how they're able to deal with it this time around. Here on the other side of things, though, you got Queen Nine Never Die, and then of course Bryn, also a very popular character. Uh, so honestly, no, no, no real mix here, uh, no real uh, unorthodoxness. Just straight up good brawl of gameplay coming for you. That down air is going to go ahead and take it in this double double tap. Okay, oh, that was Lopez. Nice. All right, kind of getting a little swaggy with it with the GC side signature there rather than just like your standard spear ground pound for that yeah. big coverage option. Oh, mm. my goodness. That almost killed. That definitely almost killed right there. And look at the damage that he was able to take at the very least. So may not have taken out the top, maybe on a different stage, but uh, still, regardless, still took a lot of damage there. And that was on the second stock immediately. So. This is looking pretty bad here for the blue team as the first part of this, they are already down to uh, a one stock on to Kiner Ackerman while they finally got their first stock off of Lopez, but Power Ranger still living. Power Ranger and Lopez's ability to pick up those 2v1 combos just like really quickly and hit like a three piece or a four piece. And a lot of times they'll send their opponent straight up. So the next opponent is coming back into the game, spawning. They're on the ground. Meanwhile, completely split from their teammate who is up in the air. That gives Power Ranger and Lopez the option to really force the situation on the newly spawned character. Or if they want to really focus on that juggling, kind of. And Hyper finding some damage back, but they're so far behind at this point. Game one looking rough for the blue team. Yeah, kind of kind of, and Hyper definitely got a, like, uh, a small chance to do a 2v1 there on the left side. But... That was broken up immediately. It took him a little while to get into it, and then it allowed, I think, Lopez to get back in time. Uh, now, Lopez is actually going to be off of that stock, so Queen Nine never die. Actually dying a lot uh, a lot of the times first on this here uh, red team, and that's going to be an easy scoop for Kaina Ackerman as well. So the blue team, I mean, even with the rough start, not completely out of it, and this is still uh, comebackable for sure. They have double hammers. We're seeing some team damage. It's not two hits just in like the past 10 or 15 seconds that the blue team has hit on each other. Hyper's out of this game. That's going to take out Kaina. Neutral signature from Power Ranger, and it's done. Yeah, man, that was a, 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 a I wouldn't say a super 
easy first game for him. I feel like it started easy and then it got a little more difficult and then they kind of e eased back into it being easy again. The damage, absolutely the same between Lopez and kind of Ackerman. And uh, Hyper, you know, not too, like, actually having uh, more damage than both of them. So this was definitely a kind of down the middle game. I think it was just uh, who was effectively taking stocks more and it happened to be uh, Lopez on this Queen Nye. We haven't seen characters locked in from Kaina and Hyper just yet, but on the screen in front of you, the signature game for the blue team was a little bit rough, but it was actually fantastic for the red team. Five signatures with 60% accuracy, seven signatures with 57% accuracy. So incredible work from the red team finding those signatures. A lot of the ones that Lopez found were off of like the 2v1 combo. And then you also saw the gravity cancel side signature on the left side that bounced off the wall, got a KO. The side signature on the right side with the spear also getting a KO off of that one, hitting like max range. Yeah, man. So I think we're we still waiting out for this. Let me go back to the next screen. Nope, we got the Bovar. Uh, ready to go. The double bow is ready to go again. Uh, and then Power Ranger probably swapping skins, right? I don't think he's really going to swap characters here. I feel like that they definitely have a good spread uh, between their characters as is. Queen Nye, even though like he took a little defense away, still has 7 defense, but also 7 force, uh, which is super nice. She hits hard and she uh, eats hits as well. But it looks like we're waiting for Power Ranger. Actually, let me go look at the chat real quick to see what he's... Uh... It's, uh, it's, it's going to be a lot of Portuguese or Spanish. So, I don't I mean, know how, I, I how can, familiar you are with Spanish. Yeah, you know, my Spanish is up there. So I, okay, it's okay. basically, yeah, it's basically just kind of like context clues, clues yeah. in it up. But so, well, now they're, they kind of wants to check Power Ranger. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, so let's talk about Kaina and Hyper just a little bit. For those who didn't happen to catch the pre-show earlier today, Kaina and Hyper are a little bit of an interesting team. One of the previous uh, tournaments, like I'm talking Summer Championship, Kaina was playing with Nusak. Hyper was playing with Minexo. Then all of a sudden, this tournament a month and a half later, they kind of did a little bit of a wife swap there. So now Kaina is with Hyper and Nusak is with Minexo. We have seen Kaina play with Hyper in the past. I believe it was the Spring Championship earlier this year. They did come out in fourth place with that one. So that was like probably one of their best finishes of their entire career. Wondering if they can keep that momentum going here. They are going up against Power Ranger and Lopez, the like definitely number one kind of undisputed team in South America right now. So if you're seeing them get beat up a little bit, you have to keep those context clues in mind that they're going up against the absolute best. If you took like the number four team in North America and put them next to Boomy and Sandstorm, Boomy and Sandstorm probably going to do some work on them as well. So if yeah. we can uh, get that bracket up to show some of the pathways that these teams took, Hyper and Kaina Ackerman kind of had a reasonably easy trip through the bracket. We mentioned earlier, didn't lose a game until they fought up against Bruxo and ZDQ. And Bruxo and ZDQ actually getting to that spot is a little bit surprising because they went through News and Nagi, who in the most recent community tournament got third in the most recent one, then right before that one got second. And TK, the big boys were playing in that. So it's not just like you're a pretty good competitive team going and like pub stomping a community tournament with everybody and their mother just happened to play for fun that weekend or anything. So news and Nagi going down that early, a bit of a surprise. Yeah, man. I mean, I'm looking at some of these teams at, uh, at the bottom as well. You know, Fina Baldassar is kind of surprising as well. Yes. But we will be getting, uh, I guess we'll be getting that match uh, going or, you know, going relatively soon. It seems like since they've got down to the bottom side of things, though, they've been pretty dominant. That was a 2-0 over Manexo uh, and uh, and Nusak. So now they'll be going against Bruxo and uh, what, Kajo? It's these names, bro. Y'all be... <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't know how to pronounce that one, so we, we'll we just throw, like, a ZDQ on it just to make yeah. things easier so I'm yeah, not yeah, the yeah. white guy mispronouncing uh, other cultures' words because that's that's, uh, that's never a good look for me, TK. Yeah, no, nah, nah, I 100% <laughs> understand where you're coming from. So, all the way, well, Pahe and Yu's definitely moving straight on uh, through Seven and Tavares, so that was actually a pretty good uh, game for them as well. In the top eight elimination round, they're looking to see if they can get into, that, into the actual top eight, the quarterfinals right there, but... Man, it's going to take a little bit uh, of work for everybody down here on the loser side of things to make their way into at least the loser's quarterfinals. Or quarterfinals. 
Now we're zooming in on the bottom side of the bracket. You can't quite see it here, but if you do hit exclamation point bracket in chat, that'll give you a link to the Smash GG bracket. And an important thing to note on there, if you want to see certain teams or certain sets, there will be a flag next to the set that tells you which channel it is streamed on. This is, of course, twitch.tv forward slash Brawlhalla. But if you look down at the bottom, like the Bruxo, ZDQ, and Fiend Balthazar match, you'll see that that is streamed on Pro Brawlhalla twitch.tv forward slash pro brawlhalla so you can go see some of the production over there i tell you what there are definitely more than a few sets that i am absolutely jealous of the second stream they get to see some absolute amazing sets over there definitely happened in eu definitely happened at the mammoth invitational before that so definitely check that out if there is a team playing there that you want to see yeah man i I feel like we're about to be getting into it relatively soon now, though. I think, just looking through the chat. Mm. Now, all right, well, well, we'll get there soon enough. But uh, regardless, man, yeah, if you guys are, are trying to keep up with any team or any uh, part of this here championships, man, you can always check the brackets. You can always keep up with all things on, on Brawlhalla. And on top of that, if you haven't already followed the Twitter, definitely uh, follow BH Esports uh, or... Brawlhalla, or use the hashtag Brawlhalla Esports to go ahead and get on the stream as well. But definitely follow their Twitters, man. You can follow Pro Brawlhalla, or you can follow Brawlhalla just to keep up with uh, the game in general, man. But I'm sure a lot of you guys are here for that Esports that's just 1,000% been, like, been popping off like tenfold from where we started to where we are now, man. So big thank y'all who are all here uh, watching, you know, watching for whatever reason you decide to watch. If it's for the good gameplay or if it's for the great commentary, whatever you want to listen to, uh, we're just, we just want to thank you guys for being here. And TK Humble as ever. You can also follow him. Uh, is it is it TK Breezy? Yep, just TK Breezy on everything. So <laughs> there you go. I've been, I've been can, able to run, brand correctly. You can run the full gamut of TK Breezy content all across the board. I am at who is Sparky on Twitter. Nothing really else that you need to worry about. Now we're getting into this game. Power Ranger and Lopez versus Kaina, Ackerman, and Hyper. That scary Bryn coming out from Power Ranger. Of course, the Queen Knight from Lopez. Still double Bodvar on the other side of the board, and we're going back to Shipwreck. All right, so with that being uh, said, let's see how the Shipwreck works out. Now, the last time that we got here, obviously the red team took a very, very solid lead super early on. But the blue team was able to bring that one back uh, to a respectable game for sure. And it looks like they're actually the ones uh, who are running away with a, a slight damage lead. I'm not just, you know what? I'm just going to say it. They iced them. They iced <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say it. They, they iced them. <laughs> not a bad idea because you see the way it's working out for them. Hyper, oh my gosh. You saw Kaina and Hyper with like double hammers oh at the end God. of last game. And it, they were just completely stuck. Lopez and Power Ranger were running all over them. All of a sudden... This game, the double hammers were working incredible. Look where Kaina and Hyper are. Both of them still in the orange. Already fully wiped the team. Kaina continuing to chase in the air. Yeah, man, this is definitely a rough start for the red team. Well, now the blue team definitely has some damage on to them, which is going to be a uh, spell. Oh, okay. Double haymaker, but not going to be able to take any either one of those stocks. However, does find one right there. Another one. Oh, okay, there it is. I, li I like the wait too, because I really don't think he had too many places to go. If he would have air dodged down in front of uh, uh, of Queen Nash, he either would have sigged or probably ground pounded just because he was touching the walls uh, right there. So, yeah, kind of like a checkmate uh, situation. However, though, Lopez is going to be out of there yet again. This Nye not really living up to the name. She has been the first to die uh, in both games so far. Has always been the first person to get down to their last stock on the red team. Right. Power Ranger going to have to be careful here. Only one of the red teams still on second stock, but definitely deep in the red. There's one hammer and one sword for the blue team, so it's not going to take too much. That side air easily taking out Power Ranger there. And again, Kaina and Hyper totally in the orange here. Basically no danger in the next couple hits that they're going to be in the red. Hyper's able to get back. Kaina putting some damage out on the main stage, letting... Hyper get back over to the wall. Hyper still orange. That finally turned him red. The D-Light recovery is actually going to take him off the top. Kaina's going to have to be careful. Oh, throwing out the signature. Easy punish from Kaina. All right. So, with that being said, man, like, I feel like this is still uh, you know, doable for Lopez and, uh, and Power Rangers. So, you know, obviously Lopez is hurting right now, but he is still actually put... Oh, my God, if he would have hit that other next one at the top, that might have actually been the stock with the amount of force 
that uh, Nai has and how high that up, uh, how high up that was. That could have been an, an early stock for sure. Unfortunately, though, yeah, he's kind of dancing around. Oh, the, oh no! Oh, the team damage. That's going to split the blue team. Lopez goes in with a ground pound, gets back to the main stage, and oh. We are in an interesting situation here. Oh, the blue team hitting each other back and oh. forth. Is that going to be a stage fight? The game is over, TK! Oh, man. They tried. They, the save was almost there. On any other stage, that down air was a save. But because of the triangles at the bottom of Shipwreck, he just gets bounced off on a terrible angle and loses that stock as well, man. Just an unfortunate area to be put in. But it actually worked out very well. That was one... Uh, side sig from uh, from Lopez, oh, Lopez to hit everybody. Yeah, <laughs> dude, he's <laughs> using everybody. those signatures so well. I feel like the only major Queen Nine moment where you like throw out a signature and then you're stuck for a hundred years was the neutral signature on Qatar's that Lopez threw out on the left side above the stage, and I believe it was Hyper. I can't remember who actually did the punish, but it was a gravity cancel neutral signature from the Bodvar Hammer that hit that one. Other than that, Lopez has been so good with the signatures, the spear side signature especially. Yeah, man. Gotta, definitely gotta give it up to him for taking such a dominant lead right there. Uh, or a dominant uh, play right there at the end to go ahead and push this team back to the victory. Now, speaking of a dominant lead, uh, that was the most delayed double knockout I've ever <laughs> seen. He like knew that the uh, person on the right was not going to make it back and then managed to f go over there and get a, uh, a neutral stick as well as the person on the right was going off the, uh, the bottom of the screen. So good stuff. Good start here for the red team. Looking like they're trying to take this one in 2-0 uh, fashion. 3-0 fashion. Sorry. Hyper and kind of have to find something here. They're falling further and further behind. That neutral signature easily gets punished by Lopez. It's a falling nail. It's third nair in a row. Lopez has been slapping people up. Hasn't found any, like, huge strings. That's a nice down air there. Oh, Lopez actually getting knocked away. Power Ranger over low on the left. That's going to bonk him on the head. Lopez using everything he can. Did kind of just save him? I don't know. All right. Okay, so you can see him trying to oh, get back in there, and that's going to be a nice sweep pushing him away. Ooh. I can't believe that down air to Nid Lopez, dude. He's going crazy. All right. Yeah, I was just saying, the fact that they both got through that, too. But unfortunately, though, you know, they spent so much time off the stage. And this is, I think this is kind of the downfall of the blue team more than anything, is going to Shipwreck and spending that much time off the stage without having a, a like, guaranteed way. I won't say a guaranteed way, but an easy way to grab that wall is just not doing them any favors. And so that, uh, for that reason, they've, they're already down to their last stocks while you can see red team sitting healthy on their second one. Doing quite well. A lot of just chaos over on the right side. You saw that Nair from kind of Ackerman actually putting out team damage. Lopez is using the side signature so well. And it's not even like there's this predetermined route that you use to get to the side signature. Like D-Light Neutral Sig is a very popular Queen Knight option. But it's just in raw, normal gameplay that Lopez is finding him. Mm. There's the neutral signature. Four stocks. Lopez signature usage is unreal. He hit 71% of his seven attempted signatures last game. I can't wait to see the stats this game. Yeah, no, he was he was on top of it for sure, man. 50, uh, 458 and 484, great damage being put out from the red team. But at the same time, though, not really like the craziest high amount of damage, uh, which means they definitely took some stocks pretty efficiently as well. And you can definitely see that uh, when you watch these replays of how often they got these like double KOs off screen. That happened at least, I think, every game once where they got like a double KO uh, based off of like an edge guard, and so yeah, that just did not bode well for the red team. Great, it was a good start, or for the blue team, it was a good start for the blue team. I think that last game, but yeah, they just weren't able to roll that into a win. As you look at the, the sig uh, usage, sixty percent on five six. I mean, I think he hits three of those, uh, which is still super nice. Yes. While here on the other side of thing, you know, Ranger Power Ranger throwing out four sigs, hitting one, and then here on the other side of uh, both Kiner and Hyper. <laughs> Throwing out three sigs, but only hitting one. So, man. Yeah, they, they definitely got destroyed that set. There's really no other way to say that. Completely confident from Power Ranger and Lopez. And that's not totally unexpected coming in at, like, the first seed for this. And then Kaina and Hyper, like, looking at their PRs. It's PR 10 and PR 9. So definitely a huge disparity there. Still impressive from Kaina and Hyper making it this far. Can't wait to see what they have in the loser's bracket. That is going to be an interesting trip for them to see if they can make it into the top three like I predicted or if they get knocked out before like they have been in the most recent official tournaments. 
Yeah, man. So we're going to be moving over here to the other side of the winner side of things. It's going to be DB and West back at it against Hanabi and Maxi, who are definitely putting on a good show right now. Shout out to the boys from Peru. We'll see if they can do it up again uh, versus one of some of the one of the other best teams of this region, DB and West. So this is a uh, you know a lot of hard fought battles here to get into this top uh, this top two, if you will, or the, uh, I guess to the winners' final side of things. But I mean they're definitely going to be trying to scrap it up and make it happen. Uh, but I'm you know I'm excited to see the set just because I like to see these new uh, comers go up against these old, the old guard here and um, see how they fare. Now, we do have an update. Uh, Maxi is actually from Argentina, but still repping the Peru flag for his teammate, Hanabi, coming into this one. Of course, on the other side, we have DB and Wes are both Brazilian players, definitely titans of the Brazil scene. The Brazil scene in uh, South America is also kind of like the French scene in that they are partially their like own sub-community of the major community that is south america so you have uh, an interesting dynamic there in south america similar to the one that you have in eu there's west right in front of you pr4 coming into this one five golds five silvers and one bronze medal look at that top 32 12 times every single one of those is a top eight yeah man he's he's nice that's all you can really say about that man like basically now if you look at the stats, stats all together though he only missed top three one time so this <laughs> This man is dominant for sure, man. That's insane. What a what a what a showing here for Wes, uh, for sure. But yeah, I think we're just waiting for everyone to like you know get situated into uh, the match. I see Maxi's already uh, sat on a character, but probably not the character he's actually going to play. A lot of people typing in this chat too, so got some issues to talk about here on the other side of things. Though DB uh, top thirty-two placements, fourteen times top eight, eleven, and then in that you know, three, five, what was that nine? So not of the, of the times that he's hitting, he's only missed top four or top three two times when he gets into the top eight. So still, man, and he's powering three too, you know. So I mean, they're they're definitely putting it on putting on a good show here on uh, the DB and West side of things. But as you move over to Maxi and Hanabi, man, these are going to be the guys who are trying to make an upset here against this very powerhouse team of oh, uh, let's say Thor, Saul, and Taros. Yeah, definitely a, a battle of David and Goliath here. You can see it reflected in the PR and just really all of the numbers there. Actually never made it into top eight before in twos. Of course, no gold, silver, and bronze is based on that. Six top three twos and PR 39. So certainly a lot lower PR that is definitely going to move up after this tournament for sure. You're not going to see a 3-9 next to Maxis after this one. And then Hanabi right there, PR 40. Even a little bit more humble than his teammate coming in with only three top 32s. So big stuff here for this team. Every single set that they progress through, even if, if it's not a podium finish or a first place finish or anything crazy like that, each set that they move through and move forward in is a huge milestone achievement for a team like Maxi and Hanabi. Yeah, man. So, I mean, look, that they're, they're definitely going to be putting on uh, some... Uh, they we put on some more extra stats on that on that screen for sure, man. As you see that, you know, getting into the top eight, I think they're already in top eight, right? So, uh, yes, they are in top. Yeah, eight. so they got to do that uh, for sure. And if they can win this, they'll be secure themselves. I think a top three, which would be a great finish for them. Uh, but this is going to be a hard fought battle again, as I said, over DB and West. These guys have been known to be in the top three at like every uh, South America tournament that we've hosted. So let us uh, see. You know what maxi and hanabi will bring to the table to take out or to, to at least get some games off of db and west you have the two sets the one that we just watched that was power ranger and lopez over hyper and kind of ackerman we expect power ranger and lopez to be top two which of course ended up happening and then in this one we expect west and db to be top two as well so that would be this would be a really interesting set if Maxi and Hanabi came out on top, not only because they made it into the top two, something they haven't really even come close to before, but that they also took out DB and Wes, who are, at least in my mind and a lot of other people's minds, all but guaranteed to make it yeah. into the top two. So we'll see how this set progresses. This is going to be an interesting one. DB locking in, I believe, the Zol. We have seen Maxi and Hanabi lock in the double Bodvar on this one. We'll see if that happens, that maybe if you're a Maxi Hanabi fan, that it goes a little bit different than the previous double Bodvar team that we just saw, which was Hyper and Kaina Ackerman. Yeah, man. So 
yeah i don't know what's taking us what's whole what's the hold up here but trying to get into this match is sooner than later man definitely super hyped to watch this one uh you know what's interesting too like i think it's another thing that i've definitely noticed uh you know since we yesterday we did australia and we noticed that they were like super super huge on small man fortress here they're really big on shipwreck like they don't <laughs> like the shipwreck is being played uh out here in south america so they're like no walls we just want to go out there and scrap and that's uh you know respectable i like i like to see that aggressive gameplay and that's usually what you get here from south america anyway yeah for better or for worse a lot of these teams do prefer to go to that shipwreck it is still up on the stage banning right now and it is still up in terms of picking We'll see if Maxi and Hanabi end up choosing that one. They do have Apocalypse as a choice. Another small walled map. I think they're a little bit longer. I can't tell if that's just like an optical illusion or what. But then Mammoth Fortress definitely has the longer walls. They're definitely thinking about this one as well. They haven't chosen their map just yet. It is going to be that Amethyst from DB, of course, that Zul pick. And then the Taros pick from Wes. It's interesting to know that they also went out of force. So they're not even going for like the cheesy strat of going like 10 force or, you know, nine force here on uh, on Zol and Taros respectively. But they still have a lot of force regardless. I mean, even Bolvar is able to match Taros now with uh, force because of going in force stance and Taros going out of it. But I think that even with their force, uh, you know, stats being the same, you have to think about, you have to account what the force on the SIGs actually are. And Taros definitely has more force on those SIGs for sure. Yeah, going into the string stance for Bodvar is is kind of interesting. I've never actually tested it myself. Uh, the damage you do per move is pr like it's um, it's more, but it's probably not that much more. I don't yeah. notice any signatures that are like regularly being used for Bodvar players that maybe putting one more in will like make it something you fear and are worried about at every moment. Like the down sig, you can KO with that in orange no matter what your strength is. Yeah, because you're you're it's not you're not using it for the power, you're using it for the angle. So Definitely. yeah, it doesn't really matter where you hit them uh, or how hard you hit them. It just matters where you really hit them, right there. So it's kind of interesting. I guess I assume it's probably going to be for these hammer sigs uh, to get some stronger uh, hammer sigs going in there. You know, you got the all all of the hammer sigs are just really strong swings. So it could be something that they're looking for, but I don't really know if that one point is really going to matter too much. However, Bodvar is so middle of the road. Uh, I really don't think it matters what stance you're playing in. You're, that you're still was a good be, uh, interrupt, though. Oh my ooh. goodness, that hammer! Oh, that's going to be a full wipe. Hanabi does have to be careful getting into the red on second stock compared to everybody else in this game who is yellow. If you're looking at Maxi, and totally white. If you're looking at DB and Wes. Yeah, man. So this is like not terrible for uh, Team Bodvar for sure. As they well, there's a lot of sick. I have to say, man, I'm going to be looking at that sick counter uh, for Hanabi for sure. He is throwing them out. Like, <laughs> he is throwing those things out for sure. So another one going to go ahead and whiff and end up eating that side air from Wes. Oh, that's Maxi's dodge. I can't believe Wes didn't go in for maybe a little bit more. Maybe he was just confident that he could find something like that D-Light -like ground pound there that he didn't want to go in after he got the dodge when Maxi did the gravity cancel down signature on the edge. There's a side signature going wild while Wes was definitely above him. Wes posted up, ready to end this one as well. Maybe rips the ground pound just a little bit early. DB comes down. Oh, no, oh, the down no. signature from Wes actually takes out DB putting DB on his final stock. And here comes the 2v1 combo. Good damage on the West. Again, West goes off the stage with that slide charge down signature. Damn, Hanabi, West actually was in position for that ground pound to hit perfectly. Hanabi was not going to be able to uh, slide past him with that air dodge, but unfortunately, he ended up doing a little too close to the stage and landed on the stage. That's gonna be a, oh man, I don't even know what happened to him. Nobody hit looking. him. Oh, no. Nobody hit him. He just went down oh, a little bit too man. far. Only had, like, one option to get back. Didn't get him high enough, even though it almost looked like he touched the wall. He just fell to his death. And low damage numbers coming out from Hanabi, 328. Maxi only doing 427 and only picked up one KO. Also had the accident. That's going to be the one at the end. I think we're going to have that on replay. Um, it sure looked like, was... I mean, it really looked like he did touch the wall, but I think. Yeah, it was close. It... Yeah, it was super clear. I want to see if he uses dodge too early. Nah, nah. Yeah, I think he might have either didn't have his dodge in time or he thought he touched the wall and then realized too late. So that is unfortunate right there for uh, Maxi dropping that stock in a, well, very early fashion. But as I was saying, man, you know, Hanabi was throwing out a lot of these sigs. <clears throat> Got nine of them thrown, but three of them hit. Still decent. Um, you know, I think I only saw one that he really got super punished for, which was at the end of uh, that oh, second Oh, I thought he stop. touched right yeah. there. You can see it on the replay. Yeah. Thought he touched. So. Can we get a little bit before that to see when he uses his dodge? Oh, yeah, there's his dodge. Okay. 
Though he did use his dodge. Yeah. I'm okay. guessing that it probably just came off of cooldown there. I'm not yeah. sure. That That's one of those interesting moments where you never know if they were, like, mashing dodge, hoping they were going to get it, or if they thought, okay, I touched the wall with my recovery. I want to save my dodge in case someone comes down to attack me. So it's a really tough situation to kind of guesstimate whether or not you actually did touch the wall there. Yeah. That's unfortunate, too, because, like, obviously, like, his dodge came up in time for him to be able to dodge up. Like, you saw that the uh, the sweat marks uh, had went away, which means his dodge was back. But he definitely, most likely, thought he uh, he hit that wall. And then well, he just realized a little too late. So, happens to the best of us. We're going to go ahead and get uh, swapped over to uh, the Barraza. But also a swap of the skins here from the ter uh, Taros as well. And we're going back to Shipwreck. That is going to be one constant throughout this set, at least so far as we move into game two. Might be looking for some of those neutral signatures covering a lot of that corner. It is a very classic move that Barraza players will go for. Oh, Wes, open it up big. Less than 20 seconds, and there's already been a KO. It's from Wes. That's going to burn the dodge. Hanabi does get back. Okay. Oh. All right, gonna be able to make that one back. Oh my God, I'm just gonna get sent directly out of there immediately. Nice uh, knight to the head, if you will. Uh, and he gets pushed out of there. So it looks like we have a pretty even game. I'm very interested to see how this Braza is gonna mix it up right here, man. Like, you know, I don't really feel like I see too much Braza outside of Kobe Travis here. So nice to see another uh, Barraza, you know, on the screen, hopefully able to make something. And, and another thing, I feel like I haven't seen too much blasters lately either. Uh -oh. Yep, you're definitely right. Uh, that's why I'm always so stoked to see Arino because it's a Blasters character. You just you just really don't see it, and that's unfortunate. Uh, people haven't really found how... Okay, Hanabi is getting really oh, no. greedy over yeah. here. Does find that recovery, gets back. Wes is actually going to fall because of that, but that was only his first stock. He did die in orange, though, so that's a tough spot to be in. They're going to get that KO as well. It's now basically an even game. Blue team is a little bit in the lead. They have the chance to force the 2v1 situation for just a moment as DB is spawning back in the game. Wes grabs a weapon, hits a side light, side air, then hits a neutral light. So Wes definitely swinging another neutral light. There's a side signature. Wes definitely swinging Hanabi. Has not found those neutral signatures that he needs. Yeah, man, Hanabi rough having it a rough time right there that recovery gonna get punished with his own uh, recovery here from oh that is going to be it yelling at him sending him out that stock and that is a great weapon toss he's gone he's definitely done. gone man that be neutral a signature gone. even with it not sending like over the corner it bounced off the main stage which is unfortunate what is hanabi going for with those does he think they're gonna fall for it this late in the game like even if they do I mean, his best option is to maybe take out DB because he's on oh, his final minute. stock in an orange. Side six coming over the edge. I was like, this could have been the time right there. DB kind of overextended with that uh, that sick. Oh, <laughs> doesn't matter, though. <laughs> that DB was, was like, just in case. Just in case it doesn't finish. Oh, DB. Oh, wow. DB didn't really do very much that game whatsoever. Not at all. <laughs> there was an what accident the? from Hanabi that was one KO, and then all five of the rest went over to West doing 556 damage, really coming out with the big work that game. Yeah, that was, that's, DB's gonna have to step it up if you wanna, uh, I mean, they got the win regardless, but I mean, that was all on the backs of, uh, on the back of Wes. So DB definitely have to step it up for the team here. Uh, here on the other side of things though, I, w I wouldn't say that Maxi and Hanabi really had a bad game. I think it was just, you know, some, uh, intro well, Hanabi was going a little crazy for sure with uh, how aggressive he was playing and how wild he was getting. But just uh, a couple of flubs there, here and there, kind of took them out that game. So hopefully they're able to make something happen. Now, as you can see, Hanabi was going absolutely crazy with those SIGs. 11 SIGs thrown, one hit, basically, with this 9%. That is uh, not... But here on the other side, DB hasn't hit anything either, so... Can't really talk too much mess. <laughs> Can't really talk too much mess. DB throwing six six, not hitting a single one of those. Wasn't really doing much at all that game. Uh, but luckily, West was able to you know pick up the slag. Yeah, and I want to look specifically at Hanabi using those signatures. Like, he was slide charging them kind of deep off stage, hoping to pick something up. Now, if multiple blue team members are over there, maybe that can be a good choice. But a lot of the times, he was just, like, using it off stage when there was really no chance that he was going to hit them. It was like he was hoping that DB or Wes would go off stage and fall into that, that he would just luck into it. Which, when he does that, he just kind of takes himself out of the fight so that the blue team can really focus on Maxi. Or he just completely puts himself at a disadvantage state as he has to recover back to the platform. Yeah. Oh, chopped up. Wait a minute. 
right, gonna go ahead and get out of there super quickly, getting chased all the way to the top. All right. Oh, I still also just noticed we got another swap too. We got two swaps actually. The the, the Nash out and the Koji is out. So just a, a whole slew of uh, difference here for the red team. Well, just kind of they're trying to find their footing somewhere here with these team. Oh, oh wow! Oh, wow! 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 Because I like the idea from Nash to be, like try to touch the wall with a very aggressive. Uh, option. Oh, wow, they just get that down here. Oh, DB just got that. What was Hanabi doing? Why was he anywhere near there? That was crazy. He went oh, down man. there for the down air that kept him down there, and like he got the KO, but DB was already dead. Oh, completely misplaying that. And DB's gonna come back and carry Hanabi over to the west coast. Oh man, this is definitely looking kind of rough. Yeah, as you said, that was he didn't have to go down there. I just didn't think he realized how much. Uh, was already done and how many options that the uh, his opponent did not have so went down there to try to finish it off and ends up getting finished off himself and now one stock left here for Hanabi again I think Hanabi is still kind of going a little a little crazy right now uh, with his options and if they were hitting you know he was looking like a genius but it's just these are a lot of high risk uh, high reward options and he's just not finding the reward right now nice extended combo from the blue team Onto Hanabi, putting out good damage onto him. Maxi coming in, hitting the save, and that disarmed Wes. Ooh. So they're fighting their way back into this. Actually, I mean, stock wise, they're technically in the lead because it's three to two, but DB and Wes are both really fresh. Hanabi definitely in danger of being taken out of this game. It's not going to take too much left. Maxi coming in, providing some relief while Wes was probably looking for that side air. The ground pound from Maxi is going to take out Hanabi. Maxi I'm, I'm in the 1v2. I'm blaming that on Hanabi, bro. What was he even doing there? Like, <laughs> that was, there was just like, I think I saw the, the inner workings of a team combo, maybe, but I don't really think that was the time to be going for that. Like, I don't know. We need him. We need him more damage. So Hanabi kind of put himself in a very bad position. Maxi had to try to uh, create some space, and un unfortunately, he created too much space while after hitting his partner. So Maxi may still be able to do this. This is two one stock uh, characters against Nash, who does have some good force. Man, okay, well, I just don't, don't run into that. I feel like this game specifically did Maxi and Hanabi like a disservice. It made them look like worse players than they actually are. But also, it was just so reckless in so many different ways. And that kind of carries over from the last game as well. Uh, Frone did some beautiful math for us here. Uh, it looks like Maxi and Hanabi took a total of 1,001 damage, but DB and Wes only did a total of 842. That means in wow. game two, Maxi and Hanabi did 159 team damage. That's red. That's a stock. If you're playing against Wes and DB, they're going to KO you at 159 damage. That is a full stock that you just kind of yeah. gave to the other team. Man, that's, yeah, that's a rough one. I think Hanabi definitely has to pull it back a little bit. I understand this is a very aggressive region, but sometimes, like, you know, there's a thin line <laughs> between, uh, you know, aggression and, and craziness right there. So, because he was, he was absolutely everywhere he did need to be uh, a decent amount of times and just kind of put himself in position to be getting counterplayed uh, and, and losing stocks for it. So, I mean, you saw that first stock that we were talking about where he actually did not have to go further down there to take out uh, DB, and he still did, and then he got taken out himself. So, ended yep. up losing a stock relatively early, uh, and I'm sure that Maxi wasn't, you know, Maxi could have been out there to save him, but with the fact that I Maxi probably recognized that, like, DB wasn't going to make it back, so he just didn't even think he had to go over there. Then he realized Hanabi wasn't going to be able to make it, and he was too busy fighting Wes. So... It's it's just a it's a rough outing right there for sure for Maxi Hanabi, but that was the winner side of things, which means they are still in this tournament and can make it happen on the loser side. Yeah, there definitely is a chance for them to kind of tighten those things up because it did seem like we talked about the team damage that was done in game two, and then all of a sudden game three, things kind of fell apart. So you had game one. I mean, they got outplayed. They lost that game. But there's a difference between, like, getting outplayed and then making crucial mistakes. We know that they can play without making those mistakes. If they go up against Power Ranger and Lopez or Wes and DB and they get outplayed, that's one thing because those teams are incredible. But if they make those crucial mistakes, then they're going to lose against teams that they might actually be better than teams that they could get past and push deeper into the bracket. So hopefully they can see that and sort of tighten things up, maybe uh, be a little bit less reckless in the game and be more on the same page between both of those players because we already have seen so many good things from them. They made it into winner's semifinals. They're top eight on the winner's side. That's incredible. 
So hopefully they can keep that momentum down into the loser's bracket, sort of act like a goldfish, and sort of forget everything that recently happened, wash their hands of it, and then move through the loser's bracket. Yeah, man. So we got uh, our updates here on the screen as well. As you can see, Yuki and Alzo, they're playing right now currently, and they're one one against News and Nagi, which, again, that would be an upset for them. News and Nagi is another team that we do know a lot about, have seen uh, in these top eights quite. Oh, now they're 2-1. Okay, quick update right there. So now Nuzanagi are up. Look like they're trying to get up and out of there as quick as possible. As I said, yo, we do know a lot about Nuzanagi. We've seen them uh, timeless or, or countless times here on the South America region and eventually in Worlds as well. So see if they'll be able to make it or will there be an upset down there. But I think for us, pretty sure that's going to be it for us. Yeah, we're done, TK. We yeah, are man. going to be going to a break. We'll be back in just a few moments with a new set of commentary for the rest of this bracket. But while you are still watching right now, hashtag BH Esports. Get involved on Twitter. Hashtag BH Esports. You might see your tweet come up on the screen, even if it doesn't. Who do you think is going to win? What thing surprised you this weekend? What are you looking forward to tomorrow in South American 1v1s? Who do you think is going to win? A lot of stuff that you can put out there on Twitter with the hashtag BH Esports. I want to see it. I want to know what the people are feeling. You can follow TK Breezy at TK Breezy on virtually every single platform. You can follow me on Twitter at who is Sparky. That is it for our part of the desk. Thank you so much, TK, for joining me here. And we're going to send it home. We're going to go to a quick break. New set of commentary coming back right after that so don't go anywhere Fast falling allows your legend to fall quicker than usual. To fast fall, press and hold the down button while in the air. Using any move right after fast falling will carry your momentum over. One way to use fast fall is right after a dash jump. Dash jump fast fall is a strong approach option that is often used by top players to negate a grounded attack and punish it immediately.
And we're back with the top eight of the Autumn Championship. Of course, we're on the lower side where everything gets much more dire. This being a double elimination match means that anyone who gets knocked out here is knocked out of the tournament. What's popping, dude? I'm popping. Well, no, I'm not. I'm just, I'm chilling. <laughs> but the tournament's been popping. We've had some pretty exciting matches so far. Some pretty cool team comps. I got to see a Reno get played in twos, which I'm sure I hope Taza is watching and uh, keeping notes because he plays Reno in twos and I need to make sure that he knows what to do now. No, it's great because we've been seeing <laughs> more blasters in general in the yeah. 2v2 landscape. Like, of course, you know, it's hard to talk about blasters without mentioning Cody Travis. But yesterday, even for Southeast Asia, we saw uh, some Baraza and also some Cassidy come yeah, out even, as well. Even going into uh, last weekend, right, with uh, Europe, we got to see Viper on the Lucian for a while mm -hmm. there, too. So uh, nice to see some blasters being played in twos. I love it as a setup tool. Lots of really good angles and uh, lockdown. So uh, excited to see if we see more of it. I know uh, whoever was playing the Reno ended up swapping as the tournament went on, uh, but we still got a lot of the uh, traditional uh, 2v2 play with a lot of axes going on today. Which I'm like, all right, well, axes, you know, it's two. So you're going to be seeing axes quite a bit. You know, double Brin's always going to be an option. Taros is going to be popular. Uh, I think last time, we saw some Volkov as well. That may have been in singles only. Though. I'm trying to remember if that was in twos. But Volkov, I like seeing Volkov. We get some more of that because I do believe that was in South America where we saw that Volkov come out. So maybe we got some action like that as well. But I'm just kind of excited to see what's popping. The twos meta has been uh, just kind of exponentially growing. And of course, I've been mentioning that like this is it before BCX. You know, this is the last chance you have to really grind, really practice, get all the kinks out of your gameplay so that you come in just that much stronger coming into the World Championship. Yeah, and of course, uh, teams to look out for going into the World Championship. We got Fiend and Baltazar, both tied for PR number five on the other side. Pahe and Yuz, we've got one who's uh, very likely qualified for the World Championship for South America, but Yuz 
It's going to take a lot for Yuz to earn enough of a PR bump. Sitting at 34 right now is a little bit of a rough spot, but obviously playing here today, getting into the top eight, that's a nice bump uh, to start it off. Yeah, definitely. I always love, we've been seeing some, so some more Vector as well, Grant. We're not going to get a Vector right here as we do load up into game one. Men Fortress, nothing too crazy there. We are seeing Olgrim uh, come out from Balthazar, which I mean, also not too crazy. We've seen Balthazar, uh, specifically Olgrim, in the twos landscape fairly often. Val also. All, all these legends are just yeah. staples to, to the some, metagame. Some classics to the 2v2 so far. Of course, Axe can't go wrong. Here comes the team combo. Interesting startup. Balthazar able to follow up with that down signature. I was really curious. Yeah, like that Nair, it's a grab move. Only going to grab one person, but still end up getting a lot off of that combo. Yeah, that's kind of the bummer, right? Where it's like, all right, you have the, the kind of team combo that you know if it doesn't lead to a ko it deals a lot of damage but because of that nair you, you can only get it on one. Wow. <laughs> wow ball, ball to like, don't celebrate too much he like took his hands off the keyboard and everything he is falling there nice double weapon toss from them uh was really really cool to see to get that finisher on uh, i think that was uh pahe or pahe and for me, of course, I'm going to be taking a good look at Yuz, right? Beautiful conversion coming out there from Pahe as well. But, like, Yuz is someone that I haven't seen before, you know? And I feel like a lot of people, especially, are probably in the same boat. Like, who is this guy? But he's out here rocking this Taros, doing a great job. Ooh. Beautiful conversion, right? That was perfectly executed. He saw the neutral light. He was like, all right, I know what comes next. I get the Seraph for the KO. These guys have been converting off of each other phenomenally. And that's exactly what you want to see from that Taros is those big follow-ups. He hits really hard coming in with base 8 strength means that those follow-ups are going to do a lot of damage lead to some quick knockouts. In combo setup, but they get stacked up onto the neutral light because Yuz hit Fiend from behind. Okay, let's see. Trying to get the recovery there. Yuz isn't able to find much. Oh. There we go. A little bit of a an interrupt there from... Team Red, but so far, I mean, this is a pretty close game, all things considered. Neutral State coming out. That's going to be a KO weapon throw Ooh. on the left side of the screen to go ahead and wipe the board clean, and the blue team is loaded again with their final stocks. Yeah, and you got to give credit to the red team for getting that turnaround. Like, blue team started off really strong, but you got to give a lot of credit to use hitting those axe swings on the back of Fiend, really breaking it up, not letting this blue team get those team combos. Oh my goodness, what? <laughs> Baltazar is getting deleted by use Okay. Hold on. Looks like so far, I mean, the red team has this close to in the bag now. The recovery is going to KO Balthazar. And you have to imagine, yeah, Fiend just says, you know what? Let's go next. Because he did not see himself making a four stock comeback there. That was a commanding victory coming out from Pahe and Yuz. I hadn't heard of Yuz before, and now I'm a fan. Yeah, I mean, Yuz definitely earning a name here today playing in the two space clearly showing that he's not some newcomer or anything like that like he's holding his own he is not being the weak link of this team or anything like that this is a really good pickup for Pahe as a teammate okay and just like that loading into game two they're leaving mammoth fortress available which you know if i'm if i'm then i'm wondering if that's something you want going back to that stage is what's gonna end up happening here you guys got kind of cleaned up on the first try, but maybe the next one's gonna go around. Looking at Pahe's stats, eight SIGs, 63% accuracy. So he probably got like five out of the eight there, which is pretty good, all things considered. Yeah, I mean, uh, respect to Pahe. Forces Fiend over to the Brin as well, wanting the double axe. The only difference between these two is that uh, Baltazar is going a little bit more defense heavy, having a Lance instead of a Hammer, whereas Yuz is gonna be a little bit more strength heavy with that Taros. You're gonna see if the switch is enough here. I mean, so far, I mean, I'm still staring at Yuz. I'm like, man, this Taros, it, it, it's playing support, which is like a little bit rare, right? Like, I feel like generally you see Taros, all right, that's the guy who's probably gonna be swinging the most, right? But when you have a Taros playing support and just swinging whenever his partner's getting attacked, well then, every time he punishes you, it hits that much harder. Ooh, Beautiful interrupt. Good breakup, yeah. That was yeah. Great. I love a support Taros. Put that high strength character as the support, make it so that those uh, risky big swings are less risky, and then you have that high speed character as that front line opener, and that's what's happening here with the red team. It's like, man, I ate like a tarot sig, you know, for hitting yeah. somebody. Yeah, that's gonna that's gonna stink, right? So it's like, dang, they really gotta be on their toes now. And there we go, Stomp Sayer. That's easy to use. Go ahead and secure that KO. One clean hit here onto Fiend, and that could do it. But looks like Pahe's gonna fall first. Use sitting with three, and that kind of 
ends up being what happens when you play support, right? You end up living a little bit longer, but it doesn't matter because Fiend is a shark, man. Gave him no time to breathe. Yeah, he's doing a really good job surviving, keeping this team alive. But Baltazar has got to be careful. He's been getting really chopped up by this axes of the red team. Okay. Let's see. All right, I like this air coming out here. You can see Baltazar controlling a lot of the aerial space. Oh, yeah. No, no, Baltazar, yeah. Uh-oh. Okay. Bean's really trying to play that uh that pressure role for the team, right? Like, he's really trying to open things up because Baltazar, he's getting handled a little bit, and you see the way that Fiend's rotating over. Good double side, like, couldn't quite get the follow-up, though. We're going to see what's the conversion here. They just kind of let Pahe get back to the stage here. Use trying to, you know, open some space here, and it looks like it managed to work because oh. Pahe was able to get in and find that recovery into the end sig. Tries to convert into the ground pound just a little bit too late, I think, there. But that's okay. Oh. Nice. Fiend able to clean up and give his team the lead. Baltasar is the one who's the su surviving the most for the blue team this time. But the weapon toss, he has plenty of movement. Fiend just trying to be here, be this wall so that Baltasar can get all the way back up. Okay, wow. Good string coming out here from Fiend. And it looks like Fiend and Balthazar might have a chance of getting this game too. Balthazar has been extending this stock for so long now. One clean hit away, but the red team has to find yeah. it first. Yeah, red team oh. likely looking for the knockout onto Fiend. They know that if they can take him out, they get the 1v2, but they can't mm -hmm. let Baltazar just run in, get a bunch of free damage as they're hunting this. Okay, and there you go. Baltazar goes down. That means they have a 2v1 with Fiend for a little bit, and they can't find the KO. Good Ooh, amount of that damage, recovery. that X recovery. <laughs> it's always scary. You never know if it's going to KO or not. You're not sure which hitbox is the one that lands. Baltazar taking some damage while Fiend is stuck on that left side wall. Both the blue team members holding the left side wall. Baltazar goes in, but he's taking a lot of damage. He's not getting any damage put out. This is bad. Baltazar, he's going to get the wall touch. All right, using that weapon throw to try and get himself back to the stage safely here. But is one clean hit away from certain death, especially oh, against Taros and Abrin. How do you oh. get back? Oh, he's not going to be able to. The scoop up from Yuz and Page and Yuz are up 2-0 over Fiend and Baltazar. Granted, that was a closer game, but man, the, the, the hammer down air is like that option that always seems to work in those scenarios. Like it doesn't get so much use overall in the kit that like when you throw it out in a scenario like that, no one's ever really looking for it. You're scared of the air, you're scared of the falling neutral air, you're scared of the stomp, and the down air comes out and like, dang, you know, I, I feel like the amount of down airs a hammer player lands a game is usually less than 10, but it's so good. Yeah, it's one that you don't see thrown out in neutral that much. Or, uh, Well, I guess a better way of phrasing it is, like, there's a bunch of hammer players that won't throw it out a lot in neutral, and then you'll run into, like, two or three who, like, only throw it out <laughs> Exclusively, in neutral. Exclusively, right? yeah. <laughs> but for the most part, the ones that don't throw it out in neutral, when they do, it hits because you're not expecting it. It's got that, like, kind of jank movement in it where you can kind of X pivot it as well mm -hmm. and really catch some people from behind. And, again, this blue team forced to make another swap. We'll see if this one will be the one because they now have to win three games in a row to stay alive in this tournament. There we go. We're going to be seeing the Orion from Fiend, which, you know, not a unpopular character in twos. We've seen Dolan make quite a bit of damage happen with this character before, and even Coslix used to get a decent amount of mods with the character in twos as well. But here, once again, he's, he's been kind of making a splash again. I'm happy to see it. Yeah, you can see there's this clear thought in the blue team that they want a Lance in some capacity, right? Like every single game, it's either been Baltazar or Fiend with a Lance in hand, but I don't even know if the weapon is the reason why they're struggling right now. Like they're just not getting those follow-ups. They're not getting that damage that this red team is able to put out. Which is, is so weird, but Rocket Lance really has just come around to 2v2 metagame. Oh. People figured out team combos. Beautiful down to coming out here. You can see, wow, Fiend was actually just able to go ahead and, and get some extra damage there. I thought maybe an interrupt from the teammate was coming, but the red team is double axing their way to victory right now. Holy cow. Blue team is just not finding a response at all. Use has been living for so long. Fiend's able to get back up, but yes. immediately the recovery launches him. That's always like demoralizing to get hit by. Like someone just does a jump raw recovery to KO you. They just read you that hard. They knew it was going to hit. That always makes you feel pretty bad. <laughs> Ooh, but a nice air cleanup potential here for the blue team. The axe weapon toss <laughs> and Fiend keeping his eyes Perfect. on the prize, able to avoid it. 
I was so scared there that that was going to be a, a moment of friendly fire, but the micro spacing was so perfect that he was able to have that just be the killing blow there. And now we have ourselves a tie match. Team Red Axes, though, going crazy yet again. The blue team's trying to strike back, but they haven't been able to get anything going with their double spear. Dude, the, the red team, you got to give them so much credit for follow-ups and for interrupts. Like, the blue mm -hmm. team cannot get momentum. Every time they're swinging, a red team member is interrupting and getting so much damage put out. And here we go. We're looking for some damage here. And you can see at this point, they already have Balthazar on the final stock. Oh, Beans right there with them. It's going to be tough. Balthazar yeah. biding some time here. You can see. Fiend runs in with the Rocket Lance to try to break him up so he could, Balthazar can get some time to get back to the stage, but still stuck in the corner. We've seen Balthazar on this left side of the stage for the past, like, 15 seconds. I mean, there he's got to go. be feeling rough for getting taken out so quickly. Nice follow-up from Fiend that with that end sig, unfortunately, just not going to lead to a knockout. They need to get this KO on to use and then immediately turn on to Pahe because Pahe is still living on the second stock, not even in the red. Yeah, Pahe is looking pretty healthy, all things okay. considered. You know, it has no dodge, but couldn't really get more than just that end light for the punish, which is going to be a little bit of a bummer. That down is going to kill Balthazar. Now Fiend's in the 2v1. Another four stock that needs to happen. You can't just throw the stock away this time. Ooh. But hey, get caught by a neutral light, and he'll be saying goodbye to that stock anyway. Clean sweep from Pahe and Yuz. That's a 3-0 and a handshake. Yeah, seventh place finish for the third seed of the tournament is unfortunate. A nice up upset for Page and Yuz, and uh, they're going to be moving on. Just some great team play between the two of them, and Fiend and Baltazar never really found their footing. Man, and that's this is something that has like seemingly been a theme a little bit. Now, granted, like Agno and Blade is still keeping it strong, but in Southeast Asia, right, we didn't even see tiger and jerry k make it that far like usually they always make top three and they, they got like i want to say like somewhere around like seventh or something yesterday which was like wow i didn't even get to see them on stream that, that, that's how low they placed which was like bewildering to me and now in south america we have juggernauts like fiend and balthazar also occupying that spot and i was i was saying to zip yesterday like People have just gotten better, man. Like I don't, I don't know what else to say. Like the the old guard. I mean, aside from Acno and Blaze, you know, have just like <laughs> been falling steadily one by one by one. Yeah, I think it's it's very uh, interesting, especially in kind of these other underrepresented regions, right? Those regions of Southeast Asia, Australia, and South America, where you don't get those invitationals, where you don't see them as frequently, mm -hmm. right? Like the last time we saw them was at the Summer Championship. There's a whole breadth of area where they're playing those community games and growing as players. And the people at the top, they might not be grinding as hard as the people who are hungry and they have a target. They get to see what they need to work towards. And uh, you're starting to see those those people who those like, you know, uh, PR 10s, PR 9s start to do that grind and make that come up, which is really cool to see. There used to be a time where I could like look at an Australian bracket and be like, oh, Kyler Alice is going to win or not yeah. look at the bracket and be like, Kyler Alice is going to win. And <laughs> I can't do that anymore, you know, because it was like people have just risen to the point where like there's no there's no shutouts like that really anymore. So. Even with that said, you know, we're going to keep things pushing as we make it deeper into the bracket. But I'm just I'm just so excited to see. I mean, it looks like we're going to have News and Nagi who are like, they're really good. They're some of my favorite players from this region who have just been like ascending slowly but steadily, right? Like they always place decently and then they just kind of like push it a little further, a little bit more. But then we have Selene and Lazuli who I'm not familiar with. Yeah, I think um, if I if I remember correctly, Lazuli has teamed up with some of the more established names, some of the names that uh, we've seen place relatively well. Uh, but on the other side, News and Nagi, they've definitely been doing very well for themselves, of course. Uh, they they got like third, fifth, and third in the most recent couple of seasonal events. Like they're mm -hmm. they're definitely a strong team. Actually, no, it's fifth, third, fifth uh, in the most recent uh, uh, seasonal events. So definitely the stronger team, kind of the uh, the team to beat here between the two. And then what, we got Maggie and Taros. And of course, Maggie, I believe, is a crossover skin for Jala. So that means we're going to be getting, you know, that high force, low defense, glass cannon type gameplay. But on the other side, we have yet another Olgrim and Taros again. Looks like there's something in that South American water that says that Olgrim is the character to play. 
in the 2v2 space. We'll see how well Nagi's able to do it alongside his teammate News right now. News with a nice down sig gonna launch Selen, but Selen's still living. No one quite in that kill percent. Okay, here we go. Gotta be careful here. Sair coming out. No one's gonna fall quite yet, but there have been so many Axe Sairs oh, connecting. That one's gonna do it, yeah. Go, but Nagi oh. just cleaning the entire map up. Lazuli still living, able to avoid the cider. News starting to fall on the left side. That was a little uh, scary there for a moment, but he gets up safely. Okay. Here we go. Neutral air coming out here. Stomp Sair not going to connect. And we just have like two separate 1v1s going on the stage, right? Like we just see on the right side of the stage, Lazuli just won that 1v1, finding that down to getting the KO on Nagi, and then decided to collapse for the 2v1. But other than that, these guys have kind of just been uh -oh. spacing it out. Uh -oh. Nice. Double ground pound. The help out from Nagi. News able to get back up safely. You got to thank the teammate for that one because News still alive. Selen, meanwhile, took a lot of damage for all that. The Nair going to take him out. Nice. Okay, and Lazuli making quite a bit of contact with these signatures. Oh, Ooh. gets caught by the end sig though. Should KO. Yeah. Nair. No. No, he's still Almost. good. Nagi's covering that wall there. Oh, that's your the wrong person. <laughs> That's a big mistake, because usually you land the stomp and you're like, ah, that's my teammate. I'm not going to do anything. <laughs> but also, like, your muscle memory, like, there's there's a dopamine rush that happens when you hit the stomp. <laughs> like, sometimes your hands just do it. Yo, he's, I mean, it's a bull. He saw red. He just he has a <laughs> yeah. swing on it. Lazuli, you got to give him credit. Able to clean up that stock. Keep this one relatively close. If they can take out Nagi, this is definitely doable for the blue team. And here we oh, go. Oh, yeah. Wow. Sick play. Oh, man. I find it oh. hard to believe that was intentional, but I'm going to pretend it was. Able to follow <laughs> up that end sig off the dare, but a side air, and News and Nagi take game number one. Okay. Yeah, that was... That was honestly n n not too bad, all things considered. I mean, looking at the damage across the board, right, it looks like you had roughly 450 from both members of Team Blue. And then on the other side, it was, like, close enough where it didn't feel like... Like, even though the stocks were a little bit different, it was just kind of like, eh, it, it could have gone either way, I felt like. It, it's always a matter of, like, who dies first on which team, and then, you know, it kind of snowballs a little bit from there. But there we go. Seven SIGs coming out from News, 43% accuracy. Lazuli, though, threw out six and got 50%, which is not bad at all. Yeah, Lazuli able to put out a decent amount of damage. They're kind of the person that I am keeping my eye on the most because, of course, coming in with that base three defense, likely in the defense stance mm -hmm. to go up to four, like, that's a, a very uh, volatile character. It can do very well because, of course, you get a bunch of boosts in attack stats, or it could do terrible because you got no defense and you just get taken out early. Oh. Uh oh Okay. Oh, wait, hold on. Yo, 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 wait, who's coming to They're win? Good? Who's going to win? Okay, we're all living. <laughs> we're all living. I was so... It, it's scary. You got two hammers going off out stage. Like, I expect someone to not make it back, but somehow they both survived. I think News giving some respect out there. You saw him immediate disengage. Able to come back up. Nagi with that sidelight actually going to help out News oh. a little bit. He's still going in. Oh, down here is his teammate. He's still going in, but Selen gets the knockout. Oh, and a nice turnaround as well to make sure that you trade oh! something. Oh, you gave him the chase dodge. He had no more recovery options. You can see the sweat drops on his character model. Oh, man. That has to feel bad because you lost your stock and he's still alive with three. Yeah, the second those sweat beads came out, it was a little too late. Selen was committing for the edge guard, but nice knockout for Lazuli. And News has got to be careful here. Very damaged on the second stock. Blue team has a real possibility of getting a nice lead if they oh. take him out. Oh my gosh, this team effort Ooh. edge guard on Lazuli is absolutely brutal. Like, Lazuli lived, but not without taking, like, a boatload of damage. Yeah. Definitely helps him out. Nice spot dodge, but Nagi again with a side air oh. and Lazuli with the turnaround. Opportunity oh. here, but the neutral light goes the wrong direction. The ground pound, the weapon toss, and Nagi. Oh, can oh, you chase out? Okay. <laughs> I was crazy. I was like, wow, if he manages to live here, that you are a god. Like, I, there's nothing else I can say here. Oh, man, be careful here, though, offstage. Lazuli going crazy Ooh. on the unarmed sticks right now. Picks up the sword and says Excelsior. It's not going to land, though. They're going to go ahead and push their way back to the stage. That was great. Oh, wow. Nagi with what the, the exhausted recovery. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't expect that. That's like unreactable. That exhausted recovery is it's so instant. I swear to God. I swear it's got shorter startup time than like the regular recovery. The actual one, right? Yeah. yeah. 
Nice movement from the red team to avoid both of those options from the blue team. Nice. But the down sig makes it so that news is no longer going to play here in game number two. And Nagi's got to do the 1v2. I don't know. Maggie kind of hitting different. <laughs> There's a reason. Living and hitting. Had to join Brawlhalla a little bit later, you know. Had to raise up the KC a little bit. Oh, man. Yo, Nagi can't oh. get anything. Can't even oh land. Nagi has not touched the ground in quite a while. Can't touch See the wall. Ya. Man, I don't even know what the answer was for Nagi there. Like, Nagi just got hit so many times in a row that you could see Nagi was like, well, I'm going to start swinging now because otherwise <laughs> people just keep hitting me. And then he swung and there was no one there. Like, I just has to feel bad. It was like, oh, well, just trying different options, right? That's what you do when, like, one thing's not working. You try something else. And here you can see it. Uh, I'm a swing. Oh, it missed. Uh, I'm a swing again. Ah, uh, it missed. And then you can't make it back. It's just uh, Nagi got caught up in a Marvel combo. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. he dropped the combo and he goes, okay, time to mash. Oh, wait, that was, like, the worst thing I could do. Like, and that's then what the combo there. starts again. Why? Like, there's, there is there is no way. Oh, man. News and Nagi. They, uh... They're having a tough time right now. Lazuli and Selen really, really showing up today, especially this this Jala, right? You were saying, and you can see it here, the defense stance coming out. We actually have the deck stance from Selen, which is like, usually you don't see that on Taros or like really any Axe or Rocket Lance type-ish character, right? Like, Ogrim wouldn't go into that stance. Hammer players generally don't go in that stance. You say that, but like Noose is also in the deck stance. Which is, I'm like, why, though? <laughs> like, I, like I still... It's so weird, because uh, both for Taros and Ogrim, it's a 50-50 split between go up to four or go down to two. The two, you, There's right? no in-between. Yeah. Like, you just... You pick one of the two stats, and uh, no one has really come out with a, a clear reason. I know for Hammer players, usually, like, the Taros will do it for the stat up, but it doesn't matter as news is already out. Holy cow, blue team starting off strong. Oh, what nice interrupt. Nice, nice yeah. interrupt, man. He was about to get yeeted off stage. Oh, still off stage, though. That ground pound almost connecting Selen, going for blood. Got to be careful here. Blue Down team's gonna feeling win. good. They're just moving. Oh, man. Then you get hit by backside of Axe recovery, bro. That'll hit the best player in the world. Like, <laughs> that, that, that joint is good. It'll catch a lot of people off guard, work out really well. Blue team still sitting on their first stocks. Lazuli not going to get taken out by that side air. Okay, nice. recovery. <laughs> what? What an option. Does the gravity cancel side signature into the stage and it KOs off the bounce on the wall? I mean, lots of damage on a low defense legend and it has that forward movement. It was, it's definitely one that you don't see a lot from the Ogrims. I'll say that much. It, it's a cheeky play too, because like Ogrim has to stop a little bit in place before he puts the the chair down. So yeah. he can dodge a lot of hitboxes with it too, just because of the timing mix up. No, nope, but the red team is starting to bring this back. But the wake up side air, blue team has been nice. so good about those wake up side airs to take out the person who gets caught. Oh, oh, oh man, <laughs> gets both of them. Goes for the double because okay. what okay. Taro's player wouldn't. Oh, don't have a lot of options here, but they're able to make it back. Nagi, though, going low, uses the Nair to recover. Maybe a turnaround? No, gonna go for Lazuli instead. Going for the oh, Ensig, expecting a panic jump from Lazuli, but Lazuli stays grounded. Red team okay. is struggling here, though. Nagi, close to kill percent. They're gonna clean up, but they are very behind. Okay, and I like that. You can see Lazuli jumps a little bit before picking up that weapon to get the maximum time out of the vulnerability there because they are waiting oh. for the partner to come back. And there's a conversion into Whoa. the neutral sig. I don't know what Nagi's going to do. I don't know. Dancing a little bit with death here. Goes for the down air, but he is so close. And the D-Sig will do it. Selen and Lazuli getting game number three. Currently 2-1 over News and Nagi. Yeah, they're looking good man they they are looking good i'm like extremely excited to see you know how the rest of the set's going off because i mean this could very easily be one of those game fivers you know yeah this uh this has that potential i mean it's news and nagi we're talking about a very strong team generally places in the top five of things but they're struggling right now against lazuli and selling okay even taking a look here you know everyone did like roughly 400 some odd damage. Lazuli a little bit on the higher end there with the 497, which also tracks because they are playing uh, Jala, but also 16-6. Man, 
25% accuracy, so that means that's four landed from Lazuli, but like, the number's getting pretty high there. Still not reaching Surus numbers on the Friday <laughs> dev stream, but... <laughs> not quite. <laughs> we might get close, though, because we're seeing news swap over to the Azoth. Definitely going to be looking for some big swinging six. You got you to gotta point out, though, that Lazuli, despite the fact that they uh, missed quite a few sigs, they were getting some knockouts with sig. Mm -hmm. right? Like that final KO was a down sig. And then on the other side, Selen was hitting a lot. I think it was a 70% accuracy on those Terra sigs, which hit very hard. So that's big damage dumps that are hitting off those sigs. Yeah, especially if you're on the team that wins and someone has a signature count that high, even though the accuracy is not that great, that means that they're able to threaten the space of those signatures without getting punished too hard often. And that means they have a lot more control over the stage. You can already see hopping oh. there. Nice end sig to catch the landing. Okay. Hold on. Oh, that almost looked like a setup for, for a team combo from Nuzanagi there. Yeah, definitely an improvised one there with that falling neutral air, but still some good damage being put out. Oh. Ooh, News going for the wake up, didn't quite hit it. Ground pound, gonna get beaten out. Both blue team nice. members stuck on the right side. Yeah, I expect if News doesn't throw it at least 26 this game, you're not yeah. playing Azoth. That's what I gotta say. There we go. No, you didn't pick Azoth for the stat line. <laughs> there we go. Sig will work yes. out. Red team looking all right, trying to take this one to game number five, but the blue team won't take too much to get these knockouts. It's October, man. It's Azoth season. You know, you get the power up. There we go. Side lights there. True conversion coming up from Lazuli there. When you land that side light deep inside like that, you kind of go for the Sayer True follow up. But even with that said, beautiful. That's a, that's a Steph Curry for the accuracy, man. That's a clean hit. In threes, but dock advantage to the red team. The side air from Lazuli, just like a quick hop up, and they immediately go for the team combo. Couldn't quite convert. But they're still getting some oh. good damage put out. You see News went for that side take follow-up off of the hammer recovery. Had that hit, that would have been quite a bit of knockback. Just because that move hit so hard, right? Like the hitbox, not that big. But man, the force that it packs. Really good. And then we saw just a moment ago, News was doing a gravity cancel down sick. Looked kind of goofy, but it really distracted Lazuli from the fact that Nagi was going to come up and get that knockout. Felon on the right side. He's got the hammer, so Nagi's going to respect it. Disengage. Nice. Oh! <laughs> Man! What a time to be alive there. That has to feel good if you're selling right there. Getting the daily double with that side signature. And now your team's in the lead. Barely. 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 At this point, you can call it even. Because uh -oh. selling's like. Not oh. anymore! Well. <laughs> <laughs> Great bow edge guard from News and. They're looking poised to take this to game number five, but we'll see if Selen can do this 1v2. Definitely has a lot of health to play with. Came in fresh. Oh, that's scary. No ground pound from anyone, though. But yeah, I mean, like, Lazuli didn't even have that much damage, right? And now Selen trying to terrorize it, throws the weapon, disarms themselves, waiting for the next spawn. Where is it at, though? And just side lighting, saying, weapon, please spawn, and it's on the opposite <laughs> side of the stage. But somehow Selen's able to get it. Still able to get some good damage out. New's going to connect with the down signature. Red team split a little bit. Oh, Might be trying to set up something. Side sick will KO. Punish? This is actually very much so in the realm of possibility. Red team's got to oh. be careful about the stack no up. Oh, he snap. He's got all the weapons. No. <laughs> he it. I thought you were going to starve him from that next weapon. Dag. Hold on. Selling, though. Still might be able to make this comeback. What's the sick? Oh. Round pound, and the red team's going to take this to game number five. I don't blame them, though, because it was like, if you look at the spacing for that final ground pound, you can see that Selen had, like, jumped to the left, and it was, like, just on the edge of the ground pound hitbox. I think they were really trying to hold on to their dodge just in case they needed it for the other par partner. But just, like, got a little bit too close. You can see it, like, right here. Yeah. Ah, just, like, just a tip. Man, that sucks. Tried to drift out of that one. Was definitely uh, aware of the fact that they could have just gotten double ground pounded. 13-6, I'll take it. I'll take it. It's not 20, but I'll take it. <laughs> it's still double digits. Numbers. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's, it's Azoth number. It's not wubs, but it's it'll do. Well, see, the real thing is, like, those 13 signatures were 13 less sigs Lazuli could do. Because they got relegated to four sigs in that yeah. game. Like, they did not get an opportunity to throw out all the sigs. It's like a monopoly on the SIG, SIG usage, right? Like, Nagi couldn't even throw out one. <laughs> you know, it's like, I, you, you got to do them all because you can only, there's an unwritten rule where if you do more than like 25 in a game, you're going to get, you're going to get cursed. So, 
There you go. Production's having fun with uh, the math on this one. They're very excited about the fact that Lazuli and Selen did uh, 1k damage on the dot. Like, they, they're mm, having a, a blast five. on that. <laughs> That's a All right, here we go. Zeros. Game number five. News and Nagi versus Lazuli and Selen. Will the underdogs get the upset here in game number five? We will find out here swaps. so far. You know, it's looking pretty decent. Red team trying to get some conversion. We haven't seen too crazy uh, anything in terms of team combos, but could change right now. There's this very real feeling that the red team is targeting down Lazuli, though. Lazuli already mm -hmm. deep red, almost 30 seconds in. Like, red team knows this is a low defense legend. They can take it out nice. quick in the side dig for the double. Tag. <laughs> Man. The double tarot side six has just been hitting in this set. <laughs> you know, Dude, that's today. That's at least the third one I've seen personally. There's got to be more. That's crazy, man. They, they just landed them. It's just one of those moves that hits a little bit further behind than you would think. I think nice that's even here. after they nerfed it, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, news. news. News is wild. Playing unarmed on the offstage, but gets back up safely. Wow, crazy play here. Picks up. <laughs> that is such a true immediate combo, sig. dude. <laughs> Weapon pick up immediate sig is like. <laughs> that's just, it's always going to happen. It'll catch. She, you, your brain just can't register the information fast enough. That's why it's so good. Your brain's still thinking they're unarmed, but Selen mm -hmm. does pick the stomp side. What? Nice down sig. It's not going to knock out. It does good damage. Like, that's what that sig is generally for. Does great damage. Side air bounces. Still not enough with nice. the unsig. Not enough. Ground pound. Nagi finally going to fall. But News took a lot of damage. Does get the side air. And I actually like the fact oh. that they went for the conversion into the, the Jala Nutra Sig immediately instead of going for like a jump. Do you like gravity cancel into a pass back? Because that's how Lazuli was able to get the KO on the other partner. Yeah, just go for that quick follow up, that quick damage. News has got to be careful here. News is taking a lot of damage. Oh my gosh. Could get taken out quick. Lazuli, Lazuli. Which team's gonna nice. get the one v one? It's so hard to find out. That recovery is gonna KO sound. That means it's a two v one for Lazuli. Lazuli burning all the options, but using this platform as a safe spot to refresh their jumps. And now Sun is back. Weapon spawns on the right side. They pick up the hammer. It could be anyone's game. This is so neck and neck. It's between News and Lazuli. Nagi falling there. Bit unfortunate, but it's not terrible. News having to dance around for a moment there. Good avoidance, doesn't get hit. Oh, News is running. He is running nice and follow converting. Ups, nice follow ups. Goes for the ground pound, wants to end Recovery. it over. Recovery's gonna hit, they're both gone. I it's think a it's gonna be a one v one. Hammer v hammer, Taros v Taros. Nagi with all the movement in the world. Selen misses the cider, Nagi can't punish. Show me your movement. Bait out those attacks. Ooh. Who's gonna get whiff punished first? Nagi getting nervous, gets the side air, selling so damaged. Another side air, and Nagi could oh. win this one. There's oh, the weapon, weapon spawn. Needs to spawn. It's on my left side. Selling, can you get it? Ah, ah. Oh. No, the back swing. I told you it doesn't KO. Oh. No, stop. There's a scoop, okay. and Nagi and News clutch out in game number five. A nail biter of a oh. set, and they're going to continue on Goodness. in the lower bracket. That's. That's the way every game file should be. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but double KO happening at the same time to a 1v1 double Taros. Ignorance versus ignorance. Look at that. The recovery. Oh, man. And then, man, this was, this was scary. Because you know this game, this game technically ended. And I'll say technically because that's not what actually happened. But it was at that down sig, right? It was uh, you had yeah. to know when it was done and where the hitbox was and land up that Axair to win that game. And like, honestly, I didn't even think that Selen did it incorrectly. I was like, yeah, this move whiffed. I think you're good to fast fall Sair now. And then the back end was still active just a little bit longer than they were thinking. Oh, man, that changed everything. And just on that. Uzanagi got to continue on. They're going to be going up against Hyper and Kaina Ackerman in just a little bit, but we're going to the other side of the lower bracket to watch Maxi S9 2K and Hanabi versus Page and Yu. And uh, I'm not overly familiar with this team of Maxi uh, S9 2K and Hanabi, but they are the team that knocked Fiend and Baltazar into the lower bracket. So definitely a lot of credit to this uh, this kind of underseeded team. Yeah, no, I have to agree. I'm like, those don't sound like. 
I, I think one of those names, like Hanabi, I think I may have seen prior, whether it was in the twos or or the ones landscape. But the other, I this is my first time that I've even seen those combinations of letters and numbers. So I'm like, well, let me see what you got. You made it this far. You must be pretty darn good. I'm excited to see what you got to show me. I love when I get to cast Brawlhalla and there's just some dude I never heard of before. That's like the best feeling. And then he pulls up and he immediately makes a fan out of me. Yeah, the, it, well, you love when you see someone you're not familiar with do well. You don't love when yeah. you see them come out and just get 0-3, three stock three games in a row. But this uh, should be a good one. We've got some pretty low seats, some uh, some some underdogs across the board, right? Maxi That's and crazy. Hanabi both 39 and 40. On the other side, Page and Yu's 11 and 34. Like they are some low PR people. Definitely getting some nice boosts in this one today. Three out of four, 75 percent of these players have made zero dollars off for a haul. <laughs> But that that all ends today, yep. <laughs> you know. They all that have made today. some some dollars <laughs> today, getting into the top. Uh, a guaranteed at least a fifth place finish uh, for both. That is that is great. Uh, that is sick. I love to see that, man. Everyone, not only are, are we getting some some new fresh faces making it deep in bracket, but it's also right before BCX. Like I'm hyped for the Autumn Championship, but let me tell you, I am hyped for BCX as well because it's gonna be. Oh man, that's gonna be so good. But hey, we're here right now. I wanna see what these guys got. Take a look at the bracket here to see how we got this far. And honestly, there's a there's a script you can see all playing out here. Yep, on the top side, you see Power Ranger and Lopez, DB and West, the top two seeded teams of the tournament. Still doing very well for themselves, sitting in the winner's finals. Guaranteed a top three finish on both of them. But down in the lower bracket, you're seeing, again, that Maxi, Hanabi, pa Page, and Yu's, uh, Page and Yu's doing a, a quite a bit of a lower bracket run. And then you've got Kaina, Ackerman, and Hyper versus News and Nagi. And uh, some, pretty, uh, some pretty good sets all around uh, still to happen. Man, and there's some names down there that, like, I would have expected to have seen that, that just aren't there. Like, you know, I was expecting to see, okay, we're in South America. We're probably going to see, like, you know, Broly make it this far. And then I'm looking, I'm like, where's where's Broly's name? <laughs> you know, I'm like, dang, dang where's where Broly at? Or another one, Bruxo, I expect to make pretty far. Like, LX, you know, like, like the, the, these are all players that I expect to kind of make a deep run. Not to say they did bad, but just not making it as deep in the bracket that I, I kind of would have expected them to. And that makes sense considering the fact that there's names that I haven't seen before sitting right here. Uh, New Sack and Manexo also on there. They're a team that Sparky and I talked about in the pre-show. Um, a lot of teams, but of course, not all of them can make it this far. But mm -hmm. looks like we're getting ready to get right on into this one. Uh, considering this is my per first time watching Maxi and Hanabi play, I'm going to call out their characters. They've got the Bryn Bodvar to go up against Page and uses Bryn and Taros. Okay, here we go. Bryn, Taros, so good. We got to see a little bit of this earlier today, right? And then Bodvar, Bryn, so good. We've seen that for i don't know the the lifespan of brawlhalla so you know like yeah. that's that's just that's just old faithful right there that's that's mario that's that's your classic poster twos team you know maybe throw a hattori in there somewhere you know it's maybe, all yeah. it's all good maybe a val on the uh the mm -hmm. occasion but here we go game number one Page and Yu's um, arguably like the, the favorites in this one just off of Page's uh, PR number 11, but still very real possibility. This goes uh, to a game number five or can go either direction. Just like that, there we go. see a side stick come out from Hanabi and pretty much everyone on the screen there. It's going to be a team conversion. No, actually goes for the D-Light ground pound on the partner there. And now both members of the blue team are stuck in the corner. N-Light, N-Light, N-Light into the end. Sig Page is here to play. Pretty good corner control coming out from Page. Hanabi still holding on to this stock. Does get the recovery stuffed, but man, both Hughes and Page were in the red. Page able to get that knockout. Okay. Nice catch right there. I'm wondering what's going to happen here. The blue team falling behind by a little bit. We can see Page is the one with three stocks still, right? Now, granted, it's Bryn. Gets okay, hit nice. by the stomp, but right there, we don't see the friendly fire into the stomps here that we saw in the previous set, right? It's like, oh, I got the stomp on my back off. Yeah. Really good disengage from Yu's, recognizing who he caught with that stomp. Page going to try to split up this blue team. You saw him make a very conscious decision to neutralize Hanabi away from Maxi. Wants to keep this blue team split and oh. let Yu's do the 1v1 because Maxi's getting into the red. That's kill percent. 
you can see if either member of the red team gets a neutral light, it's going to lead to a team combo, right? It's going to be a side light and air from the partner and then probably a conversion to like uh, a signature or like a gravity cancel D light or something. So we need to be careful here. Oh, you see Pache trying to play oh, the corner here. Wow, that was sick. That was sick. Great recognition from Hanabi. He is going to end up falling for it, but Yuz was not even looking up top. Hanabi just from the skies with the GC down sick. Yeah, you never you never expect them to use that move up there. You know, yeah. it's like <laughs> like no, you're supposed to use it for a corner god, maybe off a D light. Oh man. Just like that. Getting down to the final stocks here. Page will be soon to follow, but not quite yet. The blue team trying to convert onto use to set up the 2v1, but so far, Max hanging on. Blue team. Might be looking to take out Yuse here, give themselves that opportunity for the 1v2. Nice interrupt. Careful. I don't know where that gravity cancel stick was supposed to hit, but it's going to be okay. Max going to be able to make it back here. Yuse in the red. Hanabi also in the red. It's a matter of who Ooh. goes down first. Stomp, but it gets interrupted by the weapon toss from Maxi. Ah! And Sig, greedy Oh, God. From Someone's going to die here, right? Left side, Hanabi going for the edge guard. Page What's going running on? Running out of jumps. Page getting it to touch. The save a for save! Yuse. They both get up. How is everyone still alive right now? But oh my gosh! Is uh, in the red. So many stocks could get taken. There's one. The scoop up from you. Oh, oh, oh! This is two stomp stairs. That's one. Okay, one v one, baby. There. Falling there. Not gonna KO. Paget Can Page do the one v one? Oh, Scoop you're crazy! Up. Ah, but he was too uh. low. He goes down there for the day, and that means he has more vertical trajectory to follow. Uh, the recovery from Hanabi. They take game number one. Oh man, dude, that has to feel bad all right y'all had the 2v1 granted everyone was about a hit away from death right you know like the ko's were, were, good, were right around the corner so i i don't blame them in terms of like as far as 2v1s go this one was pretty honest i feel like you know that was really, <laughs> it was that not like was a really any any team's game like hanabi he just had to get those two ko moves on the same side like red team just needed to find that one hit and there's also like that time right when a 2v1 starts where people don't get to like get their positioning yet. Yeah, you, you can't know? set up just yet. Oh man, but we'll see as we head into the next game here. These have been some some crazy, crazy games so far. Ooh, oh, team okay. combo, something to the left. Go for the double corner guard instead of a team combo. I like it. Yeah, that was an interesting setup from Yuz, right? Like, he couldn't go for a traditional stomp because Axe has a little bit of a vertical uh, trajectory off the neutral line. So he ended up waiting for the falling action of it. Got that stomp side light. Still, though, damage being put out. Yuz has got to be a bit careful here. Doesn't want to fall too early. Okay, man, Watch. right now. Oh, no. Red team's kind of cooking. Recovery's not going to KO off the top. Max comes down with a stair. You can see Yuz immediately retreats to back up Page, And that's what you want to see. Got to keep the teammates alive. Can't quite get the follow-up there. No true oh. follow-ups off the sideline. What a side air! Yu's going to fall at the bottom. <laughs> Traveled the entire map to that KO. <laughs> oh, that's a team combo. Nice. Oh, nice. Oh, Ooh, the weapon throw, too? Went for the reset? I think he was a, a little early with the... Uh, I think Hanabi was a little early with that sword ground pound, but still, they got a lot of damage mm -hmm. on the use. Things looking bad for the red team. Oh, man. And Yuse now has to like somehow keep this stock alive for a little while longer. Get a chance, maybe bring things back to even. Nice interrupt. interrupt. Gotta oh, keep Yuse alive. The same punish. Maxi finally gonna lose that first stock, but Yuse loses his second. This is rough for the red team, oh. but Page avoids the end sig. And I wonder if maybe. You know, D-Light was also an option there, but wanted to kind of get the big swing, maybe get the KO, convert it to like a stare off the right side. Either way, use with one stock, no dodge here either. So that side light there is pretty much guaranteed. Has to fall down, gets caught by the recovery. Teammate finds his way to the blast zone. And use. how do you survive here? That's one way to do it. That fast fall into the recovery was the best outplay I've seen yet today. But he's got to outplay one more time. He is still deep red on his final stock. Maxi's got two to his name. This is such a tough spot for the red team. Good oh. spot dodge, but the interrupt from Maxi. Okay. Oh, three piece. Oh, careful. Don't step on each other's toes now. No punish on Page because of the platform there. It's hard to get down. 
But Tim's got to be careful about the SIG usage. The side air oh. is just hitting his teammate. How is you still alive? Oh, okay. It's not. <laughs> 2v1 territory again, but this one's still in the realm of possibility. Not quite uh, like the previous 2v1 we saw, right? A few more stocks on the board, but Hanabi is like a clean hit, and Max is also like a clean hit, but Max also has two stocks. You can see the idea there from Page has to chase Dodge away the second he gets a hit. Oh, the hit's coming out from the blue team. Page's disarmed. Oh, the disengage doesn't commit to the ground pound. Yeah, he didn't have a dodge. I'm surprised. Hold on. Jump here. You still have a dodge that you can use. Yep. Use it to touch the wall here and just fight your way back. Oh. How are you going to find the KO option? Side, Side sink. It's one with an air. And Hanabi and Maxi take game number two. They're up 2-0 over Page and Yuse. Oh, man. These guys. I've been going off here. 758 damage coming out. Wow. That is, that is a lot of damage from Max. <laughs> if I do say so myself, that is... That's a lot. <laughs> it's interesting because the game before Hanabi was putting out like 600 where everyone else was doing 400s roughly. So it's uh, it's a team that both can kind of take the ball and run with it. They're both capable of putting out some big damage. Oh, man. Look at that. Some SIGs were flying as well. 8% accuracy. It's a little rough. But with that said, we're going to Crystal Temple now. A uh, pretty polarizing stage depending on who you ask. But... For the Axe in particular, I think this might be the Axe's best stage hand down. When you get that side light in air, you are just so perfectly set up on the platform to go to a follow-up without having to burn your gravity cancel that it's just so good. Yeah, so nice. good. It's really nice to be able to go for that quick down light follow-up or for uh, a couple of the legends there, an NSIG follow-up. Mm -hmm. Get some quick damage. Blue team taking the brunt of the damage here in game number three. And this red team, they've got a reverse three. The charge up from Hanabi gets hard punished by Yuz and he's going to get the oh, side thing on his fire. teammate. Luckily, he doesn't kill, though, because that's oh. the worst, right? When, when it KOs, you're like, dang, that's yeah. not something I wanted. But in that scenario, you know, the, the reduced knockback playing clutch factor there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> nice scare. Oh, Actually helping out Page, making sure he doesn't get launched too far. Then you get this extra credit though. Don't let this one get back to even. Good avoidance from Page. Really trying to chase high. Mm, okay. I like what we're seeing this far here. Ooh. Another Ensig coming out from Maxi. <laughs> I just stomp stairs the crap out of him. <laughs> oh, oh. Okay. He's gone. That's it. Oh, snap. Page's got to be careful. Not in a position to get 2v1 right now. Has both blue team members oh in gosh. front of him. We are seeing so much friendly fire today. They're just swinging, <laughs> you know? <laughs> they are swinging. Oh, that almost KO'd. High ceiling, baby. But the blue team getting into the red. Down sick takes out one. Hanabi nice. gets the weapon toss to the face. Using Page, poised to take game number three. Take this one to a game four. Hopefully get that reverse three. Okay, yeah, they're looking like they're... Uh in a pretty good spot to at least get this game number three. I mean, all things considered, but we've seen, you know, the situation before just quickly turn around. So we'll see if the, the blue team's able to kind of make a comeback happen really quickly. Oh my gosh. Oh, what a follow-up from Yuse. You'll love to see it. There's no true follow-up off the axe in air. So you get that side light in air, and then you <laughs> wait for your teammate to get that follow-up. That was like the ballsiest D-Light I've ever seen from a spear. You could see that Axe ground pound was going to come out any second. Wow, clean hit from this air. 2v1, Woo! Hanabi goes for the gravity cancel side sig, I think, and just gets clocked. Dude, what a pop-off from Yuz at the very end of that one. Great damage put out from Page, but like, I want to see that replay where Page is going, or sorry, Yuz is going up, dodges just outside that spear toss, hits the side air, immediately goes down for the down sig to finish off Hanabi. Oh, man. We might see it right here. The one. Look at that movement. Dash jump. Dodge through. Weapon toss goes down. Dash down sig. Stocks. And then that always stinks too, because when you go for like that gravity cancel sig option like that, you are expecting that your opponent is going to pick an aggressive option and you're trying to stuff them out, right? But it's like if they commit to the aggressive option before you do, well, that's what happens. You know, you just get boomed out of the match. And just like that, we're going to a game at number four. He was hitting 100% of his signatures. At least two of them were down six. So that's real nice for this team of Page and Yuz. Okay. Well, let's see where they're going to go. Crystal Temple immediately removed from the game plan. Which uh, I'm all about.
personally. I, I feel like that was definitely the most volatile of those uh, of, of the matches we've seen thus far, right? Production. Like every uh, other one was like, mm hmm. They're, they're calling out the fact that Hanabi and Maxi did less damage combined than Page did in that last game. Oh. All right, I guess, guess y'all got to hit more. <laughs> That's what that means. Y'all got to hit more. Yo, but they're making the swap in the characters, the double Val for game number four. But they're going back to Apocalypse. This is the map that they were getting those Ws on. Let's see how well the double Val works out on this map. Yeah, because I'm wondering. I'm like, you guys, like, I mean, I guess if there's a time to try it, Game four isn't a terrible spot to do so, because at least you have a game to play with, and if it doesn't yeah. work, you can go back to what got you the first two dubs to begin with. Yeah, definitely a little bit of room to experiment here, but of course you always want to just get that dub right then and there. Lots of SIGs starting to get thrown out. People getting in that kill percent. Stomp, side air, not going to do enough. Ooh, went for the nair at the top. Neutral Sig, he's going to be the first one to fall. Okay, let's see. Nice little unarmed conversion there. And the Sair pickup from Padre is going to go ahead and secure that stock. Padre, the only one with three stocks, but shouldn't be for too much longer here. Staying in the deep red, going to get caught by the unarmed neutral air, but that's like whatever, right? At this point, you're fine taking those a million times over, but the downside is that you'll get sent further away from your teammate and won't be able to help them out in case they get 2v1. Yeah, I mean, a, an unarmed neutral air is uh, its going to take a lot for that to KO, but the side Sig will definitely KO. You just got to be careful here, taking a lot of damage. Most damage between everybody on those second stocks. Careful here, team combo. Nice, nice weapon, weapon throw. Yeah, that's, that's the way to interrupt it. That wasn't nice. quite in position, but the ground pound. Yu's gonna be down to his final stock here. He needs to hold on. Get this to game five. Okay. Can you do it here? See Pahe with this axe, trying to get some damage. Interrupts the neutral sig charge there with the side light nair. It's good damage being brought up on the red team here. They need to KO someone on the blue team as soon as possible and try to set up a 2v1 if they can. Yo, but all of these SIGs coming out oh. from the swords. Use does hit one, but the neutral SIG. Blue team gonna retain this lead. Hanabi is dominating off of these Val signatures. Oh, nice ground pound coming out from Page there. Weapon throw's gonna hit use by accident, but it's fine. You can see Max is gonna sit on the corner until uh, Hanabi's able to make it back, and now we have ourselves a match here. Use already in the red. Doesn't have a recovery. Manages Ooh. to get the hit there. Should be able to land, pick up a weapon. Great spawn timing. And now the red team has a little bit more room to play with here. Oh, I can't believe they didn't hit either of them. Yeah, both of them. Going for the actually the same option. They same both dodge, uh, yeah. spot dodge and have got through it. It's doable on either side. Use with the scoop. Axie, most damage for the blue team. Nice spot dodge. The convert oh. into a downlight side air. Teros. Recovery. Man, just to get taken out there. So Yuz, gone from the game. Page has to make the 2v1 comeback in order to stay alive in the set here. Yes. Hanabi and Max, they just got to finish it up. Round pound. Trying to oh. deny the wall. Touch careful, the save careful, attempt. Careful, Neutral guys. Sig. Hanabi's still living. Page's doing it. But that Weapon spot throw. dodge. Nice. It was everything, right? You see the spot dodge, you're like, ah, I can throw this weapon and know it's a combo now. You spot dodge to go for that gravity cancel neutral light. Trent went for an aggressive wake up option and unfortunately got punished for it. And that means that Page and Yuz are taken out. Maxi and Hanabi are going to go on into the loser's semifinal. Guaranteed top four finish. There you go. Man, you have been some cra crazy sets. Crazy sets. <laughs> That's all I got to say. They've been. Doing all types of plays this far. And you guys go ahead and take a look at the statistics Goodness. from that last game. Like, this is this is brutal. Uh, did they do enough text. SIGs? <laughs> That's I, I, oh. 41 SIGs between the two of them. Still less than Cirrus in one game of ranked. But 41 SIGs is a lot of SIGs. Yeah, was, I'm sure Cirrus would approve. <laughs> yeah. like, See, they made it into top eight. And they, they, they're they clicking won. the SIG but. <laughs> That one dude in Twitch chat who's like, why are you telling him to say less? Because we want him to get better, man. <laughs> anyway. There's also another one who's probably yeah. like, oh, spammer. But we're yeah, moving right? on. <laughs> Hyper and Kaina Ackerman going to be going up next against News and Nagi. We got three Bodevars on the screen. 
And Kiner Ackerman at this point, I think, is like pretty much cemented to be a goaded player. Like, I remember the first time I saw Kiner Ackerman kind of show up in South America, and I was like, oh, wow, they're pretty good. They're taking out some good names. And now it's just been like every single tournament since then. They've been placing extremely well to the point where I'm like, wow, all right, pull on up. Let's see what you got. Yeah, definitely uh, has been growing this year. Had a little bit of a rough 2020. I think they were still trying to find that right teammate, but still, this year has been very good for Kaina Ackerman in both 2v2s and 1v1. Oh, and it looks like we're already getting the stage picks here. It's going to be a pick between Mammoth Fortress, Shipwreck Falls, and Apocalypse. And you guys can take a look at uh, the PR rankings and the, the money earned here, right? So, like, we're talking about Kiner Ackerman, four top eight placements now, and nine top 32s. And we also have six from Hyper uh, in the top eight as well. So that just kind of goes to show that, like, 2021 has been a pretty good year, I think, considered. Pretty interesting in terms of PR. We got seven, eight, nine, and 10 here playing against each other. So in terms of numbers, pretty close set potential. Okay, and here we go. I mean, this, you know, we got three bow bars and then and then Taros. And yeah. I think these bow bars are rocking the exact same skin. You know, they got some different weapon skins, I think, but oh, Careful here, News fishing for that recovery, not going to get it, gets it instead on Kiner Ackerman, goes for the ground pound, oh, manages to catch the recovery, can go dodge. for a second scoop, missed it though. Kinda barely able to dodge through that ground pound, going to hold on to the stock. News still playing these edge guards, just tr uh, choosing an opposite side, goes for oh. the bear, Hyper with the punish, down light recovery, Nagi going to be the first one to fall. Okay, oh, what a dodge, man, that reaction time, coming out clutch there for News. And now finds a stomp there. That's not quite oh. enough to KO Hyper. Weapon throw should do it, though. Have to burn a lot of options. Yeah, he's out. Going nice down catch. China. Ooh, that was almost like a wall option. combo. Yeah. Really smart. Just the wake up. Uh, or not wake up. Just the immediate gravity cancel. Neutral light. Dissuading news. But news is still holding on to this stock. Couldn't quite get a follow up. Just got a neutral air. Oh, nice smack there coming out. See if another one could potentially be oh. found. Woo, double hammer combos? Team business. Russian Mafia. This follow up from Pass Nagi. back. Ah, oh, a little late. A little late on the side tick. But that's going to be okay here. We can see these these two teams like to go for the team conversions. Oh, what is going oh. on? <laughs> He's just swinging. Kind of <laughs> swung on everyone with that uh, one. Oh my gosh, your boy. Punish? If the whiffed side tick does get punished, stomp side air. Both red team members get launched, but Nagi eats the weapon toss that would have likely KO'd one of the red team members. Okay, and here we go. We're pushing into something. The ground pound's gonna go ahead, secure the KO. Both members of Team Blue and their final stocks here. Double Bodvar looking crispy. Scoop up, will take out one of the red team members. Neutral light will take out the other one. We're going down to final stocks on both sides. No major lead for either team. Okay, well, it gets both of them with a gravity cancel, a D-Light Dare, and you can see they are trading blows so often oh, here, but it looks like the yeah. red team's coming out on top. The Ensig gonna catch. They are just swinging with these blades. Another Ensig, oh, a ground pound. Oh. The recovery hits them back up. Everyone's alive, but it is a very haphazard match right now, and Nagi is gone. News has to do it all by himself. Gets two bode bars with the hammer going off stage. Goes for the recovery. Okay. No, a Sare. Can you get the edge guard here? Maybe a Not ground pound? Enough. Oh, he's committing. Oh. He doesn't have a... He still touches. He's still alive! D-Light, oh. D-Sig, Kaina Ackerman going to close out game number one. And that whole last stock for Nagi was him in a blender. Like, he was getting passed around by everybody. Yeah, dude. I don't know if you ever saw the, the Will It Blend series on YouTube. Yeah. You get the blend tech blender. You just start throwing all kinds of crap in it and seeing if it blends, bro. That was that last, the ending of that last match. I did not know who was getting chopped up, where they were flying, heads were spinning. I was just like, oh man, it was a good attempt though. There was a moment there where we saw a potential edge guard on the right side of the stage. Right, got yeah. that sare. It was barely not enough to KO, and we saw uh, the ground pound come out. I think from News, and it was just barely not close enough to catch the dodge into the stage. Yeah, it went from uh, very doable to very not doable yeah. uh, very quickly. And Nagi gonna make the swap over to the Azoth. Gonna try to get some double-digit signatures thrown out here. It was the thing that helped them in their previous set, taking it to game number five, making that swap quick on this one, but how well it works out here. Okay, 
Here we go, back to swing, gravity cancel, N6 coming out here. Azoth, of course, been making a splash in the competitive scene a little bit more these days. A lot of signatures coming out as well. We see the bear coming out. News nice. getting a little bit of help from Nagi there because Hyper uh, was, was, was scheming. Okay, make it back. Ooh, the chase, ah, the dodge, chase dodge, it's enough. Heine gets the touch, dips down, was expecting that recovery attempt. News, Eli oh, Dare nice. off the bounce into the recovery. Great reaction from Hyper. Down Sig, Nagi, still not enough to take out Hyper. Oh my gosh, these guys are brutal. Holy cannoli. Light recovery, blue team losing their first stocks. Okay, just like that. Hyper loses the first stock. Kinda loses the first stock. Everyone has two stocks across the board, and so far, there hasn't been a major swing, right? It's like people just start getting hit, and then you have to look back up at the top right and figure out who's coming out on top because it's so unclear yeah. by the back and forth. There's just this quick scramble, and then you just got to count the bodies, and you're like, okay, well, we're back to, to net zero as yeah. Hyper dives in, hits the bear onto news. Oh, wow. D-Light side air, the follow-ups. That timing was perfect. They just oh, picked yo. up that weapon. <gasps> News. The chase dodge jump. The save. Chase. No Red punish team. on the save. Oh, man. That's huge. That's monumental. That oh, that the double D6. dancing. The breath from the depths. That stanky Colgate. Oh, man. Doing that uh, that breathman challenge where he puts all of the, uh, the packs in his mouth plus some <laughs> orange juice. But News. Yo. He's Ew. got to live. <laughs> you, have you ever seen those? No, dude. What? They put like Listerine strips in yeah, the orange they put, juice? Yeah, they, oh, they put a pack of Listerine strips plus orange juice <laughs> oh, and then no. like drink a bottle of ice water and just try to <laughs> breathe. But Nagi's in trouble right now. Has to <laughs> 1v2. See, that's what happens, man. You put, you put that in your mouth, you end up like news. Don't be like news. <laughs> no. Jason. Uh oh. Let's see, Nagi oh. goes for the side ticket, hits, but it's not enough. The Executioner not quite hitting with the gusto they needed there. Uh oh, this Double is recovery, bad. still has a recovery though. Oh, perfectly drifts away, catches one of their recoveries. There's some save right there oh. as well, catches it with the recovery, it's not oh, enough. He's, he's sweat beads. he's out. Nagi not able to get the 1v2, and now Kaina Ackerman and Hyper are up 2 0. Oh. oh, man. You can see Hyper taking a sip of that potion. <laughs> I'm feeling pretty good, man. That was these matches are crazy. South America, South America is is, is on it, man. I I don't, I don't know what they're on, but they're on it. <laughs> you know, I I love watching these guys. They they don't have brake pedals. They just go in. Yeah. They just they they put all the gas in. They uh, put in the NASA as well, and they just go. And uh, I mean. Also, very excited to see like the saves from Ina and Hyper. Like that was that was pretty dope. Thing. It's just like funny because it's like you see like I don't know some regions are like playing like NASCAR. Yeah. Other regions are, are playing like Mario Kart, and then South America is just playing Demolition Derby. Like <laughs> just playing Burnout Crash. Like it's just like okay, well, <laughs> and that's a way to race, right? <laughs> they're they're playing Twisted Metal off the PlayStation <laughs> yeah. One. Like. Oh man, Nagi. that's crazy. Hoping that this character is going to be the one as they make the swap to Val for game number three. Hoping they can bring this one to game number five. All right, here we go. Starting off with the team combo right out the gate. And that's what you like to see here. And especially one. Oh, my God. Hold on. News. Cooking up. Okay, cool. <laughs> I was going to say, they don't stop. These team combos aren't stopping. Like, I'm like waiting for a pause, you know, give a little bit of color. And I'm like, ah, oh, no, I don't need to. I don't need to. They just took it. They're doing it all themselves, putting that painting on the board. But Stomp Side Air, News immediately back on stage. Stomp Side Air puts kind of in the off, off stage. There's the recoveries. Oh. There's one from Hyper, and News is gone. Nagi can't save. Okay, and that's what we like to see. And the juggles are coming out from Kaina Ackerman. Hyper using the active frames on the neutralite to be able to catch that dodge. And you can see these guys are always Go. positioning, so they have the opposite Go. teams in the middle. Really good coverage coming out from the blue team. You saw News go high. Nagi covered low with the D-Light. But still, this red team looking a little bit better, a little bit healthier. Nagi, long road, but he gets back to the wall. Okay, push him to the corner here. Goes for the ground pound. Gets caught by the Neutralite as well. Oh, my gosh. 
Hyper and kind of Ackerman are, are really making some stuff happen, but in the same vein, so are News and Nagi, and that should be an edge guard. Yep, you see the sweat piece. That's it for that stock, and now we have a pretty hefty lead for Kiner Ackerman and Hyper, man. And News has just been getting taken out early, game after game. And it's just so unfortunate oh. for this blue oh, team. What? Ice punish from <laughs> Nagi. Oh. The GC downlight to beat out the ground pound? In what world? That's crazy. I wouldn't I would never play with that yeah, fire. Right? I would never play with that fire. That is that is a very risky decision. That is uh throwing batteries in the campfire. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like <laughs> But this is why these are the best players in the world, man. That's why they're here and we're not. That's crazy. Some wild Just players. And your partner. Sure. News has got to be careful, though. Deep red, final stock, does not want to force Nagi to do another 1v2 against this strong South American team. Okay. And just like that, man, I don't know how this game became close again. You know? <laughs> like, yeah. it was not close a second ago, and suddenly it's close. Yo. Boom! Hits him with the bear, and the reduced knockback keeps kind of alive, and now it's a 2v1. Oh. I was talking about how this game was close, and now it's not again. <laughs> Nagi making these risky plays with those side sigs, recovery frames on the back of the sig, plus was doing it gravity canceled, so losing all of their. Uh, oh, if Hyper dies. Oh, okay. Yeah. And we back. Hyper's the target. Not sure okay. a daylight recovery would do it right now. Good patience. Here's the team combo, Oof. but he gets out. Oh, gets both. Recovery, he drops it. Yeah, doesn't get the final blow to get that knockback to send them away, but still good damage here. Now Hyper is that oh, much closer. Man. Oh, what oh, a snap. stuff. Hyper might have died off that. Oh what? my goodness, Nagi, gone. Kinda Ackerman and Hyper gonna close it out 3-0 in commanding fashion to earn their fight against Maxi and Hanabi in the top four. What a gravity cancel sidelight, bro. I gotta get the I gotta get the instant replay of that, man. That was that was absolutely crisp. You know, like I, I, I just the gravity cancel sidelight is an option you see people use off stage, but it's generally pretty rare. You know, especially that far off stage, like right here. Okay. Oh wait, he's ready. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's like oh man, you know, like that's that's tough. That was a great set. Seventeen sigs, Nagi. <laughs> God damn. EU, or sorry, not EU, South America apparently has gotten a memo that the vowels throw out SIGs because every time that you and I have seen vowels on screen, they're just throwing out signatures, double digit SIG use on all the vowels that we got to see today. Uh, but man, some good matches, some fast matches. That was that was quick, but we've got our top four. We've got Power Ranger Lopez. Oh, dang. Wes DB, Maxi Hanabi, and then finally Kaina Ackerman and Hyper for our top four. So you got me messed up. I was sitting here. I was like, man, I can't wait to cast the next set. And yeah, I was here saying, <laughs> oh, yeah, we in the top four, by the way. I'm like, dag, bro. All right. Well, <laughs> guess that's it for us, huh? Yeah, that was, it, was, <laughs> it was some quick sets, some quick matches, some explosive matches, to say the, le uh, the least. But uh, because we're now in the top four, it means we're going to take a short little break. Uh, any final words, Flambo, before we throw to break? All I got to say is make sure that y'all do not leave your seats. We're going to be back with more South America 2v2 action in just a little bit. You don't want to miss it. I'm not going to miss it. I'll be in chat with y'all gooning it out. Catch y'all then. Bye.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. The South American Doubles Autumn Championship is here, and we are in top four. Power Ranger and Lopez, Wesley and DB, Maxi and Hanabi, what? More on that later. Hyper and Kaina, those are the only four teams left in this tournament. And of those four teams, only two of them haven't lost a match yet. And that's the match we're going to be watching right now is Power Ranger and Lopez versus Wesley and DB. Steven, what do you make of this? This, this has been a crazy tournament all across the board. A lot of amazing teams coming up through the ranks here in South America. But man, I am glad to see Power Ranger and Lopez in winner's finals on top. That, for me personally, probably my favorite team to watch. I gotta say. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Well, they're the favorite of everything here. They're number yeah. one seed. Oh. Right? Really? They're number one seed. And then Wesley, I believe, number two seed. So we're really just, the numbers don't lie. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It's yeah. statistics is winning so far. But, <laughs> but I, I'll tell you who's going against statistics is Maxi and Hanavi. What the heck? Yeah. They took out Fiend and Baltazar in round one of top 32. They have continued such domination and even took out Selen and Lazuli. And then, wait, no, 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 no. They took out Page and Yuz. What? They took yeah. out Page and Yuz. They made it into top eight on the winner's side, losing only to Wes and DB. That's exciting. Who are they? Maxi and Hanabi. The first time they've been in the top eight in a doubles tournament, a doubles major, and they're in top four already. Yeah, like That's it's just... majorly impressive. Okay, but this match, let's talk about this match coming up here. A tale as old as time, Power Ranger and Lopez versus Wesley and DB. Uh, I mean, how many times have we seen these guys fight? They are truly the rank one and rank two teams of this, but... We have seen each of them win on different occasions. So anything can happen here. And we're actually about to get into it right now. Power Ranger and Lopez versus Wesley and DB. Again, these are the only two teams that haven't lost a match yet left in the tournament. It's winner's final. Let's do this. Everyone's scrapping it out at the beginning here. But yeah. DB, oh. they're, they're, they're getting the best of them here. Oh, yes, Lopez. Wait, he, oh. Wesley. Oh, no. no. What? what happened? How did that happen? Why? Why How did, did DB it? save him Wait, with a, wait a sec. Oh, oh, my. Back with that? Woo. Oh, my okay. goodness. Okay, a okay. lot happened what there. Even happened it's there? impossible to unpack Man. everything that just Lopez happened there. Lopez almost had an early gimp, but then somehow the whole situation got turned around, and he's the first one to fall. But everybody else is pretty close to being taken out of their first stock. Deep in the red. There Ooh. it is. Okay, now stocks are tied up. Love the Queen Nye combos. I know, and you don't see a lot of people still rocking with the Queen Nye, but Lopez. I mean. Oh, okay, good movement over the side signature from DB. Continuing it going. Whoa. Oh, man. <laughs> okay, Power what Rangers happened? down. Wesley's the only one left with all three of his socks, and Lopez is hurting. This is not a good position for our favorite Queen Nye. Oh, no. For everyone's favorite Queen Nye. Oh, here okay. we go. Team, Team combo, combo time. Oh! oh! Just barely missed it on the outside, but they, get, they did some good damage. DB could lose this stock quickly. I mean, they basically evened oh. up that damage differential. Oh, okay, no. there goes Lopez, the most defensive legend on the field here, down to one stock before anybody else. It doesn't bode well for Power Ranger and Lopez, but you got to believe DB nearing the end oh, of his stock, it? and there it is. Now DB on his final stock. It's Wesley and Power Ranger holding on, the only ones left holding on to their second stock, one from each team. Wesley's looking for a kill on Power Ranger. I mean, you got to take him out. Power Ranger fighting way off, off the side. Oh no, Power Ranger? Okay, he's gonna make it back. He makes it back to this, nice. Throw combo, Lopez. Oh, went in for the neutral signature to finish it off. There, picks it up, but wait! Onto his own teammate! Oh, Lopez no, is in trouble! No. I don't know if he can survive this. He's got such l little bit of speed, but he still manages to make it back. Barely alive, but so is DB in the same position. Oh, Lopez is out. It's all up to Power Ranger. This. 
I know this the cards look really stacked against Power Ranger, but he actually Wait. might be able to finish. If he can take out West DB in the next few seconds. <gasps> that? Oh, oh, no. He really needed that to kill. It would have still been hard if he landed that, oh, but no. it would have been now possible. it's really hard. Now oh, it's impossible. He's man. dead. Okay. Wow. Had that side signature killed, it might have been a very different story at the end of that, but just yeah. barely survived it, and they end up stealing the win there. Holy cow. Dang. That was close. It was close. Wesley and DB ahead. I think they know. They know how close that could have been. They came out on top there. All right. Well, Power Ranger and Lopez, you know, even though this is seed one versus seed two, uh, they do, they trade back and forth. We've, we've seen different, we've seen different uh, results in different tournaments with these exact same players and legends. Yeah, I mean, look at across the board here at the damage and just every number I'm seeing, Lopez was the one who was probably the most stifled in that game. Somehow... DB and Wes were able to mitigate a lot of his potential there. Yeah, it is rare for for Lopez on Queen Nye to go down first. That's for sure. And 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 right from the start was was playing catch up from the beginning. Yeah. When we see Lopez ahead in stocks, that's when real Lopez comes out and he takes all these like insane risks that usually pay off. I mean, he's done some of the craziest initiations and goes for these sigs that like they're hard to land but if he gets them he can kill with it and he he does that i think it'd be a it, it might be a very different story oh. if uh, lopez can get ahead early on man i like that start from db's cannon already oh my gosh gets them both in the combo west came in to Ooh. pick up but accidentally dealt out some team damage but power range yeah. is so heavily damaged on this first stock it's so fast that this damage has happened it's been less than 20 seconds he's yeah just about blown up weapon knocked out of his hand trying to make it back through this taros oh nice turnaround he picks up the weapon but oh uh -oh. heads up weapon throw from db uh -oh. blast on the other side of the stage can he even get back yes oh no, no! power ranger was just trying to stay alive <laughs> yeah. for so long Lopez is down there, but he was like, I'm unarmed. I really don't have much, yeah, and Lopez there he goes is done. as well. He knows it. He down aired over. He, he went and ended himself even faster just to get back to the stage in time. Power, so Power Ranger doesn't get caught up in a 1v2 alone. Oh, my gosh. DB just, like, free-flowing with his cannon. Everywhere he goes, yeah. he's finding good He's damage. got that jazzy cannon, you know? He's got that freestyle. Yeah, you know, you, some, there's, there's the cannon flow chart that you see, and then there's this. You got... I don't know, all kinds of improv. He's making his own meta. And who and who could argue it's working? Oh man, Lopez in oh. trouble. Oh <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, I mean, Lopez is down out. to one stock. Yep. And DB still has three. This is oh, just okay. bad no news. No way DB okay, can make well, it back from yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, okay, all right. He's, go. he's got two now, but. Oh, here we go. Oh, oh he really barely, needed that. Yeah, just barely outside the that range of that downlight. That would have been so good. It made sense too. That was like that was sweet. That dude did the downlight off the dribble from the unarmed ground pound. It makes sense. But he bounced a little too high, out of reach. Oh nice. Woo, woo, Synergy oh. there. Okay. They're whittling away at these stocks. They need to get another still team. DB. Big team combo here. Yeah, still DB is like, oh, yes. oh, oh that power would Ranger. Hit away. That would have been insane. Yeah. Dude. Well, they're working on this comeback though. Yeah, this is Power still Ranger and Lopez. This is way more possible. They're really pulling it together on this final stock. Okay, working as a team. Cutting their way across, trying to get the positioning for these team combos. Oh, Power Barely. Ranger. Yeah, he really wants those. Oh, Our DB, this might be. No. Oh, DB's still alive. No, wait. He, okay. I think he could have survived there, but he wanted to end his stock yes, sooner. perfect. To prevent what? exactly this, so that Wesley wouldn't have oh. to be alone fighting. And Wesley gets the chase dodge Damn. off of his teammate. His teammate but it's so nice that he was there and available to get chase dodged on. Okay, oh, Lopez. Wesley's in trouble. 1v1. DB That's tries to break it up. DB. He's trying to save he, his teammate. He can't mm. get there in time. No. Mm. Taken out. Now down into 1v2. DB. Can he pull this off? It's a winnable 1v2. Oh, nice. But Haymaker it's still going to be through. tough. Even though the damage is so much on DB's side here, we've seen the 2v2 oh, combos. There it is. Oh, What's my not enough goodness. damage. This, okay, wait, can they, oh, uh, Lopez just barely misses the down. Oh picks up the neutral sink. Yes, <laughs> way to pull it together at the end. Woo. That was a comeback and a half, dude. That was crazy, Power Ranger and Lopez. Now tying up the set, 1-1. One, one. Who would have thought, if you rewound the clock 30 seconds, you did not think that was winnable. But somehow, <laughs> right. they changed it they all. They brought it back.
Okay. Man. Man. Love that combo. It was Love the synergy the at the end. They just started playing off each other so well. Yeah. They, they got so much damage. They, they were able to DB their basically, teammates their Yeah, he didn't stop. get a single hit in during that 1v2. They just did not allow it. So okay. here we go. Game three, the set is tied up one to oh, one. Yeah. Now we know that both of these teams are equally capable of taking this set. Now we got to wonder, I was gonna how's say. the set going to go? This. What's the script say? ODB nice. Gets both of them with that down air. And again, Power Ranger. Uh -oh. Oh. Close to getting blown up on his first stock. Mm. Lopez managed to escape. Oh my goodness. What, Lopez without a weapon, just desperately searching for a weapon here. Okay, he's got the guitars now. He can get some real business done. Oh, Whoa. What insane he went, read. Yeah, he was <laughs> really trying to call out a dodge in from DV there. Oh, wait, what, <gasps> what a save! Oh, what a save! A double save! save. Oh! Oh! How'd he do that? That was amazing! Holy cow, we need super slow-mo on that just to comprehend. My ears perked up like a bloodhound when I heard that clink of the yeah. axe. I was like, wait a second. He saved his teammate still? so intentionally. He saved his teammate in the most spectacular way. That was truly fantastic. And maybe saved himself, too. Oh, my goodness. Power Ranger is some kind of beast. And then they, they were chase dodging off each other to make it back yeah, to the yeah. stage. And it all worked according to plan. I mean, that was just incredible. But after all that, we're still down to an even game. Everybody with two stocks. Oh, Power Ranger oh, no. off stage. He might be in trouble here with Wesley edge guarding him. Wesley, Wesley still keeping up the pressure, but Power Ranger resets his jumps and makes it back to the stage. No problem. For now. No problem for now. Oh, Lopez looking for the edge guard on DB. He oh, got, he got him. Yeah. DB, Dunzo. Okay, now with a slight lead, Lopez and Power Ranger, can they push this? Whoa, oh, whoa, inside <laughs> the hitbox? That's a brave spot dodge. And now Power Ranger down, uh-oh. Blue team down to their final stocks. Meanwhile, Wesley on the red team has still has two. He's the only one left with more than one stock remaining. That gives him a unique opportunity to put on some pressure here. Oh, whoa, <laughs> I like whoa, the, whoa. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. That was like a little drum beat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like the way he positioned for that, but cost of his stock. Nice neutral signature from Lopez. Oh, no. Caught out with the whip. Now off the side of the stage. Can he make it back? Oh, he gets batted off once more. Has to try and oh, touch. Oh, Lopez That's is it. in trouble. He's in trouble. Power Ranger knows it. He's coming to save oh, him. He nice. gives him the chase okay. dodge. Oh. Lopez still gets caught by DBs. Oh, oh, whoa, 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 too spicy. I don't know. That uh, was spicy. Oh, Woo! gosh. Wow. We're going to have to blur. You find that one hard to watch? Yeah, we're going to have to blur the end here. of that match on the rebroadcast. Yeah, There's are no we allowed we to show, show something again. like that? Jeez. Okay, well, let's get the replay anyway, you know? Oh, wow. Okay, DB and West taking game three. Now ahead in the set, 2-1. Woo. Wait, what are we rewinding? Oh, this is the hit. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Power Rangers like, boom, not boom, today. What Caught a him. save. Lopez was definitely going to die from that. And then another help. Juggled. These guys are are crazy. That was so pro. And then Lopez is like, I'll take it. I'll yeah. take it. That is a that is a worthwhile trade. Holy cow. So pro from Power Ranger. Oh, but then this. Then these guys turn around and do this. That's so pro. <laughs> Or just, just yeah. some real pros fighting here today, both <laughs> on both sides. And even though like, you look at wow. DB and West, and like they did way more damage than the other team, but Dude. it was still so close. Power Rangers uh, accuracy for signatures, he really picks the right times to use them. He's like yeah. 40 to 50 percent. That's pretty high. That is. That's very high. Yeah. Oh, man. Power Ranger already in orange here. Less than 10 seconds. He's down to orange. Oh, nice but turnaround, wait, though, with Edgar. Oh, we can just, oh Wesley. Wesley saved DB. Dang. Wes actually saved DB. That was pro. That oh, was wait, so is clutch. Is he going to live? OK, he does. He makes it just barely That was a good side. He, he used his options really well to go around the bottom of that. Yeah, no, Holy cow. Ranger. Wesley oh. saved DB in the most spectacular way. Just, just that one tiny interruption. You saw Lopez like setting up for the big kill there.
Oh, wait a second. I, it almost it almost got by me. But Eagle Eyes Photo over here noticed that Lopez changed his character oh. off of Queen Nye. <laughs> yeah. What's up with that, though? Dude, What's yeah. up with that? That Queen Nye was... <gasps> oh, what a save from Power Ranger. Dude. That was... That Dude, was Power cool. Ranger, he's, he's the best. That's why he's playing the, like, angel character. You know, the Valkyrie. <laughs> yeah. He saves people. He saves people. This that is, is very Valkyrie. He's playing support like. role. Okay. Yeah, Lopez somehow. I mean, uh, okay. yeah, you he, can't argue with the switch. The he character extended switch that first time. He's doing yeah. so well on this new character. Oop, oh, just barely caught the corner there and bounced off the stage DB, staying alive on that second stock, but maybe not for much longer. Loses his weapon now, clapped off the left side. Now Wesley's alone and he's being awfully careful Woo! about, well, for good reason. Yeah, he well. should have been. Maybe a little more careful would have been good. <laughs> <laughs> it's only, yeah, there's only so many places you can stand. Oh no! Okay, taking out Power Ranger. Also down to his final stock. This is a close one, but Lopez. Yeah. Re oh no! Hey, Lopez is like a he, full but if he stock gets ahead. Taken out, oh, nice dodge! That was a I good was dodge say. because that could have been a really early stock for Wesley there, if not. Yeah, that could be his only downfall. He's got himself a lead and has a chance to work with it. Oop, I can't avoid those pedals and the wheel. Lopez now in kill range, but only on his second stock. And he's scoring KOs. It's all oh, Lopez. Whoa, oh, my oh, gosh. Whoa, it's whoa, all whoa, Lopez. Whoa, whoa, gosh. Woo. A violent end to that <laughs> game four. Now we're tied up. Game five. Who would have thunk it? Really? So oh, evenly matched. Yes. Yeah, it's I've been keeping game track. Five. I've been keeping track almost this whole set. Game and five. <laughs> And I'm telling you, it's a close one. It's a nail biter. This decides who makes it into grand finals, winner side. That that's means, huge. That's guaranteed that's, that's, top two. It's guaranteed. Yeah. That's. It's so that's good. That's guaranteed thousands Ooh, of dollars. Lopez at the end, he just he saw the finish line and it gave him that second win, and you could tell he really started sprinting. And he blasted right through. Okay, man. Amazing. And he, oh, look at that. Lopez, 100% signature usage, and you saw it at the end. Oh, you saw that signature. That's the one. That Stick was an in important your one. Yeah, that stage, was an important gravity one. Gravity cancel neutral signature from Taros's axe. If you're going to use one signature to decide a match, that's the one to do it. Okay, <laughs> let's see if the whole set comes down to such a pivotal moment. Mm, it's, we're really, we, yeah. the stage is set for an incredible finish here in winner's final. They're down to game five, and we've got two extremely evenly matched teams that have gone back and forth in such incredible ways. Who's going to finish it? Well, stage banning is still in place, and Wesley has to decide. Okay, he got rid of Shipwreck Fall. So now we're going to Mammoth Fortress, as determined by Power Ranger and Lopez with the maps that were available to them. Ladies and gentlemen, game five. Game five. Oh, Lopez snatches the weapon away from Wesley. We've already got started here with the double axe, but they don't care. Oh my goodness, DB and Wesley absolutely don't care how many weapons they have. They got so much damage out while at a weapon disadvantage. No problem. Whoa! Oh, whoa. whoa, Wesley, whoa, You had to be whoa, worried about that. <laughs> Game five, you do that in the first stock? They're, they're just letting them know what they're capable of, <laughs> what they're willing to do, <laughs> yeah. you know? And now Lopez is going to think about that. Now <laughs> Lopez is going to know. Whoa, whoa. whoa. whoa oh, mean? that was a great, that's a great example of like when it's worthwhile to hit your teammate yeah, yeah, because yeah. of the reduced damage and knockback that happens. That was the perfect time. Oh, nice uh, swap. Power Ranger and Lopez. That was a really great team combo. And now Lopez, Lopez what? him down. Okay, okay, they both somehow survive. Okay. But Power Ranger oh. picks up the edge guard on the other side of the field. But is he going to make it back? Okay, Lopez. Nice. Oh, that leaves the pressure. Yeah. I was really worried for Lopez there, chasing DV underneath the stage. I loved like, it. I, I, loved I love that it happened, but when he got hit by the recovery, I was like, oh, no, don't die for this aggressive chase no, down. They both knew when to, <laughs> they're like, all right, all, all right. right we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll go our separate ways here underneath the stage. We'll, now. we'll pick this up later. <laughs> so Wesley still got three stocks. Somehow. But conversely there, DV is close to death on his second stock. Uh-oh, there goes Wesley. DV might be soon to follow. Oh, Without a weapon, okay, he's he got a double axe oh, chasing him man. down. Lopez scores the KO and now Power Ranger and Lopez have a pretty significant lead especially when you consider that this is game five and there are no second chances in this winner's final oh, 
blasted. Wow, that was Ooh. a nice little combo from DB and Wes. You wouldn't expect that there. The down sig what? to uh, Lopez. <laughs> it's like he's really he had to use every single option to try to get around both DB and Wes. Taking <laughs> turns trying to edge power. He makes it back it. on top of the stage. This second stock of his is precious. DB and Wes, that, this could be an incredible comeback. They could score a double KO here, and then and then they'll suddenly be winning. It's like they're That's the true. lead for Power Ranger and Lopez is deceptive right now. They're they're both in red. Meanwhile, DB, at least he's healthy on this final stock here. Oh, there goes Power oh, Ranger. Oh, oh you they've exactly done what it. Said. Double they've KO. Done it. Yeah, they did. And DB, I mean, DB did a great job not taking any damage while on his final stock. Uh, he avoided so much. And that has put them in a really winning position here as Wesley oh, he picks is up the both only them. one. Oh my goodness, they've done so much damage on Power Ranger here. Oh, Wesley finally down to his final stock. DB's got to be careful while his teammate's oh gone. My, blown oh, up, completely no. obliterated now. That's all it took was four seconds without his teammate and they scored the KO. But now Power Ranger and Lopez, even though they're in the 1v2 here on this two side of a 2v1, that's really good for them, but they're both very damaged and they both could go down to a player as good as Wesley. But oh man, they don't seem to be letting oh, up at oh all. Oh my gosh, swinging wow. away. Wesley. Lopez trying to close this out. He doesn't have any weapons. This is just a bad spot for him to be in. <laughs> oh, there's a weapon. No, Power Ranger is going to maintain weapon control. This is looking pretty hopeless for Wesley. But could he do it? You got to believe. He's got the axe now. Oh, oh wait! Okay. Wait a second! Anybody's game! This Anybody's game! Final. Oh, oh, Wesley! Unbelievable! Unbelievable! Wesley in the craziest 1v2 comeback has overcome Power Ranger and Lopez and will be moving on to Grand Final. Unbelievable. Whoo! That was crazy. Oh, and here was the He big... actually did it. The madman actually did it. Man, that 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 is one of the closest sets Boom. I have ever seen. Coming down to game five, and game five having this many swings happen just in one That's single game. That's so clutch. How is Wesley feeling right now? You gotta be on top of the world with a play like that, dude. Ooh, Ooh. man. That was the stats are incredibly even across the board, except accuracy. Don't worry about accuracy. Okay, really even across the board. <laughs> Man, that is incredible. Wes. Okay. Wesley. Well. Holy cow. There you have it. Wesley and DB wind up it in was, grand finals. It was really looking like it was in Power Ranger and Lopez's hands there. They had it. Yeah. And it just slipped right through their fingers. But don't worry. If you're a Power Ranger and Lopez fan, you just get more matches with them. That's Because they go point. down to the yeah. lower bracket. You're actually just you're, you're well you know? off as a result. So got to be optimistic sometimes. <laughs> we just get more matches. It's a double elimination tournament, so they're knocked out, not knocked out quite yet. But they're down in the loser's final. Yeah. Waiting for the winner of this next match. And this next match is definitely going to be a spicy one here. As we've got Hyper and Kaina Ackerman. We watched their matches earlier. It was insane. We know how good these players are. Uh, especially Kaina Ackerman in recent times has really been taken off. Yeah. But then you've got Maxi and Hanabi who I'm pretty sure have not been in top eight of a major tournament ever. And now they're here in top four with the breakout performance, a, a tournament of a lifetime for these two, and who knows how much farther they can take it. They're going to have to make it over Hyper and Kaina Ackerman. I think it's going to be tough. I casted Hyper and Kaina Ackerman's matches earlier and was just blown away by how good they were playing. I'd be so surprised if Maxi and Hanabi could take them out. But then again, these are the guys that took out Fiend and Balthazar. So... Instant respect. Right, right, Instant right. Respect. Yeah, you, that, that that actually does a lot for their reputation. <laughs> yeah, you know? honestly, their street cred it, it, it yeah. boosts you up quite a bit. Uh, yeah, truly, truly. So these two teams are facing up against each other, and I have no idea how this could go. I mean, I think the favorites out for everybody is kind of Ackerman and Hyper. I mean, look at this. This zero dollars. This is truly, yeah. You've never made it in top hey, eight. They're officially pros. They're going pro today. This is this is the day that they go pro. This is the day where they they're earn, already in the money. They earn dollars in a major tournament off of Brahalla here. They're all they've already done it, big time in the money. These two. Yeah. But they got. They, who knows how much farther they can go? I mean, 
they've already Ooh, broken all this their expectations. Is, dude, this, they, this got spicy at character select. You haven't even seen it yet. <laughs> this is like, this is this is awesome. I'm so ready for Steve, this. Steven's really dude, excited now. Yeah. Yeah, Hanabi and Maxley actually won my hearts at character select. Can you believe it? Oh, it looks like... Oh, this is this is just a quick little. Oh, I see. This, this is just a quick little button, real, button check. They're doing quick a button, button check. check. Oh, we I got all excited over a button check. They're can, not gonna play these characters. But if they do, though, There's what no if they way. do? I, ah, they're taunting I, me. You never know. You never know. Yeah, well, I was excited, but I'm still excited just a for quick this matchup. Little, quick little button check, lag test. You know, in a, in an offline tournament, you got to do button tests, right? Because yeah. everybody's got different controls, and it's just crazy every so much customization goes in at character select of a of an in-person tournament online uh, you, we probably know your buttons are correct but a lag test that's not bad maybe we just need to do a quick little lag test networking is crazy the internet is a miracle it's right it's a it's crazy that any of this is working it's just, <laughs> let's all just be amazed that it's all working <laughs> right now so okay will maxi and hanabi pick the same legends that would be great. Did they did they tease Steven or not? Yeah, they faked me out. They, yeah. <laughs> I'm ready to be still excited. But we could only hope. I think they have a responsibility now to pick those legends. To you, to Steven. I mean, <laughs> let's it let's be, be real. Good. Come on. Come on, guys. Don't do this to Steven. Let's see. We are waiting with faded breath on who they're going to pick here in the loser semifinal. What's it gonna be? Hanabi, Maxi, we're waiting. Now as the, the rules state that the higher seed gets to pick last. But Kaina Ackerman does not care about showing which legend he's going to play. I'm going with Bovar no matter what happens here. But Hanabi and Maxi should be swapping their legends first. Instead, Maxi is swapping his avatars. That is not helpful. <laughs> play by play <laughs> on the avatar swap. Yeah, let's really let everybody know what's happening here. Oh, man. I am desperate to know who they're going to pick. How much longer are they going to make us wait? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Heartbreak setting Dang. in as yep. Steven All realizes right. okay. that it was just button check characters. Oh, no. Oh, no. Wow, double oh, no. Brin? Double Brin. We thought, we thought, we thought Jiro. Yeah. No. Double no. Brin. Double brand. Is it going to be double Bode Bar? Yeah. Wow. A real classic. What is this? A real Brahala classic. <laughs> what year is it? 2016? That uh, that checks out. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy how, I mean, this is a meta that's developed over six years, but the game changes constantly, right? right. I mean, every every couple of weeks, uh, you got different balance. Yeah. But double Bode Bar and double brand will never not be good. I guess. You know? Or, you know, and we'll never say never, but... If anyone but. says his power creep, I'll just point to, like, why is Bobar <laughs> in every tournament? <laughs> he's the first, he's number one on the menu. He's the Big Mac of Rahala. He's <laughs> the main staple. But, again... So it's, a, it's Trilly versus the Ten of Legends here, if we're going by clans. And here we go. Loser semifinal. These players are all in top four of this tournament. But this is an elimination round. Whoever loses this match is out of the tournament in fourth place. Whoever wins will go up to face Power Ranger and Lopez in the loser's final. Who's it going to be? This is, the, this is a battle for the podium. Podium's a big deal. Top eight? Top eight's a big deal. Podium is a bigger deal by a significant factor. Oh, Maxi makes it back through Hyper's edge guard. Well done. Yeah, somehow Hyper has like barely even been hit on this first stock. Oh, that is crazy, especially when his teammate Kaina, who whoa, whoa, whoa get out of the way, Kaina, the axe. Yeah, that was a good one, avoiding the axe. Okay, Hanabi gets blasted away. Maxi might might not be long to follow here. There he goes. Ooh, oh, oh to, he was ready for it. <laughs> yeah, they tried to like ladder themselves up a little. He was down totally combo. ready for that. That's pretty cool. He didn't land it, but he was ready. It would have looked awesome. Would have looked awesome. That's the kind of moments I live for. <laughs> Hyper is the only one left yeah, with all three of his on. stocks. How much can he? How much further can he push this lead here? Nice punish from Kaina onto Maxi. Oh, Hanabi's in trouble here. Wow, that could have been way worse for Hanabi as he grab with the gravity cancel signature. That is uh, three seconds no dodge. 
could get killed. Oh, that all the nice time. punish by Hanabi. That will take out the first stock finally for yeah. Hyper. But just after oh, that, Kaina no. Ackerman goes down to his final stock. He's it's first so one there. impressive that Hyper held on to that first stock for so long, but then completely neutralized by Kaina loot going down to a first stock before anybody else. And now the damage and stocks are extremely even here. Maxi hurting a little bit more than Hyper is, and they're keeping it going here. Hyper chasing Maxi down. Is Maxi going to survive much longer here? Hyper looking for the KO. He oh, won yes, a save! Hanabi's Hanabi! Oh my goodness! Yeah, just a, that, that was like the friendliest poke ever. Like, hey, boop! Ooh, get out of there. <laughs> uh, just try to, help my, gotcha. try to help my friend out. <laughs> Oh, oh no. hey, whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa was, bro. Wait Abby. a second. Was that a worth, friendly maybe? fire alley oop? I, it's just no one could predict that. Maybe that worth, happen. maybe worth. They've got the 2v1 now. Probably just down to worth. Hyper. That's not going to KO yet off the left side. Okay, Hanabi needs to. Okay, down air connects. Double can, edge guard. No, no. There we go. All right, all right. Easy can easy. Hyper win a straight 1v2 clean against Hanabi know. and Maxi? Let's see. Do they have some cool zero to death? 2v1 combo. I'm ready to see it. Oh, they're, setting up for, they're setting up for one. They've been practicing. Yeah, they do look like they're setting up for one. Especially, they're playing. Oh. They're both oh. playing the same characters, and being on different weapons is another good indicator of do we want a 2v1 combo right now? Because if you're using the same weapons, exactly, it's harder to get the 2v1 combo without DI becoming a factor. Here we go. The finish. Oh, oh. man. Just barely oh. slips below. Oh, oh, man. All right, they won, but it's okay. less satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That would have been an incredible, with the down sig, I was thinking side sig's the safe one. That's the easiest one to land. Down sig would have been the, by far the most stylish option. It was, he it went was, for yeah. it. He was definitely playing for the highlight reel there. Now, unfortunately, we got a highlight of his mistake. Let's, <laughs> let's take a look. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm yeah, sure they feel awful about winning this game no, like uh, that. No, no, no. Yeah, we yeah. skipped it. Okay, no highlight. Forget about it. <laughs> Don't worry about the highlights. <laughs> okay. Man. Maxi out DPSing everybody. Top DPS. Oh, yeah, that's true. There we go. Maxi Hanabi still, I don't know, kicking butt in this tournament. Can't be stopped. This is incredible. Who are Maxi and Hanabi? What a breakout performance. This is their first top eight ever. Can we bring up their stats again, just to make a point? They have zero earnings. Zero, they have zero a lot of things. <laughs> just to make a but point. But they're in top four. Show all their zeros? Yeah, let's you... show all their zeros to everybody. <laughs> well, it, it makes, it's not to dig on them. It's, it's right. to, it, just to really put in spotlight how incredible of a breakout performance this is. These guys are it, essentially from out of nowhere. I know, and we're like three quarters of the way through the year, and still we're finding new breakout talent in all these different regions. It's awesome. This My goodness. Crazy. All right, Kaina resetting his router and modem. We'll blame the loss on that. It was lag. <laughs> lag. I lagged. Yeah. But hey, it can happen. Let you know, like we were saying, the internet's crazy. Oh, oh we got the stats. We got the stats. Okay, these are all the zeros I wanted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Top 12 places. So you can see. see they broke got, in the top 12. No, top 32. That's 32. It's very small. Oh, dude, you got to I need glasses. <laughs> oh, no. This is where I find this out is I need the glasses. Moment. This is the moment. What the heck? finds out he needs glasses. <laughs> that looks like a 12 to me. <laughs> this is top 32. So, okay, well. so, I mean, that shows <laughs> that they've been competing a long time and they've been on the fringe, right? The fringe of top eight. And they've always gone down. When it, come, when it came down to top 12, they couldn't ever break out in the top eight. Finally, they've done it. They've broken out in the top eight. But now it's looking like they're going to go all the way. They have the lead over Hyper and Kaina Ackerman. If they win this, they're on the podium. That's incredible. And especially over Hyper and Kaina Ackerman, who even though those stats might not like blow you away because of their stats, you have to consider that all of that has been in the past year. Kind of Ackerman right, and Hyper right. have been very recent, but their domination has been clear. We know how good they are based on the last two tournaments that they've been in. Uh, for Maxi and Hanabi to win this would be an incredible upset. Uh, and, and so far it's looking, we already know they're capable. They won game one. And at this point, you know, they've beaten Fiend and Baltazar, and as you guys know, my favorite team. Right, right. Very biased, totally biased, my favorite team. <laughs> uh, and they defeated them. So the least they can do now is make podium. I mean, if you're going to take out the boys, Fiend and Balthazar, 
right. at least get the podium. That'd be nice. Out of respect for them. Out of respect. You got to get the medal. <laughs> out of respect. Come on. <laughs> we'll you see. We'll see. Because Hyper and Kyna Ackerman are an incredible team. And uh, Yeah, and they've been so consistent. Like you were saying, yeah. they burst out of the scene basically this past year, but every single time they're, they're you know, we're seeing them on stream. They're competing, they're in the yeah, money. Yeah, and pretty much every match they've played that wasn't against Power Ranger and Lopez, they 3-0'd. Yeah. And even their <laughs> match against Power Ranger and Lopez was a 3-0, just in the wrong direction. But yeah, oops. 3 O's. All that's all they know, apparently. That's the consistency I'm talking about. Oh, no, no, no. They lost one against Brujo and Zito Keijo. Okay. All right. My bad. One. They lost one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll forgive them for that. One game. You're right. In the top 32, that's actually really impressive. Hmm. All right. So we're still, <clears throat> we're still waiting. It looks like Kana Ackerman's back, but now we're waiting on Hanabi? These guys are crazy. Well, they do get – each team gets five minutes. So Kana used up some of his five minutes, <laughs> and now Hanabi's using up their, some of their five minutes. And we're just waiting. Uh, what do we do now? Do you want to play rock, paper, scissors? All right. On, on well, shoot, wait, is right? it best of three or what? Uh, yeah, let's do a best of three. Okay. On shoot. All okay. Right. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Ooh, okay. Ah, all right, I'm down one. This is, this is game point here for Steven. All right. What? I, I got two owed. Oh my gosh. I know. I'm sorry. How do you have the reads on me so hard, dude? <laughs> yeah, I I don't know. That's I've right. been pretty good at rock, paper, scissors. <gasps> Wait a second. Did we actually influence this? <laughs> There's no way. You rock, gotta paper, scissors? You gotta cut to the lobby. Did you say scissors? You gotta cut to the wait, wait, lobby. Shut the lobby. If you, oh, no. Wait, this, is, oh. this is me losing. Oh, no. I have to watch myself losing in slow mo. I've never looked more serious in my life. You I are cannot so believe. prepared. Well, this you, is me I slowly mean. letting everybody know what's at stake. Okay. Boom. In sync. Two. Wow. Three. <laughs> Shoot. Oh, rip. Photo loses. Look how long it takes me to look <laughs> to notice that I lost. <laughs> it took Someone me a, destroyed it that. It took footage. me a long time to notice Someone, that I lost. I look so, okay, what we were freaking yeah. out about was that Hanabi went and selected a Suri with the yeah. scissors. That means they're watching the stream. Yeah, they're watching the stream, <laughs> but not readying up. Why? Are, what, what, we're being trolled. Oh, we're being trolled man. by everybody. Kind of Ackerman, Hanabi, the production team. We're just being <laughs> trolled now. I but know. you know what? We're on stream. We can say anything we want. <laughs> when I I have to say is good luck competitors <laughs> you guys are doing great <laughs> what do you want to say you can say anything right now what do you want to say <laughs> i agree <laughs> good luck well said well said that's that's wonderful man okay rematch me bro Ah, oh, dude, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh Be a best gosh. of three of best of three. Uh -huh. this, is, this is a double elimination <laughs> tournament? <laughs> <a> double elimination. <laughs> You're about to, okay, 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 okay. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. What? I know, I know, Okay, I know. okay. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Okay, wait, we have a shot here. <laughs> Game three. No! <laughs> yes. Oh, man. I'm throwing out too much scissors, guys. Oh, we two. champion. Oh, what? Yes. Oh, that's me. <laughs> I did it. I'd like to thank, uh, I'd like to thank, uh, 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 you know, Milton Elementary School in Vermont. <laughs> they never had left-handed scissors, so I always had to grow up ambidextrous. I had to use both that's sides That's why he's scissors. not throwing out any scissors. Yeah, I, I know my way around Dude, scissors Dude, you're so now. passive parry, honestly. What? <laughs> Dude, come throwing, on. out, throwing out rock all day just because it works frame one? Okay. You think what? about it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Rock has super armor on frame one. Yeah. <laughs> People don't realize the deep meta of rock, paper, scissors. All right, but. guys. So, look, we want to see the rest of this match play yeah. out. Players are working on some technical difficulties. We ask that you please bear with us here as we continue to wait on technical difficulties. We're going to take a quick two-minute break, and hopefully conditions have improved since then because we don't want to see a forfeit this late on in the bracket. So be right back. we got more action coming up for you soon.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Losers semifinals. We're still in it, and these players are ready to go. So let's get right into it here. It's Maxi and Hanabi versus Hyper and Kaina Ackerman. The set, is, the set count is currently 1-0 in favor of Maxi and Hanabi uh, in an incredibly close game that we just finished watching. And now we're finally getting into the next one here. Had some technical problems. Thank you for bearing with us as our... We want to make sure the players are playing at the best of their ability, right? It's it's worth it. Right. We, we, we will wait a little bit for these players in top four. That just makes sense. So here we go. On to the next one. Hyper and Kaina Ackerman still going with the double bow bar versus Hanabi and Maxi going in with the double Bryn once again. Let's see if anything changes this time. I mean, Hyper and Kaina were kind of close. Now, that was... <laughs> The first time was an They accident. were hyper close. <laughs> <laughs> whoa! Oh, whoa, Hanabi and Maxi. Nice 2v1 combo to start things off. They are edging out a little bit in damage, but still first stock yet to be decided. Yeah, I can barely tell which direction it's going to go right now. Maxi's the healthiest on the field, but only by just a little bit. Hyper gets a nice little combo on him. Oh, no, a friendly fire. Wait a second. Okay, all right. Whoa, relax. Everything's fine. Kinda Ackerman, the most damaged on the field. Keep your eye on Kinda here. He doesn't even have a weapon, but he avoids the killing blow, snatches the weapon. Meanwhile, his teammates get taken out by Hanabi. And now Kinda fighting both. Oh, what okay. the heck? He's going against both of them oh. off stage. What a beast. He almost got both of them. Oh, he's positioned again. Another Edgar opportunity. Yes, slap again. down. Oh, nice. Man, he's dashing off with those sword down airs and it's paying off. And now Kaina is the only one left. He was he was the most damaged at the start of the game. Now he's the only one left with all three of his stocks. And that is no longer a true statement as he died as soon as I said that. I'm sorry. I feel like I influenced that from happening. Yeah, that was Got to be careful fault. what energy you put out in the universe. Right, you know? right. <laughs> you did that. Oh, Whoa, hyper. hyper. Nice pickup. What the heck? Yeah, it's like, cancel. Wait, what kind side? of follow-up are you going to go for there? That was just... That was... Uh -oh. Quick thinking. Ooh, makes it back somehow. Okay. Yeah, that was dangerous. It looked like Hanabi was about to take him out. <gasps> Uh-oh. He has no dodge. Hanabi knows it. He's going deep. Hyper finally rearmed here. He's taking so much damage so fast. Oh, wow. Perfect Kinda. punish yeah. for Kaina. Oh, Ooh, my God. Two he, stocks up now. Yeah, okay, really, okay, really okay. made him pay for taking his teammate's stock there. He didn't end, And the worst part is he didn't end up taking the stock either. It was just damage. Okay, Hyper goes down. Kaina's got more room to mess with, though, here. Ooh, maybe, 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 Woo. but he's got tore apart a little bit there. He got a lot of damage put on him by both blue team members now. He needs to be the holdout for his team, and Hanabi in trouble on his final stock. He get taken out. Wow, Maxi. Maxi's going hard. Hyper's in trouble. Maxi could finish him off oh, right wait. here, but Kaina with an amazing save. Yeah, and a nice dodge to boot. Oh, oh there goes up, Hanabi. Maxi. It's a 2v1 for Maxi. Uh -oh. And wait a second. Oh, nice. Oh, the big <laughs> nice, save. Nice, nice. What a save. Oh, man. Maxi's got to be frustrated with that save there. I mean, it was already oh. looking to. Oh, well, okay. you know, if you. That kind of evens out for the yeah, save. Yeah, if he can give it, he can take it away. I mean, that's fair. But Maxi goes down, and now the set count is one to one. Is kind of Ackerman and Hyper take the victory there? Okay. But man, nice. it was close. This set is really looking like it can go either way. Yeah, I'm glad that we're gonna see another close set here. It's not gonna be another blowout like in the rock paper scissors game. Oh, we I can't even argue <laughs> because he's right. <laughs> But this seems like it's going to be a close set. We're already tied up 1-1. One, one. Not over yet. It's going to be best of five. So we still have a couple of other games to decide this. All right. Can we divine anything from the tea leaves here in these numbers? Mm. Are you seeing anything? Just seeing numbers, man. Just oh, seeing some man. math. I wish there were shapes. I wish there were colors. <laughs> Something else to help me. <laughs> well, what we know is kind of Ackerman is dealing. He's, he's top DPS, you know? That's true. Top DPS. That's an important highlight there. So look out for Most him. attacks and most damage. His attacks are meaningful. That's They're what landing. We, that's what we learned through those numbers there. And we saw it with a hot star. He just punched his way across the whole field. Hasn't picked up a weapon yet, but probably dealt the most damage until Hanabi and Maxi pick up these axes. Wow! Oh, man. 
the duality of their signatures, you know? It really comes across in both of the teammates of Maxi and Hanabi. Holy cow, they're really farming out signatures. They're, the end screen, those ends. Whoa, wow, the double weapon throw. throw! It wasn't okay. even enough! Yeah, it was almost enough. Hyper, Hyper he was barely. like, he's like Neo in the Matrix, dude. <laughs> he's, he's dodging these. Oh, nice! Alley-oop kind of picks up the KO off the setup from Hyper. It wasn't that kind of an alley-oop. It yeah. was an alley-oop. <laughs> I'm joking. That was that was funny, right? All right. <laughs> Everybody's laughing. It was funny. Up, that's how you can tell. Oh All wait! Wow. Chat. Hyper committed to the outside oh, lane. Oh, Kaido is such a good oh. edge guard. Oh my goodness! There's wait. nothing. Hanabi. Oh, Hanabi's. No. He's gonna die for this. He is. Yeah. yeah. He is, he is, oh, he is. that's unfortunate. Wow. The, saving him seemed pretty fruitless from the start, man. He really went deep for it and then took the ultimate punishment. The, the worst part about it was that he was barely damaged on that stock when he lost it. So it's yeah. a really, really big loss for them. Yeah. And now Hyper and Kaina have a huge, huge, huge lead. Wait, but they, you know, Hanabi and Maxi whittled away. They got that uh, second stock off of Kaina. And now it's just Hyper they're worried about. Or maybe you focus down Kaina. Okay, wait, Hyper off on the side of the stage. Maxi trying to decide. Oh, yes! Nice pump fake. Gets a side air. Closes out that stock. Now it's Hanabi. Has to really, I don't know, not get hit. Really, that's 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 the game plan. Don't get hit. Don't you get can't hit. lose if you don't get hit. That's, that, that's a that's fact. That's true. That is a fact. <laughs> oh, boy. But he got hit. He got hit. Now he's taken we out. Really, we really gave him the strategy Woo. straight up. Oh, somehow slips low underneath that if side. If Maxi there, comes back from this, holy cow. If Maxi comes oh, back from this, yeah. everything's different. Everything changes. Wait. Okay, there's no way. Even now? There's no way. What? Okay, just the fact nice. that he touched the stage again was impressive. <laughs> but easily handled there at the end. Hyper and kind of Ackerman look like they're ready to just move yeah. on to Losers Finals, but I don't know. Well, We're not over. It's not over yet. Just one more game and they'll move on. The set count is now two to one in favor of Kaina and Hyper. And I think a lot of that really comes down to the misplay of, you know, well, I mean, at first it was an early stock on Maxi and then it became an early stock on both of them as Hanabi desperately tried to save his teammate could not find the save and then ended up uh, ended up dying for it too uh, very early you know, had he been in red it wouldn't have been such a bad loss to uh, go so deep for his uh, for his teammate save there but he that was rough that was almost a full stock lot they're just gonna have to forget about that move on right into this next match here as now they absolutely have to win Maxi and Hanabi have to win two games in a row here or they are out of the tournament and Hanabi with the big switch to Taros. We haven't seen him play Taros yet. Yeah, I was going to say, and they also switched up the map. So changing things across the board, it's, this is what they needed, yeah, maybe. Well, it's good to see the dome out here. I know, this is one of my favorite maps. The, the art, the music, everything about it. Oh, oh Hanabi, Hanabi in trouble. Wait, Wait a second. Maxi His comes teammate. crashing in. Does that help? Maybe a little bit? OK, everybody makes it back to stage. I can't believe all three stocks are still in play. After it was either all three of them or none of them. Oh, that, no, the way Maxi, that was going. team kill. Oh, but now uh, kind of okay. goes down to even it out. Oh, Maxi barely alive. Hanabi relieving the pressure. Look how easy it was whoa, for Maxi whoa, to get back nice. to the stage after that. I like that little freeform uh -oh. combo oh, they no, had. Hanabi's okay, in trouble. <gasps> oh. Hanabi's going to wait. Hanabi, can he survive? Yes, but oh, only but after killing his teammate. Wait a second. Oh, been... but kind of lost an even earlier stock. This is getting too wild. Yeah, it's all like team kills and self-destructs. <laughs> this is a crazy game Things in this get set. wild in the dome. It must be. Okay, well, Hyper, kind of Ackerman, down one stock. Hanabi and Maxi, this is, this is their only chance to turn the tides in this game. If they lose this, they're out of the tournament. Oh, Hyper, nice, finds that ground pound, and that takes out the second stock from Hanabi now, down to his final one. But Kaina is so close to death on his yeah. final stock here. I mean, oh, oh bold, what? Though. what an answer from Maxi. Oh, he's going crazy with these signatures, and it just keeps working. Woo. Hanabi seals the deal on Kaina. Kaina is out of the game now, and Hanabi and Maxi have a they have a pretty good 2v1. It's heavily in their favor here. Yeah. I'm, you know, I believe in Hyper, but... I don't know about this one, you know? I don't know about this. 
Oh my gosh, I can't believe that hit. And not over yet. Hyper still somehow. He's only. Whoa. Oh, that doesn't uh, matter. Just blows it. him all away. Yeah, and now he's like, it, yeah, 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 yeah. I switched to Terra. Steven, do you know what this means? Day five! Day five! Let's yes. go! Oh, man. man this is so How much closer than that Rock, Paper, Scissors game. <laughs> So much closer. This is dead even. This is brutal. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I hope I hope the VOD cor is, is corrupted right at that part. <laughs> yeah, nobody clip that. No one please no one clip that whole Okay, Hopefully well we don't get any highlights. Obviously Hanabi happy with his character swap, sticking with Taro. Yeah, it game seemed five. to work out pretty well for him there. Game five now. This means that the loser of this game, no matter what happens, is out of the tournament. And whoever wins is a guaranteed top three podium finish. This is a big deal. Yeah, and Hyper, look how much damage he already has in that first stock. What happened? Oh, yeah. Him? Hyper's oh, kind of in trouble here. But wait, kind of going for the finisher. Oh. Hanabi wait, still whoa, survives. Whoa, whoa. Unbelievable. Hanabi survived. <gasps> and he turns around and gets the KO. And oh, then, nice. wait, oh is this my goodness. Maxi? Maxi and Hanabi are bringing this back so hard. They were losing at the start there, and then a couple of excellent team plays, and now they're in the lead. Oh, nice Maxi, interrupt by what Max. A save. Their oh synergy is out of control. Okay, it really they're is. They're in the pocket. They're in the pocket Every now. Every good thing that's happened to them in this game so far has been because of their team synergy. It's really incredible but what Maxi not... and Hanabi have done. But oh, now. but kind of is the healthiest person on the field oh, right, now. Yeah. Full stock up. It's a pretty big lead now, especially. I mean, kind of has the opportunity to push this lead into a lot here. Hyper's doing great too, not Whoop. taking any unnecessary damage. But oh, kind of goes out. That KO'd. I wonder. Did he steer? Did into he steer the into it? Yeah, I'm not, sure. I'm not sure. It was yeah. close. Either way, it was close. Didn't want to leave Hyper Hyper's alone. Hyper's in trouble. Yeah, well, and for good reason. And for good reason. He is very damaged now on his second stock. And you can see him being a little more careful about this now. He's staying on the fringe of the battle. Stay on the outside. Look for opportunities to help your teammate. Look for opportunities to punish your opponents for attacking your teammate. But in neutral, he's leaving a very few neutral opportunities here to take him out. And, uh, and it, it paid off. At this point, he's already in a good spot to go aggressive again as the rest of the players on the field are, are hurt just as much. Hyper... Finally goes down, losing that stock. He's been sitting at red for a super long time. Hanabi and Maxi oh. both in kill range. Could be get, oh, could no. get taken out by Kaina here. Man. Oh, Kaina puts a stop to yeah. that 2v1 combo. Nicely done. Maxi was doing such a good job on the edge guard with Kaina, but then had to give it up to try to get that 2v1 combo on a hyper, and then kind of broke right in. And yeah. Kaina's the one to watch. Whoa. Actually, Hyper, Hyper, if Hyper yeah. goes down, that could swing this whole game. Right, right, yeah. Even though Kaina and Hyper technically have a lead here, it's not much when you consider the health that Hyper's at and that he's on his final stock here. It all comes down to what happens in these Woo. next few moments. Okay, Maxi looks like oh, they are Hyper's, hunting down Hyper's the stock from Hyper. Yeah, there goes Kaina now on alone. his final stock. Hyper needs to stay alive. How is he going to oh. get through this? Avoid everything. Oh, <laughs> yeah, weapon just so, such a convenient weapon spawn for Hyper there. He he is one hit away from death, but he is still out here putting the damage in. Wait, no. Oh, no! Hanabi! Hanabi. Okay. Wow, Hanabi, lucky that he didn't cause the death of his teammate there as it was mm. so, so close. This is coming down to the wire, and the saving grace for red team is Kaina Ackerman holding on to these stocks. We're down to a 1v1, but look how healthy Kaina is. And wait! Okay. This, is he going to make it? Oh, oh it's over. Oh, man. Hyper and Kaina Ackerman in the clutchest, closest game five have won over Maxi and Hanabi. What an amazing performance from Maxi and Hanabi throughout this entire tournament. This is the first top eight they've ever gotten, and it was a top four for them. Incredible. Yeah, what an awesome set that was the whole way through game five right to the final hit. That was incredible. Man. I wonder if that this performance from Maxi and Hanabi, I wonder if it's going to be enough to qualify them for BCX. Are they going to make it into top 16, top 15 Whoa. of South America? I don't know. Oh, no. Actually, wait. I do know. It, the answer is no. Because oh. it's 1v1 that does the... Oh, okay. Yeah, I shouldn't have said anything. It's, well, it's 1v1. Too late now. Still, this is going to do wonders yeah, for them they, in power they're, rankings. They're, yeah, they're, they're going to fly up the 2v2 exactly. power rankings after this. Not to mention all the prize money involved getting top four in this tournament. Congratulations to them for making it this far, honestly. But 
The story's on Hyper and Kaina Ackerman, who won the set and are moving on right now to Losers Final to face off against Power Ranger and Lopez. Yeah. This is going to be fun. There's two worlds that come out of this. Do we get a rematch of Winner's Finals if yeah. Power Ranger and Lopez win and they uh, head right back up to face off against DB and Wes? Or do Hyper and Kaina Ackerman, would this be their highest placement yet? Third place or second? Or I think we're already in their highest okay, placement Okay, okay, okay. So yeah. they're, they're looking to see how far this rocket ship can they go. They could just win it. Yeah, think they could. Of, they would make headlines if they won this. We would talk about it forever. There would be articles written. Hyper and kind of Ackerman. Defy the odds. I can see it on the billboards now. <laughs> yeah. Steven wins Rock, Paper, Scissors <laughs> no. tournament in front of thousands of people. Thousands. Thousands of people. Tens of thousands of, Tens of people. Tens of thousands of people. That is the most embarrassing <laughs> Rock, Paper, Scissors loss I've ever had. There's never been a greater audience to my Rock, Paper, Scissors defeat. Makes you think. <laughs> now imagine how these Brahalla players feel, right? After I know there's a lot of but the, the nice thing here is that they've already done so well. For us right. to be watching their match on stream, <laughs> no, don't do this to me, production. Oh my god. Oh man, look at this. No, this is rough. look at the focus on my face and watch. Oh, I knew, I knew from the beginning I was throwing no. rock. That's the confidence. That's frame oh. one. You're going for the frame one play. Well. You're abusing <laughs> startup frames. I mean, a game's a game. A game yeah. You, you know? Can't get mad. Just because you picked Taros, can't get mad. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, uh, GG, Steven. Honestly, no, you know, I'm not salty. I'm not salty. <laughs> I am excited, though. My favorite team, Power Ranger and Lopez, they're still in this tournament, providing us with more content today. Uh, they are one of my favorite 2v2 teams to watch. I mean, Lopez is just one of my favorite players all around uh, in the South American region. And uh, I'm glad. Yeah, I love that he's play. playing Gui9, man. Yes. That's a big, you know, that'll always be a big favorite for me. When I started playing Brahalla, I was all Gui9 all day. And ever since then, I have a, a unreasonable loyalty to anybody who picks Gui9. That is just how it is. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you can see already he's opting in for the speed stance because, I mean, Queen Nye's slow. Queen Nye never die, also it, pretty slow. Pretty if, slow. <laughs> yeah, if Queen Nye had five speed, everyone would play her. Oh, yeah, that you would know? be busted. That would just be broken. The only thing that reigns her in is that movement speed. Yeah. <laughs> but when you have somebody who plays, they're just so, they're such a fast player. They're so efficient with yeah. their movement. It kind of makes up for it in a lot of ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can make up for it on the ground with dash, with chase right, dodge, right, with right. everything. You can kind of make up for it. But where there's no place to make up for it is when you get knocked off stage and you're coming back. That's right. where movement speed plays a big part. It's it's not just speed, it's air speed. And these days, with how good players are utilizing Dash, it kind of comes down to air speed more often. Right. And a, a, a player like Hattori, or I don't know, someone fast, uh, Mako, right? They you have more opportunity to dodge things on your way back from the stage. It's easier to avoid edge guards with more air speed, obviously, right? But not just because of more speed, but because you have more room to play around with. You can make it back to the stage sooner, and therefore you can use more recovery options on just mixing up your timing back to the stage. Meanwhile, a Queen Nye, especially on a stage like we've been seeing Lopez play on, uh, uh, Shipwreck Falls. I was going to say. You actually can get knocked so far away that you can't jump back, even though you're alive. And that's why we see yeah. Lopez very often just taking himself out when he gets right, knocked right. far away, because he doesn't want to spend 10 seconds trying to get back to stage, he already knows he can't make it back. That's exactly. how good of a Queen Nye player is, he is, is that he knows when it's over. Oh, no. I was going to say. Are we going to Shipwreck Falls I, right we now? We are. <laughs> oh, dang. Okay, Go. well, let's get into this. Lower Finals is coming up right now. It's Hyper and Kaina Ackerman versus Power Ranger and Lopez. Let's see if these guys can get it done. We have not seen these, these two teams fight each other yet in this tournament. Okay, so this is exciting. And both of them, again, this is this is their last chance in this tournament. We're on the right. lower bracket now. Yeah. Oh, nice. Double At this point, it will be a double elimination. Ooh, Lopez getting getting pretty aggressive there. 
dude. I like that. When I see him start fast falling off stage with guitars, I'm ready for those nair yeah. side airs to start hitting. Oh, Lopez goes for a hard read on the neutral signature. Doesn't pan out, but he didn't take much punishment for it. So it's uh, worth, worthwhile. That's two signatures now from Lopez that haven't worked out. But the punishes, you know, I'd go Ooh. for it again if I were him. I'd go for it again. <laughs> Wait okay. a second. Hyper goes down. The Power Ranger survives on the other side of that. Lopez looking for the edge guard. Kind of done for. What? He got his dodge back just in time. You saw him sweating off the edge there. He must have been mashing that dodge key as he was falling down there, just hoping it would come back off of cooldown in time. And it did, just barely in time. Oh, now man. Power Ranger and Lopez have a two-stock lead here, but they're both in kill range. Barely. Ooh, barely, wow, barely. nice. Lopez does a good job. He punches right in with that down signature on Queen Nine's guitars. It's a bold move. What? Oh, oh that's, nice. a, that's a happy Whoa. birthday situation. He was expecting one and he got two. Happy birthday. You know, you get an extra order of bread rolls at the restaurant, you know, when it's your birthday. That's really what his that teammate happens. was delivering. <laughs> it's know. my birthday. Oh, here's more free <laughs> bread that we give everybody. <laughs> <laughs> this restaurant to lay you cupcake? on your birthday. I should have said cupcake. That would have been what said. <laughs> Meanwhile, we've got an epic match happening that's very close. Oh, oh less okay. close now. Uh, that hyper got knocked out, but wait a second. Can, can Lopez make easily? it back? This is what we were just talking about. He can barely make it back to the stage. And even though he what? got hit, wait, he what a, call a KO. Out. Gravity canceled neutral signature. That's his answer in that situation. Nets him a KO. They're two stocks up, but oh, just barely. That any That's going to do it. I can't believe Power Rangers steered his way out of that keeping that second stock, but maybe not for long. Okay. Ooh, Actually, Power Ranger knew uh, not to even yeah, try finishing say, that combo. That's, that's, that's really old, smart TV2 yeah. play right there. To yep. know, even though you could get one person This is a combo. true combo, but yeah. not really because I'm about to get smacked by uh, somebody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and that is it for Ooh, Hyper. Ooh, this is a tough 2v1 here for kind of Ackerman. There's... Yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of twos that kind of oh, no, could take out as a one, but Power Ranger and Lopez is probably not one of them. That's that was such a good finish. That yeah. side signature finisher on Queen yeah, Nine. Yeah, with the pivot because right. he, he knew. Like, that's quick. You got to know while – while the opponent's getting hit by your teammate, you got to know, oh, he's this damaged, so he's going to get sent farther than I can hit him back from. So I need to pivot around the other way because I know he's going to get hit hard enough to pass me. It's just, it's a lot of calculations really fast there. Yep. That's nice. Nicely done by Lopez. Whoo, man, Whoa, Lopez. Dude, 60% yeah. accuracy, but with 10, the highest accuracy and the highest usage. What? And that's dude. with Queen Nye signatures. Yeah. Those are some beefy, slow, powerful right. signatures. Exactly. Those aren't just like. Those, are, those weren't all spear neutral signatures. In fact, he might have not done a single spear neutral signature in that whole thing. That was like everything else. Oh, man. That's kind of scary to look at. <laughs> okay. Whoa. I hope this pick is real. We'll see. Man. That was crazy. Okay, Power Ranger and Lopez looking really good in this matchup now. Well, now it would seem Power Ranger is out of the lobby, perhaps taking care of his own technical issue, resetting that router and modem, maybe turning his computer off and on again. Whatever it takes. You know, when you're playing for this much money, and the simple thing like a tiny stutter of your internet could cause you a problem. You want to take every measure you can to prevent any issues coming. So Power Ranger out of the lobby currently. We're waiting on him. It's a five-minute timer for any team um, that they get for this type of troubleshooting here. You know, it makes a lot more sense that that's top 32 placement. I was like, wow, we're really splitting hairs between top 8 and top 12 placements. But now I know it's top Now 32. that you know it's top 32. <laughs> but look at that. Look at the top 32 placements and the top 8 placements for Power Ranger. Yeah. There's no difference. He doesn't like, know what ninth place feels like. Exactly. He doesn't and, know what 13th place and feels like. And he's not going like. to learn today. Today he's top no, 3 he's top at three. Least. Yeah. He's already got at least a bronze medal, another one. But he's and yeah, no podium finishes for either Hyper or Kiner Ackerman. This is great. Already so they're, they're at yeah. their best position This is ever. a breakout performance for them already. 
But, you know, it would be an even bigger breakout performance is if they took out Power Ranger and Lopez. Okay. Guaranteed top two. And that then? would be incredible. And then taking out <laughs> Wes and DB. What? That would, they would win the tournament. There's no higher to go after that. Man. It's like, it's like capturing a Mew, you know, legitimately. <laughs> Not easy. <laughs> yeah. Or you could just, like, have a kid you know at daycare who's got all the hacks, all the rare candies. Oh, yeah. The kid with Game Genie? Yeah, the kid with Game mm, Genie. Man. We all knew a kid with Game Genie. He's like, uh, for 25 cents, I could find you a mule. Maybe it falls <laughs> off the back of a pokey truck, or maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> falls off the back of a pokey truck. Well, you just put pokey in front of anything, and it's like, you know, the Pokemon equivalent. Okay. All right, here we go into the next game. Wow, We're big switch-ups. Switch this ups. is a big switch-up. What the heck? Kaida and Hyper have decided. The Yo, double Koji. Bro, let's go double Koji. It'll be awesome. Maybe. Maybe it will They're be They're like, awesome. did you put on deodorant today? Because we are ready to sweat. Double Koji. <laughs> this is full force. It's not just not deodorant. It's anything back. It's on yeah, this one. Yeah, 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 yeah. No aluminum, though. <laughs> Healthy. All right, here we go. The Ooh. set count is 1-0 in favor of Power Ranger and Lopez, but the battle rages on. Kaina, Ackerman, and Hyper switching to the double Koji. They've been doing double Bodvar for a while here. Oh, that was a quick, quick lag check. Okay, yeah, we're good. We're good. Whoa. We're gonna fight. The taunt in South America, a taunt's not really a taunt. A taunt really means quick. I'm lagging or I'm good now after we after lagging. Woo! Okay, Lopez almost taking out Kinda Ackerman. Has to find his way back to stage. Ooh, Lopez went out there looking to get that recovery. Kinda still somehow holds on to this first stock. Oh, but Lopez is able to hunt it down, claims it for himself. Lopez has yet to be hit even once. That okay. is crazy. Oh, I'm glad oh, I called it out before yeah. it happened. I, yeah, 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 I make note yeah. of that. It was remember the time where We've, Lopez took a whole yeah. stock. He didn't even get hurt. 40 it, seconds in. In a 2v2 match, no less. In top three, no less. And he was in play. He was doing stuff. Hitting people. Oh, no. Uh -oh. Slip and fall. That Wait, does it. All Almost of that. No. Dude, oh, that what? huge lead means nothing now. Oh, all wow. of a sudden. That's unfortunate. That is very unfortunate. Well, well they equalized quickly, at least. That's that like if you had an ice cream and the first lick knocked it off the cone, it fell on the floor, and you're like, yeah. come on. Yeah. That is, <laughs> it was the full ice cream I wasted. That was a very apt analogy. <laughs> yeah. Okay, tied up now in the second stock. This could go either way. It's only the second game of the set. So we've got a lot of action left. Power Ranger and Lopez taking Ooh, some big what? damage, but whoa, Lopez scores a super early kill. Oh, but they kind of Ackerman. Power. Oh, wow. 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 Nice wow. coverage by wow. Hyper. It was an amazing save from <laughs> a save attempt from Power Ranger and an even more amazing punish of the save from Hyper. Yeah, he just put him in at the Go Cup for Hyper to then come <laughs> in and just completely chug in one hit. That was insane. Okay, stocks are still tied, but if you're looking at Kaina, he's. He's on his way out, potentially, here. Now his teammate's taken down. He's down to the 1v2. But wait a second. Wow, Holds his kinda. own. He's going hard. Oh, but that. Oh, oh, what yeah. a save from Hyper. The little neutral light just to stop the bleeding. Oh, but then kind of goes down. Now it's a tough okay. 1v2 from. And then. Oh, oh man. It'd be good damage, but oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, we can. You know, we're happy for him, but we're not. You know, yes. happy in general. <laughs> uh oh, actually. Oh, wait. Fights his way back on the stage. Hyper. That's it. There it is. Man, two games in a row for Power Ranger and Lopez. Uh oh. Oh, boy. Hyper and Kaina Ackerman now with their backs against the wall, playing off the heels of their feet. Can they bring it back in a spectacular finish here? They'll have to win three times in a row against Power Ranger and Lopez. Whoa! Oh, the legends, the legends select, guys. Yeah, are there pockets behind your back pockets? Like whatever's behind yeah, your yeah, back yeah. pockets, that's this where they've reached. This is like that reached. extra jean pocket that no one ever uses. Yeah, you the know? one that's like really thin, and it's like, is there a yeah, comb? I don't know to go what in there? you. Yeah, I don't know what you put in there. Just your comb. <laughs> Reach into that tiny little pocket you pull out. Ada and Frax now. Hyper what and the heck? Ackerman. I like the potential of no. double blasters. No, oh, blasters. Power Ranger! Whoa, Power Ranger! That was. Wait, homie that was, uh, what's happening? That was some big time lag. I think we're gonna reset okay, this one. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Power Ranger must have lagged like crazy. 
uh, and and it happened in the first ten seconds. So right. that's a legitimate that's a legitimate switch off there. That's the rules when we're playing online tournaments. We don't want sets to get ruined by a little bit of weird lag. So the rule is, if you have a problem in the first 10 seconds, you can just run off the side and SD. In that case, it didn't even look like he ran off the side to SD. It looked like he just lagged off the side. And he, by the time he was back in control, it was too late. Luckily, it was in the first 10 seconds. All right, if it happened later, Hyper and Kaina would be well within their rights of the rules of this tournament to just go ahead and keep fighting. But uh, fair is fair here. We're going to just restart it. Let's see. Let's see if we're all good this time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Based on their fastballs, I think we're good. So here we go now. Power Ranger and Lopez ahead by two. Ooh, two. Oh, oh what my in gosh. The world? Big team combo picks up both Hyper and Kaina. The damage difference For all is the telling. And there's that, the first stock. Whoa, whoa, this is wild. Whoa, whoa. Oh, this is out of Yo. control, man. I don't know. No, this is. I don't know how much Rax is helping Ooh. out in this whole situation. Oh, here we go again. Here we, oh, what? Almost, ah. almost. Power Ranger just barely missing. Now, Kaina doing a great damage now that he's picked up this Rocket Lance. But I don't know if it's going to be. That enough. was an incredible start, man. Uh, Holy cow. And that Have you ever seen a 2v1 combo with a Taros in it where one of the moves just in the middle of it was gravity cancel neutral signature? It's usually like hammer recovery or like, right, I right. don't know, it was send him back downward. But what an awesome way to send him back down with a gravity cancel neutral sig. Man, somehow Power Ranger and Lopez, okay, we're holding on to their first stocks. Lopez taken down, Power Ranger still holding on to his, but kind of hunting it off on the side of the stage. Wow, goes for some Ooh. crazy options. Has to get back to the platform. Oh, Power, Power Ranger. Ranger! Dude, will not wow. be denied. Takes out the second stock. They are he three stocks He still has three. Up. He still has all of his stocks, Power Ranger. Oh, boy. Okay, finally. Now, full two-stock lead for Power Ranger and Lopez. Looks like they may take this game 3-0, but it's not over yet. Yeah, let's not count them out yet. Even though it seems pretty clear. Oh, oh my geez. God. Oh, oh, my. No. What in the wow. world? Jeez. What happened? Just, Lopez. Oh, he my. just started yelling in the middle of the stage and everyone died. He said, you think it's not over? And then Lopez told us when it was over. Okay. Holy wow, cow. Well, man. that's a 3-0. That's a big 3-0. Well, that decided that. That last one. Look at all these down six. Oh. Hey, you know what? Congratulations to Hyper and Kaina Ackerman. Yeah. Best placement yet. Bronze medal on the podium. By far their best placement. I mean, yeah. this is, that is incredible. They made it, they made it on the podium, man. That's a big deal. Yeah, really making a statement in 2021. Power Ranger with the, with the one count, 100%. You love to see it. Yeah. He doesn't shoot much, but he <laughs> shoots straight. Knows when to do it. <laughs> Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have arrived. It's time for grand finals here in the South American Autumn Doubles Championship. It's Wes and DB on the winner's side, despite being second seed in this tournament, going up against Power Ranger and Lopez, the top seeds in this tournament. But they're coming from the loser's side. That means they're going to have to win two sets here against Wes and DB if they're going to want to take this victory. Obviously, it's going to be close, seeing as we just fought, saw these two teams fight in the winner's final, and it came down to game five, a very close game five yes. here. Uh, we're going to see. I have no, there is no way to predict this. Uh, both of these teams are extremely close. I think it's pretty obvious that this could go either way. So what's it going to be? Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Grand finals. Three, two, one, roll. And we're starting things off on Apocalypse. What a what a great first map to go to. The world's ending. We've just got started in the world's ending. As you can see in the background. <laughs> Whoa, oh, DB? DB? Big player off the side of the stage. Man, he no. went for it, though. That's the, he had Dude, the opportunity. I, I love the way oh, DB plays Wesley. cannon. Oh. But Lopez saves Power Ranger. Nicely done. Oh, man. 
Oh no! <gasps> oh, just... Power wow, Ranger. He, really... he either miscalculated or was really counting on that neutral light I was landing. Say, I feel like he bit it all on that gravity cancel neutral light. Kassen, the first. You know, on a stage with a longer wall, it would have been fine. It was just he just barely missed it. Slight miscalculation there. Oh no, on his teammate. Oh man, lucky he didn't. Ooh, yeah, lucky he didn't get knocked close, out. Actually. There. Even with the reduced force, it almost KO'd. Oh, Lopez, there he is. DB, the last person holding on all three stocks. And let's not forget, uh, Lopez and Power Ranger need to win two best of five sets. That's right. DB and West, since they're on the top side, they haven't lost a single set this entire tournament. This is it for them. They could win it here. And it's looking like they're on their way here. A very strong start. DB towards the KO against Lopez. And look at this, man. Five stocks to two. This is insane. Against a team this good. Oh, wait. DB's cannon off of the side of the stage. Oh, man. He really is aggressive out there. You love to see that. And just barely taken down to his second stock. Well, Power Ranger is eliminated from the game. It's down to just Lopez on his own. Okay, nice punish, gets a stock there, positions nicely, double edge guard, really going for it. Okay. Oh man, DB, wow. what a finish. Wow. Four stock finish for Wes and DB. Whoo, man. And looking at the damage difference there, it tells the same story we just saw. Yeah, the story of DB and Wes won like a, by a lot. <laughs> <laughs> they just crushed it. It was pretty clear. They were in control. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The math checked out. Mm. Even with the 0% accuracy from DB. <laughs> yeah, that was tough. Okay. But the set's still alive. They need to make some sort of adjustment. Okay, they're doing it at character select, going back to double Brin. Except That's not now. double Brin. You're right. You're right. <laughs> you're right. That's Barbara. Lopez on the Barbara. Okay, I like this pick. I like Lopez getting a spear back, keeping the axe. Oh, boy. Oh, man. Jeez, Just double look combo. at that. That's so much damage so quick. These guys are efficient about all of this. Oh, Lopez. Funky flow with the axe. Lights up DB for a second there. Whoa. Oh, nice dodge by Power Ranger. I, yeah, I'm surprised. Those are those. That's tough to do the the momentum, like having your momentum dodging, sliding through somebody. Yeah, because a grounded dodge must be a spot dodge. But right. since it's hold, it holds your momentum, you can dash right before it and have a moving spot dodge. And you see these guys taking advantage of that masterfully a lot in these matches. Wow, Power Ranger oh, somehow still it. alive. That's incredible. He's still alive. No way he lives through this Yeah, one. you're okay. right. You're right. <laughs> the strength of Amethyst too much. Now it's down to just Wesley. He was the last man standing on with all three stocks. And he's... Oh, oh, oh the weapon what? Guard that was DB. a save. That was a save from his teammate. And he's yeah. still alive. Wes, what, who's... Who could possibly take out Wes? How much longer is he going to go on this way? One hit from death. Okay, that'll do it. And his teammate. Oh, and Ooh. now they are trailing by one Yeah, stock. as okay. good as Wes has been doing, DB is the first by a, uh, by a lot to go down to his final stock here. DB might end up costing his team Oh, the game. no! Lopez! He what? tried it out of the side of the stage. He what? tried it. Oh, my gosh. I That's an awesome gift. Now Lopez down. This is huge for Wes and DB. Yeah, power I think they're looking to 3-0 this. Oh, well, I mean. I mean, wouldn't you? That's really the goal all the time, I suppose. Maybe, unless they're like, yeah, let's do best of five. Make it exciting. It'll be more exciting. No way. They're just. No, that's that's crazy. What? Ooh. Oh, man. DB's in trouble on his final stock. He's trying to fight his way up, but oh, Lopez catches goes. him with the side sink. It's all up to Wes now. And even though Wes has the stock advantage, it's going to be tough against a team like this. Wes falls. He, he would rather fall to his own death than get Pogo to his own death here. So. 
Oh man, yeah, he could do that. We've seen. Look, we this. just we already saw Wes very recently win an incredible one v two. Oh wow! wow that's zero enough to, to do death. it. That was incredible. Oh man, good thing they're on a map like Apocalypse and not like Shipwreck Falls or Great Hall or something with a tall ceiling. They were able to claim that stock pretty swiftly at the end, tying up the set now. Okay, we are one one in grand finals. This could go either way. You thought it was decided for a second. Nuh-uh. Look at this. Is exactly this is what they needed. One combo. This is so efficient. This is probably the perfect amount of damage for this to KO. Yeah. Boop. There we go. The ceiling's Gone. just low enough. <laughs> they raised them up just high enough. They damaged them just enough. It worked out perfectly. You got to love to see, uh, you know, you swap a character around on your team comp, and then, boom, you find success. They get the game. Now we're evened up. And just as I was saying it, we're back on Shipwreck Falls. Oh, double combo Ooh, picking up. That's both. a lot of damage. Yeah. DB looking for a KO on Power Ranger. Lopez comes in to relieve the pressure just in time. Yeah, you see DB definitely emboldened to go for those ground pounds with these short walls, especially on Shipwreck Falls. Yeah, to claim that makes stocks. sense. <gasps> uh oh. Okay. Whoa, both of them off the side now. DB fights his way back on. Wow, that was a brave way back to the stage. Holy cow. DB still in trouble, though. Not out of the woods yet. Off the stage. Finally back, looking for a weapon. He saves his teammate. And Wesley. Wait, no Wesley. Way. Oh, my. Wait, no, come back, DB. I can't believe it. <laughs> DB saved his life, and Wesley's like, thanks. I'm going to try to kill somebody with this. Like, yeah. he didn't even. He could have just come back to the stage and stayed alive. Instead, he went for, like, the craziest offstage. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's good damage. Yeah, okay. Lopez almost got just deleted off of the side of the stage. Finds a way back up top. Now as a, he had a 2v1 power play against Wesley for a second. DB back into the fray, but unarmed. Has to find his way to a weapon swap. Wesley, nice follow-up there. And in the air, claiming more stocks. Takes Power Ranger out. Now it's... Lopez Whoa. against DB and Wesley. Nice. Power Ranger comes in. Knocks oh. Wesley down. Wesley can't make it back and going for it again on the DB. But Lopez cleans it up. That offstage engagement was big for Lopez and yeah. Power Ranger. Yeah, they take the lead with that, but only just barely as Lopez is yeah. in kill range with the stocks <laughs> otherwise being even. He's going to have to be awfully wily to keep this stock. Okay, there we go. Nice Whoa. team combo. Perfect Oh, he's going too. deep. Wait, can he? Oh, he needed that. He, he still need lives. It. I thought he needed to get a chase dodge. He had just barely enough to make it back. I agree with Lopez going so oh. deep on these stocks yeah, here because yeah. he was so right. deep in red. It was like hey, he's gonna so, something's gonna take him out soon. He uh -oh. may as well like get wild with it, try to get an early stock on somebody. That would have definitely been a win. Oh, Power Ranger Ooh, obliterated. Blasted. Yeah, that would okay. uh, Keep your eyes on yeah. Wes here. He's in kill range, and he's on his final stock. Oh, Nobody else is oh, nearly as close it. to death so as he is. Uh-oh, Wes, how is he going to avoid death here? He's got a, He's not avoiding anything. He's going in. Uh, maybe he should have avoided something there. Now he's. Now DB is. Oh, oh my. come in. What? Oh, he managed he to get. He into the combo. I can't believe Lopez is able to extend that a couple more hits. They that, read oh his DI. Gosh. So good. DB, the it clip is, is done. That it's was over, so dude. sick. You've that been was clipped. so. We need the slowest of slow mo, oh, please, production. What? That was so sick. You. I have all. Pretty much, I've never seen that. No, I can say that I have never seen that in Brahalla. It is so rare that a team will read the DI of an opponent yeah. to continue a combo. Usually, cool. the DI. Right, here, here. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's also, it's like the punter catching his own kick. He, look, look how far look, away Lopez is. He's, like, he's like, oh, I got to dash into this. Oh, Boom, and he got just it. Barely. Oh, my gosh, that was insane. Oh, man. And Power Ranger actually almost lined up for maybe a neutral sig or something to follow up off of that. That was crazy. Okay. Look, the the move the DI in Brahala, if you come from any other platform fighter, you know what DI is. But DI in Brahala is works very differently. It's there to prevent cheesy infinite team combos. Right. right? We only want super cool combos <laughs> in team stuff. So so in this for for that reason, DI is very effective. Like you really influence your direction by a lot. Oh, oh this big double. Of team combos. Holy this cow. Is and, and, you, and they, they kept the combo going. That's all I'm trying to say. It's amazing they kept that combo going. Let's move on to this next match. All right, we're seeing the swap from Wesley. He's now playing with Finn. Okay, who mirrors the abilities of Jala. So, Glass Cannon Legend. That's quite the switch from Ooh. Wes. Okay, Lopez. I love these down airs on the side of the stage. Man, Wes. Low damage or low defense character, but so healthy. 
DB, can you make it back? No, stayed spiked off. Wait, wait a second. Wait. Oh, oh wow. I'm surprised. Wes could have saved. I think Wes thought he was good. He's Maybe, like, okay, yeah. he got the chase dodge. He's alive now. But it Oh, what a oh. read. Oh. Absolutely called out from Lopez. Yeah. Had to neutral signature. This grand finals is getting spicy, it's dude. It's so back and forth. Lopez? I mean, we're like highlight after okay, highlight okay. here. Lopez was the first person on either team to go down, okay, to be red on his first stock, but he Woo! held on for so long, but this is a close game. Game four, this could decide the set if Power Rangers and Lopez win, then it's a bracket reset. And that would be incredible. For two teams of this caliber, it seems fitting. Still yeah. duking it out over the second stocks. Power Ranger knocked really far oh! away. Can he make it back? Oh, nice. Wes almost finished that Dude. combo off, but this still going. These guys are popping off. Wes and DB are popping off. They want to just end this. Oh, Wes with the perfect edge guard. Oh my gosh. DB went all the way out onto the edge of his rope. And he's like, I got to get back. I got to get back. Yeah. He went all the way out there. And for then it. Wes was there, like, to, well, to catch what got through. You know, that's what it happens. Perfectly. Yeah, when you have that kind of pressure, you're closing out the inside lane, outside lane. It does a lot. You got one person in case. It's in case they use their dodge to get through you. I'm here to cover it, right? Oh, Wes down to his final stock now. Oh, DB down to his okay. final stock. Oh, my goodness. They've taken a couple hits on their final stocks, but this is still a close one, even. If Power Ranger and Lopez win this right now, we're resetting the bracket. Whoa! Oh, that oh, would have been no, a kill. Wesley, and even though Wesley trouble? avoided that kill, he's Whoa. still in trouble. No, Wait, oh, DB. No. Oh, that was a flub from DB. He. Oh, no. Okay, now wait a second. Because he's got an opportunity for a 1v2. He has oh, to win this 1v2. Actually, Let's see have the. Uh -oh. oh, no. Uh oh. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I was about yeah, to we say. Bracket one. reset. Let's go. Lopez and Power Ranger win 3 1. But the tournament's not over yet. Okay, it's that's zero, just, zero now. Yeah. Now it's a real clean final match. One more best of five to determine who wins this tournament. Yeah, this is awesome. The first time we saw these teams face off, Wes and DB came out ahead. Now they square off yet again, and Power Ranger and Lopez come out on top. And there is one final set today to decide it all. Oh, this combo, they are so good at that. Yeah. That is trouble. And you saw at the end there how good it is to have that 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 team combo because he, he was in uh, yellow, basically. Yeah. And they were both in red. Yeah. He's got nine strength amethyst. He, they easily could have lost that. You know what I mean? They DB, easily could have lost DB that. DB could have killed two. them both with one hit on almost any move he had <laughs> right, with a weapon. Yeah, right, right, right. You know, what's so great about that 2v1 combo that they keep pulling off, Lopez and Power Ranger, is that it's like the health barely matters. They carry them right. up so much with all the built-in movement of the attacks. Yeah, that's a great point. That they just kill off the top on almost any map, regardless of and what health they, their opponent starts on. Okay, whole new set. Whole new best of five. We are 0-0. Zero, zero. Looks like uh, same character swaps from the last game. Wesley, somehow, he's the healthiest person on the field. Uh-oh, wait a second. Almost gets elevated there. Clash in the middle between Barbara and Amethyst. Who'd have thought we'd see such a crazy matchup? Oh, Ooh. DB is down. Oh, my Lopez gosh. barely avoids it. He oh, gets the nice. chase dodge. I think he would have made the wall anyway, even if he didn't get the chase dodge. Oh, nice down signature. The movement on that makes it such a sneaky option, the way you like slide back just a little bit and hit underneath you. Okay, teammates clash. That's all right. Okay, DB and Wes. I mean, Lopez and Power oh. No! Oh, my gosh! That's some rough friendly fire. Oh, dude. The, the, man, the knocked out head for Barbara is brutal. Okay, wait. DB lands both ground oh, pounds. Lopez, he's barely keeping alive through all this. Oh, oh nice ooh, follow up. There's always time for an alley oop with these guys. Oh, and he's oh back always too. time for Lopez. an alley oop. <laughs> you are right. 
how much damage he was able to net so quickly there. Okay, everybody's on to their second stock. This is still close. Ooh, slips behind DB. Uppercut to put him away. And that should be... No, not enough. Somehow makes it through. Fights his way back up. Okay, so I can't believe Wes is holding on to this second stock. Trying to find his way to a weapon spawn. There he goes. Finally picks one up. Now has the sword. Oh, and that does it. Was not long for this world. Now Wes and DB both onto their final stocks as Lopez and Power Ranger continue their domination in this set. The bracket reset, but their mindset did not. They are determined to Ooh. win. Both of their opponents oh. picked up in this combo. Oh. Wes, oh my gosh. Oh. Wes was just like, let me out of here. And each time he <laughs> snuck out of the combo, he got sucked right back in. And now he's onto his final stock and he's got three to get through. And there it is, the finisher from Lopez. That's amazing. Now, a game up after the reset. Feeling good. 1-0. Have they gained power from winning the reset? I think so. We've I seen mean, that before. It's like they're confidence. taking this momentum oh, and they are rolling yeah. with it hard. you got to love a 2v1 combo that ends up being a 2v2 combo, and then you just keep it going like that. Okay. Man. This could be it. Power Ranger and Lopez. All right, now we're banning out maps. Where are we gonna go? Okay, Mammoth Fortress, nice neutral stage. Just have to worry about that moving soft platform. But Wes and DB, they need, you know, they need like a rally stock or something. They need some momentum on their side. This has been going the way of Lopez and Power Ranger. Ever since they swapped onto the double Brin. Ooh, man, Lopez all over West with this axe. Everywhere he goes. He's getting met with a blade, and now Power Rangers in on it as well. The final strike from the side signature catches West off of the side of the stage. Lopez going for a double edge guard, but DB handles his business, gets back to the top of the stage, but West taken out off the top. DB, can he make it back? Wait, he's using a lot of his options. Poke down low, oh, and that's it! Oh, he stalled out a little too long yeah. there. Lopez had it all dialed in. Well, Power Ranger and Lopez, are, they're just keeping the pressure on them off stage, anywhere they go. Lopez, baby in trouble. DB finishes it off. Down light uh, to the neutral air. And oh, a ground pound? Okay, okay, okay. DB doing some work. Evens up the stocks. Now we got ourselves a game. This is just game two after the reset. <laughs> but now know? we got ourselves a game. Hey. <laughs> it took a while. It took a while. It took, all, a it took all day. It took <laughs> thousands of games, thousands of people. We got ourselves a game, finally. Uh -oh. Oh, no. oh no! Whoa, whoa, oh, what whoa! What was I saying? Oh boy! Ooh, I thought we had ourselves a game. DB, no, no! What happened? Oh, it just—it's falling out of their hands, man. Oh, slip! They're right slipping. Their fingers. Okay. Well, they've got DB and Wes have one stock apiece to put this together, but they are trailing now pretty dramatically in game two. Is this just going to be six games in a row for oh, Lopez man. and Power Rangers? That would yeah, be crazy. I guess it Run is back. six in a row, right? Even though Wes and DV got a game in in the first part of this set, it was still three in a row. Still Power Ranger Lopez getting three after that. Woo. Oh, DB went for the follow-up. Nice, nice weapon throw. Yeah. Finally, okay, okay. He, they need a, they need a couple. They need like a two to one combo that catches both of them, and is a zero to death. <laughs> That's what DB and Wesley need right now. Okay, down to just so oh, there Ooh, it is. Wow, Wait, dude, double KO right to finish ground. it. Five stocks taken by Lopez, the man himself. Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, here we are. 
Power Ranger and Lopez. One game away from Supreme Victory. And that's after going down to the lower bracket, knocked out by none other than Wes and DB, who they are currently up 2-0 in the final match of this tournament. What a comeback. What is the play here? What can Power Ranger and Lopez do? I mean, what can, what can Wes and DB do? We already know what Lopez and Power Ranger are going to do. They're going to just keep I going. I think Wes, Olgr, wait, Olgram Undertaker? Yep. <laughs> Olgram, is it just they need more beef? I think. They need more beef, then they're going to bring out Taros, right? Maybe. <laughs> I, I am. Oh, I, oh, that's beefy. Okay. I mean, DB, DB has been doing so good on Amethyst. Yeah, today, yeah. I felt like he never just, needed to switch off. I mean, right. it was really great play from them. Oh, and now we're reaching into the pocket here from Wes. Okay. The Volkov pick. I'm we've excited. Seen, I'm ready. Yeah. Honestly, we've seen Wes do some great stuff on Volkov. Yeah. Now, usually I would say uh, the, the true potential of Scythe in 2v2, you kind of have to have, it's a certain mindset. There's some, some kind of maybe practice stuff, but like, we'll see what they can do. Maybe they do practice this comp. I'm not sure. All right. Going to Miami Dome. And this could close out the tournament. This is game set and match for Lopez and Power Ranger if they win this final game. Oh no, Wes, get back on top of the stage, man. Okay, he was in potential trouble over there. Finally makes it back up. Okay, I'm so excited to see Wes's sight on this character. Let's go. Wes doing some good crowd control with the scythe. Nice grabs, good follow-ups. Oh, double KO! Whoa, yeah! The Volkov okay. already paying off here for Wes. If you had questions, they've been answered. Wes, he knows what he's doing. When he needed it the most. Okay, this isn't a huge lead yet. They really have to capitalize. Oh no, and Wes gets taken out. Power Ranger. Oh my gosh, relentless on that last, or the first dock from DB, take it out, that was tied up. Yeah, they they did a great job equalizing after such a heavy start here. Oh, uh oh Power no. Ranger, no, what happened to Power Ranger? That. Oh no, falls off the side. Well, this is exactly what DB and Wes needed. Oh man, Wes almost with a terrible friendly fire on his teammate. Would have been bad. Oh wow, DB. He can still make it. He's, he's not Wait, out yeah. yet, okay. No, he's good, he's yeah. good now. Power Ranger elim eliminated, wow, something happened to Power Ranger this game. Now it's down to just Lopez in the 1v2 against four almost full stocks from DB and Wes. Yeah, okay. Oh yeah, Goodbye. he's done, he's done with that. He, you know, I think he's, he saw into the future all the millions of different timelines that he saw, there was not one where he came away with right, that victory. Right, right. Once you've fallen off the bull, you don't have to like jump back on while it's still bucking around. You know, <laughs> we're gonna reload back into the cage, we're gonna reset this whole thing, and they get another chance to see if they can so, last. DB at West now on the board here in this final set. Ooh, man, and that was that was big. Not a lot of damage done. Pretty pretty quick, efficient. Match. Okay. We'll see what happens. The next game here, but DB and Wes bought themselves some time in this set. Now 2-1, making a comeback. It's like DB and Wes. I mean, they like the way that Volkov pick worked out for him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it'd be a fool not to go with it now. It was, that was the play. Especially that double yeah. KO he got early on in the last game. Yeah, Power, Ranger had, I, I, but Power Ranger had a stock that got lost in a way I'm not sure you could count on happening every time. Something That's was true. funky with That's that. True. So. That's true. Obviously, the happens. success is not solely on Volkov's shoulders, but he was part of it. Oh, oh, nice grab. Oh, man. Oh, oh even 
nice <laughs> alley oop though. Holy Ooh, cow! Dang, the double yeah. KO. The grab was nice, but it didn't oh, amount to the two stocks like that. Especially you consider Lopez's current health right Dude, now. Lopez, He's barely even touched on his first stock. Still, he is completely obliterating his opponents now. Just that's a lot. Uh, yeah. His damage output is insane. Nice dodge. Okay, mitigating everything. Sneaks his way back in. West. Okay, a high recovery. Okay, so Lopez was going for the chase down onto West, but West with the reversal now tying up the stocks. Woo! Okay, oh. good damage. Okay, they're bringing it back though. I mean, th they were they were down by so much a right. second ago, and now it's not looking too far off. Oh, but Lopez with the double down light. DB took a lot of damage, but he's still kicking. Okay, DB limit or down to his final stock. West close behind. They really need to have a comeback stock here. All right, knocked off the left side. DB. Oh. Okay. <laughs> now, both West and DB onto their final stocks, and that is it for the tournament run. If they cannot turn it around, this is their last chance. These two stocks. Not ready to lose him yet. They take one stock from Lopez. Need another one onto Power Ranger. Okay. Nice punish from West. That ties it up. DB, Ooh, look out for him. They have to win this right now. They if do. DB goes down. Another best of five. It's bad. It's bad news. Could we be this lucky? A second game five? Would love it. Whoa, DB on it with these neutral layers. He's, oh, yeah, wow. He's got to be careful with how he attacked here, right? He's so close. Oh, man. That recovery can't lift yet. much more. He has maybe one more of those. Ooh, okay. He's on his last life now. DB barely, barely alive. But Power Rangers now getting close as well. Oh, no. DB's out. It's up to Wes. Now, we've seen Wes do a 1v2 before, but this is going to be huge. Who gets the active input? Going over. Lands on the ground. He's got his jump back. Wes, so close. He must win this right now or his team is out. Oh, okay. Lopez tossing the weapon away. Double axe, double decker bust. Oh my gosh, punches his way through, finds the way to the swap, picks up an axe. He's got the axe own. now. This is what he wins no. 2v1s with. Wait. He's still alive. Somehow. But only just barely. Oh, oh wow. Right. Luckily, catch yeah. the top side of the hitbox. I can't believe Wes so determined. What? Oh, weaves my dies his way through. He's still alive. How is he still alive? Everything must KO him. That's there it. Is. it. That Ladies and gentlemen, Lopez and Power Ranger are your South American Autumn Champions. Whoo! From the lower bracket. Yeah, what an amazing run for them. They had to reset the bracket, but after that, it looked like the tournament was all but determined. That was incredible. I mean, this is after losing to them in winner's final. They went down to the lower bracket. They defeated Hyper and kind of to prove that they deserve the spot up in grand finals. And then they went on to win it. They reset the bracket on them, and then they beat them again. Two different 3-1 victories against the same team in grand finals. They are the champions. Lopez and Power Ranger. Oh, my goodness. They, they've proven their number one seed, right? The stats, the stats work out here. <laughs> yeah, I guess nobody should be surprised at this point, but... No, I'm still pretty surprised, especially with how DB and West were doing. I mean, they won in winner's final. It was pretty clear. Yeah, I would like to see a statistic on that, like how often a tournament is really decided in winner's finals, because it seems often that that, that team is the one that carries yeah. momentum through and wins the you whole thing. You got a point. Yeah, I would, that would be an interesting stat, like the percentage of... Winners finals converted into grand finals victories. I'm yeah. not sure what it would be. It would. I'm not sure. But Power Ranger and way, Lopez no. were able to make that fabled lower bracket run to overturn the whole tournament and come out on top. Man. Love Woo! To see Congratulations to these guys. What an amazing, amazing tournament run they had through the whole thing. Power Ranger and Lopez. You're, what you're seeing here is just from top 32, just from the start of top 32, but it, it goes on much further than that. All the different wins that they got. 3-0 over Sel Selen and Liz Lazuli. Another 3-0, then 3-0 in Kinda Ackerman and Hyper. I mean, 
these guys are crazy. The only team they lost to is DB and Wes, and then they went on to defeat them twice in Grand Finals, proving that they deserve the title of Autumn Champions. Incredible performance from Power Ranger Lopez, and congratulations to everybody in this tournament who made it into the money here. Wes and DB, Hyper, Kaina Ackerman, Maxi and Hanavi, Page and Yuz, News and Nagi, Selene and Lazuli, Fiend and Balthazar. That is your top eight of this tournament. Congratulations to all of them. Whoo! Well, that is the doubles bracket. But lucky for you guys, that's not it for South America Autumn Championship, right? Doubles might be over today, but tomorrow, same time, we're going to get on with the singles bracket. And that one's going to be even spicier than what you saw here today. So we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you guys for joining us so far, and we'll see you then.